All right, welcome everybody. B Todd live streaming today. I specifically want to help out Dan Z today. He said he has his kitchen chair ready to watch our stream. So we're going to do a ton of chairs today. Hopefully we can get Dan Z in a real office chair. So what's going on today? We're going to go through 60 of our most popular chairs. You've seen a lot of these in our tier list today. We're going to go through all of them. We're going to talk about what deals are going on, which there's a lot. Almost every single chair in our top 60 has some sort of deal happening. So on top of that, we also have giveaways. So every 45 minutes, we're going to be giving away another refurbished steel case chair. So definitely stay tuned to those. We'll give you some directions when that comes up. So you guys ready? I'm ready. Geared up. Good chair to start. Ooh, one of the best. One of the best. Herman Miller Gaming Embody. And it's got an incredible deal right now, 25% off plus five. Yeah, that seems to be their thing now. On Cyber Monday, they're always giving that extra five. And uh, I think that's the biggest deal we've seen as far as a percentage is concerned yeah, across yeah. kind of the industry with the big players. So what is that? What is the savings on that? Do we know? Well, I think it brings it down to 1383 and that might be before the additional 5%. Yeah, it looks like So it. you're likely getting this for under $1,300. And I, for, if I remember correctly, when we very first bought the Embody, it was more than that. I think it was over 1300 I think it was like 1395 when we bought it four years ago. Yeah. So you're able to get what I believe to be a little better version of the Embody and the gaming body for less than it was originally sold for, which is a pretty... Incredible deal, in my opinion. So, really, really high end chair. So, what do you, th I mean, like, what are the things that you personally, because I know this is a chair that you spent a ton of time in still to this day. Like, what are the top three or five things that you just absolutely love about this chair? What kind of sets it apart from other chairs, even from Herman Miller? I guess the one thing that sets it apart for me is that it doesn't really have any glaring weakness that makes me focus on it that I don't want to sit in it. And I think it also has really top tier areas. Like I think it has one of the most comfortable seats I've used. I also really like the backrest. I know it can be polarizing for some depending on your height and depending on your lumbar preferences. But I think the seat is super unique with the pixelated system. Kind of gives you that suspended floaty feel without the pressure points that you get from a mesh seat. And then the backrest flexibility that they're showing right now is incredible. I really, really love that. I know that a lot of people kind of harp on the arms just because they didn't go with a four-way adjustment, which I do agree. It's a pretty big miss, especially when you get into this price range. But I like the caps a lot, and I don't find myself needing the additional adjustments with, with the way I use the chair. So I don't know. This is just a very well-rounded chair, and it fits me really well. So this is one of my two S-tier chairs I've ever given S-tier. Yeah. What, so. what do you – like, what is the – like, what things do you think aren't good about it, though, that you'd like to see – that you would like to see improvement on besides the arms? Is that pretty much it for you? I guess, I guess I'd wish there was a way to kind of either dial back or increase the lumbar yep. and maybe have a little bit more padding where that is because I know that for some people it can get pokey, especially on the standard version – I don't necessarily have that problem on the gaming version, but if the lumbar had a little bit of adjustment, even height-wise, depth-wise, and the armrests were four-way, I don't know if there'd be chairs that could really match this. I know for you guys, you don't like how the curvature works and kind of forcing your shoulders in. Maybe you can talk more on about that, but that doesn't really affect me, so... Yeah, I think, I mean, Greg and I both found if you if you angle the backrest back just a little bit, so... Not a lot of chairs have this, but the Embody does have this backrest angle adjustment. So you could tip it back just a little bit. Sometimes that helps so you don't feel like the, the shoulders are being pushed forward so much. Um, I found that it seemed to me like with the gaming one, it has a little extra padding in the backrest. It felt like I didn't have that problem as much as I had in the original Embody, which we've had here for, what, five years or something like that. So uh, definitely an improvement. This is just It's a chair that's really hard to compare to anything because as – Ryan was saying has this pixelated seat that makes it feel more like a mesh chair because you're, you're kind of suspended, but it's not a mesh chair. It has a upholstered padded seat. The backrest is, again, I, I don't even know what's the closest thing. It's so different the way it flexes. Yeah, fern kind of has a similar shape to the fern, a lot of flex. Uh, I mean, the looks on this chair are just stand out to me. It's, uh, you know, there's a reason why we love to put this in a lot of our thumbnails because it just looks great. We know that... Um, a lot of people love the look of this. We have, you know, multiple people on our team have, have either purchased this for their for themselves or uh, their family. So I mean, that's just it's a 
great chair that we love. You know, just looking at the armrest as kind of Francis sits back down here. One thing I like about them, they don't have all those pad adjustments, but they stay in place. And for me, that's really important. I hate when chairs move, the arm pads move when I don't want them to. So like I'm leaning on them and all of a sudden they slide. So that's, you're not going to get any of that with the Embody. It's pretty it's pretty solid when you get them in place. One downside I forgot to talk about on the Embody <laughs> that I just realized from Francis using the chair is how loud it can be. It just has so much flexible plastic on the chair in basically every area that it's going to have to have some type of creaking. And then the gaming and body, the fabric specifically that they use on that chair, produces more noise than um, any other upholstery I've used. I'm not sure why, but it's almost like this kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, rubbery, rubbery kind of crinkly sound. And that paired with the plastic creaking can be a little bit noisy for me, it doesn't affect me because I use headphones, and so I just put my headphones on, and it's not a problem. But I could see it being an issue for some people if you're really, really, I guess, sensitive yeah. to noise. For sure. Yeah, I think for me, so with this chair, I love the fact that it's flexible. I feel like that's one of the missing components from a lot of the Herman Miller chairs. They lock you in a lot more than some of the, like, for sure, steel case. And I love steel case chairs because of all that movement. This is one of the chairs from Herman Miller that is about being really active, and you can feel it in the seat in the back. I, I just personally, I can't have that back pitched away because I cheat when I type. Letting everybody know right now, I cheat when I type. And so I need good lower support from a chair when I'm sort of cheating forward typing. And this one, without what Ryan said, the missing component is having a little bit of additional lumbar. It's lacking there for me. So if you're like me, it might not be a great fit there. But everything else that these guys said is 100% true for sure. All right, what else do we have in the list uh, right away after this one? Secret Lab Titan. Ooh. All right, well... Pretty big shift here. I think yeah. what, what uh, I got to look here. I've got all my notes just to see. I got seat back. The seat, of course, for me, unfortunately, is an F. Yeah. And I think it's just because it's rock solid. One thing it does better, though, I think, than a lot of the cheaper gaming chairs is because they have the molded foam versus the metal frame that at least it is somewhat less restricting. But that seat is like a rock. I mean, if Francis, if you just hit on the seat, I think <laughs> people will know exactly. Yeah, this is one of those things where, in my opinion, you're kind of going, we just went from an S-tier gaming chair, and we're coming down to, in my opinion, an F-tier for comfort. And the, the first spot you're going to notice it right away is that seat. It doesn't have enough padding. The only good thing, like Greg said, is the sides are soft, so you can use it cross-legged or something like that if you want to. It doesn't have the metal bolsters. But having zero adjustability in terms of depth makes it very limiting. So for me, the seat is too big for me at 5'9". So I can't use the chair because the seat goes all the way up to the back of my legs. And then it's just rock hard. One of the hardest seats I've used right up there with the Sihu chair. Yeah. So... Yeah, that so, makes it tough. Yeah, and they make the the bolsters to make it look like this racing car seat, which Ryan's done this on lots of videos where we, we basically show, okay, why would you need a racing car seat? It's if you're, like, doing fast turns and your body's moving around and it holds you in place. Well, you're not doing that, in a, you know, when you're gaming or when you're in an office chair. So there's no reason to have those other than looks. Um, so if you are if you really want that look of the gaming chair, Titan's definitely up there for the for the gaming chair look with the bolsters um, and they did soften them again on, on the seat so it makes it a little less uh, restricting on the seat but the backrest still has those big bolsters on the side which kind of lock you into place you know all the chairs that you're going to see that we love and are giving a tier s tier they're the opposite of locking you into place they're <laughs> flexible oh we had yeah, a watch piece fall off that. <laughs> so we don't want to be locked in place we want to be able to flex and move in the chair so you're getting the exact opposite of this with the Titan, unfortunately. Yeah, but does your chair do this? I mean, Francis, you got to go full recline yeah, mode yeah, I mean. and kick the recline back in the – so pitch that back, yep, and then recline that chair so that you can just go all the way back. you got to release the knee tilt on it and see how, how deep that recline goes. <laughs> it actually doesn't go as far back as some of the cheaper options, but it still goes back quite a, quite a ways. There, oh, we, there go. we go. Oh, He's that's that timid. Scared. That's that awkward, timid feeling. Anybody got a gaming chair or half a gaming chair, and they had that sensation where it's like so, it's like almost a little scary to go to the next level in the chair because you feel like you're going to tip out of the back of it. 
I have a legitimate question for chat. Do you actually sleep or take naps in your office chair or chair? Because for me, this adjustment here is a little bit Im impractical. I would just never use it just because you can't functionally do anything when you recline that far back. And for me, I wouldn't be able to sleep in that chair because it's not comfortable enough and I really wouldn't want to. But is that a thing where people are using yeah. their chair to nap in? Yeah, I can't imagine it. But yeah, let us know. Uh, I got to hit this comment right away since we're on Francis over there. Uh, people want to know, where did the Lord of the Rings sweatshirt come from? Or is it from Box Lunch? Okay. She maybe didn't want to reveal that. Now they might sell out of all their Lord of the Rings stuff. But Quit, quit uh, taking the stream from us over there, Francis. Then you're yeah, she's hijacking everything. The here. one thing that I will say about the, the Titan is we're – we're, d we're down overall on the Titan, and that's because we're used to seeing so many really good ergonomic chairs. But if you want an actual racing-style gaming chair, I haven't found anything that's close to the Titan. The Titan does do a lot of things good for a gaming chair. Basically, all of the things that they could improve and make it as close to an ergonomic chair, they've done. So they've kept the racing style bucket hold you in place design, but they've given you four way arms. They've got a uh, the softer side bolsters on the seat. You've got two way adjustable lumbar support. I think the head pillow is by far the best head pillow out of any gaming chair. Yeah. And Secret Lab, you know, for big and tall people. You can actually get a decently affordable chair that's going to fit you, that's pretty well built and going to be a lot less expensive than if you were going to go get an office chair in the big and tall market where you're going to spend, you know, a thousand, twelve hundred bucks. So I can see why, you know, Secret Lab is so successful. It's just that our preferences are geared more towards flexibility and ergonomic chairs. But if this is the type of chair you're looking for. You know, they what do they have? Five percent off right now. Yeah, so it's not, not a, a huge it's not deal. A big discount, but you yeah. can save some money and go pick up a Titan. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. You want to pop those arm pads off? Did you already do that? Oh yeah, that's another cool feature. Just just pull just, it up. Just pull them off. You don't have to push a button. They just come right off. There yep. it is. Magnet. That's not a bad thing. I know a lot of people smash their chair into their desk repetitively over and over and over and over. And also, if you're just using your chair for work and for gaming, you're going to be in that thing 12, 14, maybe 16 hours a day. The arm pads are going to fall apart at some point. This is a pretty cool feature that they made, so it's easily swappable. I think that's – some stuff is a little gimmicky. That's not one of them. I think that's actually a really good idea. And like Ryan said, that head pillow is super cush. It's like the exact opposite of the rest of the chair. Yeah. And like a commenter said, you can get the Titan in a ton of different colors. If you really want to support a team and you're into supporting a League of Legends team or, a, I don't know, any other Counter-Strike team, you can get their team logo on your chair. So it, there's a lot of plus side to going to it. Obviously, pure functionality and pure comfort, we tend to lean the other way. But yeah. Before, yeah. we, before we jump, I know you want to get that conversion out there. Why don't you just say it quick, and then I'll go. Yeah, well, actually, I, I was, what I was going to say is we got a lot of good questions coming in. Just so you guys know, at the end, we're going to run through a bunch of chairs, and then we'll probably hit on some of those questions. We'll have a little question-answer time where we'll pick up on um, – got a question about the Soji, which I, I'll quick say yes, it probably is worth it at the 722 price. But, we'll, again, we'll hit some of those questions after we – we'll take a little break after we run through a bunch of chairs. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is we got to – Keep moving. Yeah, keep moving. So, but before yeah. we go to the next chair, as we kind of swap that out, let us, I want to know in the comments what you're currently sitting in. And if you yep. switched from something, so you now have a new chair and you're just hanging out with us because you're a chair nerd like us, even better. But what were you sitting in before then? Got to know what some of you are sitting in and if you're aspiring to be in something better. Never thought I'd hear League of Legends in the B Todd stream. Ryan's Gamers dropping game. some knowledge here. So, you know, playing a little Fortnite with the kids lately. Oh, um, my son is into Fortnite. If they now. hit like a first place, it's just like the house goes nuts. He, you know? He's been playing it. He was playing <laughs> it for the first time this weekend and he can't stop playing it. So. I think that's funny because we also downloaded Fortnite at home <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> and we're talking about running multiple consoles now in our house because uh, my like son. older cousin thing? Yeah. No, it was oh. actually, it was Robert because <laughs> Robert told fault. us last, I think it was last week that his kids were playing and, uh, and I was like, well, then we got to jump on there, too. Same thing. And, unfortunately, my kid is killing me right now. Yeah, so it's embarrassing. I'm going to get better. And he's only six or something. Not, <laughs> not, the five-year-old's not in okay. it. Nine-year-old's in it. 
So, all right, all what's right, our next so chair? We got the Ameep up next. So this is a kind of a mix-up chair that we put together. Ameep is the Amia frame. So it's the steel case Amia frame and back, and then it has the Leap seat. Okay, so what we've done here is we've also made the Lamia chair, which you've probably heard us talk about a lot if, you, if you're on our channel, which the Lamia is kind of this, kind of the premium setup of getting the Leap frame with an Amia seat, which is kind of Greg's favorite combination. But don't overlook this combo, which is kind of the flip of it, because you're still getting what we consider A-tier backrest, A-tier seat, maybe even higher. I know Ryan really loves the Leap seat. So you're still getting these steel case quality materials in the Amip chair. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's great. You still get all that flexibility in the backrest. You get even more flexibility in the Leap seat than you'd get in the Amia seat. So Ryan, maybe you take this one away. Yeah, I just think it's a great deal just because we're kind of – in my opinion, we're offering, I guess I'd say a pretty good discount on what I would consider to be an upgrade. I know a lot of people don't like the Leap seat quite as much as the EMEA seat, but I like the added flexibility in it. The curve, you know, isn't always the best for some people, but most people do really like the Leap seat. And so I don't think it's a downgrade to put that seat on the EMEA by any means. And it's actually sold for less money than... A refurbished Amia would sell for. And so, you know, if you're looking for under $400, there's not a lot of chairs that I could point to confidently and tell you that's definitely going to be better for you than an Amip chair. It's not going to have all of the best bells and whistles of a leap or a gesture or even as many adjustments as something like a Kalami Atlas for under 300 But from a build quality standpoint, from just a pure comfort standpoint, it's going to be... I think as good as you're going to get for under 400 bucks. So, and then you got to hit that shameless plug. We've got, I think it's what is it, 20% off the Amip 20 code. So a bunch of people actually have commented in here that they're either sitting in an Amip, I think, or they're waiting for an Amip, because I think a lot of you have probably purchased a chair recently. You got to let us know if you have one. What do you think of it? Because like Ryan said, I mean, either. I like the EMEA seat more than I like the, the the leap seat, but it doesn't mean that I don't sit in a leap. I have a leap chair at home, which I sit in for three to four hours pretty much every single day. And it's, it's still a really good seat. It's just a little bit different shape on it, which makes the sitting experience slightly different, but it, it has more flexibility in the front. I think this is such a good deal for, I mean, I keep saying it's the best deal in ergonomic seating because it really is. You're getting steel case quality chair for, almost the price of the Colomy chair, I think, or not not quite what that discount is now. But I think with mm -hmm. the Amip 20, it actually gets you, I mean, got to be so close. To put it into perspective, the next closest chair to this from a top three manufacturer, Hayworth, Miller, Knoll, or Steelcase, is going to be the Hayworth Assure for yeah. $279, which yeah. is the most basic of basic chairs that you're going to find. It's imported. It's really a low end chair and it's not even comparable to an Amip. So you're, you're really getting down there in price, but really staying up there in terms of quality and comfort, which is why it's such a good deal. Yeah. And I mean, one question we get asked is, does the chair still have all the functions that in a or that in a Mia or a leap would have? So you're still getting the seat slider with, with the, um, so it's the same mechanism that you get in the EMEA where you have the seat slider. You're still getting the same recline functions that are in the EMEA. So that's the tilt lock, uh, full um, full recline, uh, tension on that. So arms exactly the same as it would be on either the EMEA or Leap. They have the same arm package essentially. So you're not losing any functionality by having this chair that's uh, kind of two being put together. So yeah, We got a question from Live Edge Cam. I believe that was his name, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So he asked if his wife, who's 5'5", five, five, and a first-grade teacher, I don't know where that comes into play. Is it because she's sitting in her chair as much as a first-grade teacher would? I'm not sure what that, how much that would be. I imagine first grade, your kids are probably not sitting in their chairs yeah. all the time, so she's probably chasing. But I think at 5'5", five, five, you're going to fit in this chair perfect. Yeah. I mean, these chairs are really good to 5'2", no problem, and then as good to, I would say with the EMEA backrest on there, maybe 6'2", six, 6'3", six, is going to be a little bit short. That's where you start to run into problems with that back not being tall enough. But otherwise, it's good wide-ranging uh, size. So, 
And don't forget, Amip 20, it's 20% off of these. And once once this is done, the live stream, that will go away. Yep. And without question, Ryan won't let us run it anymore this year. So if you've <laughs> been waiting for one, he definitely won't. Yeah, and one question, that that uh, Amip chair had the vinyl seat. So we do sell the Leap refurbished with a vinyl seat. You can't actually get the Amip in the vinyl right now. So it's just all black fabric is what we're doing. The Knoll Regeneration Chair. What did you have this ranked, Robert? Ooh, okay. Overall comfort. Spot. Overall, so for the seat, I have a, or sorry, I have an A for the seat. For the um, back, I had a B. Okay. Or no, sorry, backwards. B for the seat. Yep. A for the back. I love the backrest on this chair. Um, I, I say it all the time. To me, this is one of the most underrated chairs because it, it doesn't look like it would be as comfortable as it really is. Um, but that backrest has this great flex. Now, I'm somebody who likes a uh, poly back, so that's the um, flexible plastic, essentially. Uh, I love the Sella chair from Herman Miller, no longer around. But it's a similar chair to this where it has that poly back, but then a fabric upholstered seat. So arms, we didn't get the highest. I believe you can get a higher arm package than this. This one just has the height adjustable. So we haven't tested the the nicer arms on this one, but these ones are just okay. But the seat is also very nice. It looks really thin. You can probably see this on camera. <clears throat> that seat looks like it wouldn't have nearly enough padding, but it's not about how thick it is. It's about how much support it actually has. And this seat, I mean, I could spend a lot of hours in this seat, so... Definitely an underrated chair, the Regeneration. Yeah, I think that Polyback is probably one of the more unique ones of the ones that we've seen in here. It doesn't feel like hard plastic, which is cool. It like has a soft, almost like, like rubber. Yeah, it's like a rubberish feel, but it's got good elasticity to it, so it gives you good support. I'd say the only thing for me besides me messing up the, uh, the order, really, for those arms I left us with, their very basic arms, I don't think they're great, is that that seat, it's super thin, but it, you know, I don't love it as much as some of the other seats, but it somehow is actually still comfortable with it being extremely thin. I know they've got on a very thin piece of plastic under there. It's very flexible. It's, it's actually really comfortable for how thin it is. But I would be careful, though, if you don't like thin seat pads, this probably isn't going to be the one for you. It's not deep padding at all. Yeah, I actually really like this chair. I, I had it A for seat comfort and back comfort. It's Like they said with the back, it's a really unique back. It's soft. It doesn't feel like hard plastic, so that's there's a lot going for it there. And I think the natural curve helps to give you good lumbar support without needing an added system in there. The arms were a miss for us, but I did get a chance to see the four-way arms last time that we were in Neocon, and the four-way arms are really good on this chair. So if we had the four-way arms on this chair, I do believe it would be one of the most comfortable chairs overall that I've tested and yes the seat pad is thin but at no point did I ever feel like I was bottoming out or my tailbone was getting sore it has good flexibility it's a little on the smaller side so if you're taller and you pull it out all the way I don't know how that would fit but I never really had a problem with that my only gripe with this chair really is the recline function just because it's got kind of that hip thrusty recline where it just kind of pushes your hips up in the air instead of kind of just bringing you back and letting you rock or like a synchro tilt where you just kind of come back and relax. So I don't really like reclining in the chair, but I do like everything else about it. And I see 25% off. So you yeah. can get this chair for $600, which is, I mean, that's a really, really good price for a chair of this quality, in my opinion. If I'm yeah. thinking of other chairs for around $600 or under, you're looking at like the Soji, the Vera, the Akir, the Series 2, and I'd much rather sit in this chair over all of those. So Yeah, we always, uh, $700 is one of our breaking points for our We Picked videos, and it's always kind of a tough one because it's always kind of the same contenders like the Soji, the, the ones that Ryan just listed. Normally, the regeneration doesn't fit in that category, but this would be my pick for a lot of these categories of like best back for under $700. I definitely would consider this chair, uh, but again, it, it's only... Right now, with that twenty five percent off, normally at eight eight twelve or so, uh, eight sixteen, that, that kind of puts it as a where I don't know if the value is quite there, but with the sale price, it's, it's a good pick. It's definitely a, it's a sneaky chair for sure because overall, it looks like between all three of us, we've got it ranked at, at a a low A, 
And it's probably because of me. It looks like that it's a lower A. It probably <laughs> would have been a pretty solid A if it would have just been between these two guys. Now, my question, though, to you, Robert, being that you're 6'2", where do you think the breaking point is on that back for height for people that are taller than you? Because I think that would be one concern I might have if I was, say, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, which we've got a lot of people in the audience that are tall. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's probably, for me, it was never a problem. So 6'2", you're definitely fine. And, I mean, I, I gave the back rest to A tier. So it obviously is not even close to where I start feeling that it's a problem. My guess is getting into that 6'4 range, you probably got to start thinking about that. Um, for me, again, it's all body type makes a difference too. I have a shorter torso, long legs. So for me, it's going to be even less of a problem that that, that back isn't super high. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't have a ton of flexibility on the top of the frame. I mean, there's a little bit there. So, but if you are taller, you're going to probably start feeling that. So, and I would be worried too, because it's not an overly big chair just yeah. in general. So while it doesn't have any like hard points on the seat, if you are a bit heavier, a bit wider framed, you're probably going to run into some issues in the seat and the backrest. So that'd be something yeah. I would consider as well. All right, next up. Yeah, we should bring out the classic here, I think. One question I'll just hit right away. Office chairs that have a seat for more than one person. Now, that's a tough one. I don't think I've ever heard of a love seat that's a chair. We've seen one. We did. From well, Sitmatic, yeah, they, well, had a, was, they had a monster was, chair with... A double five star base on it. True. Oh, you and I true. took a picture sitting in it together. That's true. It's more so. of a bariatric chair. Maybe correct? that's what they're so looking right. for. Though. It had a. Yeah. I think it was a two. Th it was like a two thousand pound weight rating. Or yeah, it was something. massive. It was insane. It had two full size bases on yeah. it. Yeah, so it was literally wider than Greg and I sitting next to each other. Yep. In the chair, so <laughs> that was a fun one. So the old classic. Oof. Let's hope that this – so we had to put some parts and pieces back together yeah. to make this chair whole again. No one's real excited to run away on this one, I see. Uh, so Classic is – it's an older model. The regeneration is a completely different chair. So we do a lot of videos. Remastered. Where, that might be confusing. We just saw the – I said just saw the regeneration. Sorry, the remastered. So using remastered is kind of confusing too yeah. because Herman yeah. Miller no longer uses remastered. They just call the Aeron now the Aeron, and the previous version before 2016 is now referred to as the Classic. When they first introduced the very the refresh on the Aeron in 2016, they called it the Aeron Remastered, but then they just dropped that name and just started calling it the Aeron and calling the old one the Classic. So yeah. that's why there's kind of three names being tossed around. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's a good distinction. So we talk about the Aeron, what, what I guess I'll call the regener or I'll say it again, <laughs> remastered. So the newer version, it's in a ton of our videos. We talk about it a lot. Personally, I really like it. Just always remember these are very different chairs. The Classic has a definitely a very different feel to the mechanism. It does not have the same synchro tilt feel. The, this one, you, you get where you feel like you're stuck in that recline position. It has a deep recline, but it's not as easy to just come out of it and sit up straight. So you're definitely not getting the same recline. The Basically, the experience with um, mesh is about the same. You know, the, the mesh backrest and seat, not terribly different except for the front edge. So in the remastered or the new version of the Aeron, they've fixed the front edge so it doesn't have the same pad in the front so that's the biggest change with, with anything of the, the mesh uh, and backrest and seat. You can probably see that through. Yeah, so that's the, probably the biggest change with the seat. One thing I would say too, Robert, I think, I think one thing we should probably talk about with this chair is that it doesn't, it's not made anymore. Yeah. And so maybe the more important thing would be to kind of cover the stuff that you should look for when you're buying this used because that's really the format you're going to get it in. It's either going to yeah. be as is, Craigslist, Facebook, yeah. or you're going to get them from a refurbisher or someone who's refurbishing, as they say, but they're really yeah. just wiping it down. Like, what are the things that you think that they should look for? Well, because I think that's really important. Sure. That's great. So like right now, Francis is kind of pushing into the mesh. So you can, that's the first thing I would check is how taut is that mesh? If you're able to really just press right through it, sit in it and feel how, if you feel like you're sinking way down into it, that means that that chair has too many hours on it. Uh, and I would just skip it because the Aeron is supposed to have a more firm sitting experience. So if you find yourself sinking too far, it's, it's a no-go. The other thing is if you want to spin to the back of the chair, the, the perfect. So you can see the arm adjustment has these little spin wheels. This means it's a very old, uh, older classic. So again, it means it's uh, pre-2005. Pre-2005. Thank you. So you're almost 20-year-old chair. So 
Again, probably would avoid unless you're getting it for like a hundred bucks and you want to try it out. Uh, I know a lot here wouldn't even want to sit in this chair for a hundred dollars. But those those also too will break and then they just rotate and you can't tighten yeah. them down anymore. So that's one thing you have to look at because if they don't tighten yep. down, then they're pointless. and these ones are already a little questionable. Even tightened down, there's a little extra wiggle to it. So arm pads are also another thing that you can tell. You're just going to see more damage, more wear on these. These have that harder cover over them. Um, it's very hard to find these that are in good condition. They pretty much always have some scratches and stuff. It's like a sock, but it's rock hard. Yeah. They did make a change to that arm pad on some of the newer classics that are that really cush feel that you get on the new remastered, which yep. we can't call it remastered anymore. But those are those are awful pads, in my yep. opinion. So last couple things is a couple of the items or the areas that break down on these chairs is that pad that goes under the seat, the front edge of the seat. So you can take a quick look at that. It might even be missing if it's a really old chair, but they get kind of grimy and start disintegrating as Francis is showing us. And then also the lumbar pad that goes in the back, um, it starts to just break down and crack as they kind of dry out and things. You can replace some of these parts. So uh, if you buy one, you really want the chair, but she doesn't have a lumbar pad can find some aftermarket on some of that stuff. But uh, honestly, there's so many other good chair options that we're going to talk about a lot of them. I, this is almost a chair we would just say avoid unless you can get a killer deal on it because if, it's not great. If you've sat in this chair in a professional setting for a long period and you say, I like this chair, it's great for me, yeah. then buy one because then you know for sure what you're getting. But I would say like what Robert is mentioned, there's a lot better chairs that are more modern that have better features. And like with the Aeron Classic, I would be super conscious of understanding if that mechanism works because forward tilt, that a lot of times doesn't work like it's supposed to. The tilt tension, mm -hmm. it takes a ton of cranks to yeah. adjust it. So just make sure that's working as well. And then if you're buying it from someone who's refurbishing, does it have a warranty? Because you're likely to be paying more for that. And what does that warranty entail? Go deeper in that. If it's as is, still probably going to be like 400 500 bucks in a lot of I mean a chair as is 25 years old 500 bucks on Craigslist it's crazy to me I mean per, for I mean just for perspective we refurbished chairs and we we sold the Aeron for a couple of years we stopped selling it just because we don't like it it's it's really I I personally ranked the seat F tier comfort and when you have to sell a refurbished chair for $800, because that's how expensive they are and that's how much money it takes to get them back into the condition that we feel comfortable selling them for, you're in the situation where it's like, man, for $800, I could probably recommend some better chairs than this. Yeah. And I don't know how great I feel about selling this to you. And so, I, I don't know. I, I, if it was my family member and they told me they loved it, I'd say, okay. But if they told me that they'd never try it, I would tell them there's no reason for you to ever get an Aeron Classic. Yeah. If you really want to try an Aeron, try the new one. And if you're not willing to spend that money and you don't like it, then just find a different option. Because I think there's plenty of other good options for $800 and under, especially today with the crazy sales. I don't know if there's a ton of refurbished sales going on. Maybe you can get an $800 Aeron today for 700 bucks, but it's still going to be expensive. Yeah, it's still 700 bucks. Right. So a couple things here. I just want to hit on our coupon codes. I had a couple questions in there. So if you're looking at our codes, we have them pinned there. Right now, NV15, so that's our BTOD NV standing desk. Uh, you can see that desk is right behind Francis here in the set. Uh, if we can, you'll see that in the background. So this is a great option for a standing desk if you're, if you're looking to get standing. Amoeb 20, we already talked about the Amoeb chair, 20% off just during our stream here. Combo 20 is if you want these two together. So you can get the Amoeb chair with the NV standing desk, 20% off. Ultimate 15, that's for our ultimate cable management box, which, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also see that box right underneath the NV desk. So uh, great deal. People love these. You know, I won't go too far on cable management here because you guys will have to stop me. But if you're looking <laughs> to improve your cable management, you can't do any better than the ultimate cable management box, 15% off. And finally, S series 20. So, S-Series is the top-of-the-end, most premium standing desk out there. It's going to give you all the best customer service, installation, delivery, all the best stuff you can get. That is 20% off. Again, that's just during the stream, correct? Just so during the stream. You got a couple hours here to make those decisions on those purchases. And uh, 
yeah, we'll we'll come back to those again. Greg, you wanna we wanna hit up on maybe some questions or starting to build up a little? Yeah, I think we got a, we got quite a few questions. So let's let's just start kind of going down the, the line. Did you do that conversion on the the uh Yes. Uh someone helped us here behind the scenes. Okay. All right. Let me scroll up to where that is. I believe it was five about five hundred and thirty for the that's for the Soji chair. Okay. And then since you are in house Aaron expert and you love the chair. Okay. What do you think, what size for someone who's 5'10 and 155 pounds, what, what Aaron is going to fit them best? I'd say the C. I mean, that's if you look at the chart, that's probably really solidly in the C. 5'10 and 155? Oh, sorry, did I just say C? C, yeah. I meant B. I'm okay. sorry. That's pretty much solid right in the B. If anything, I would probably lean towards getting a little bit of a lar- the larger size chair. But at that height, you're you're not going to need a, a size C chair, I don't believe, and and definitely not the A because you be you feel small. pretty restricted. Yeah, it's going to be so too that's, small. That's in that B range. All right. What was the conversion for? Yeah, so that was for the Soji chair. If the Soji is a good deal at it was Canadian seven twenty two. So would you consider the Soji a good deal at five hundred and thirty US? Heck yeah, in Canada. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that the Soji's in our list. It's actually coming up really soon. So we'll come back. <clears throat> we can come back to the Soji. Here's a good soon. question for Ryan. Amip versus Call Me Atlas or Clatina? Who's the winner? Because those are all around the same price point. Clatina is definitely third by a, a wide margin. Um, in my opinion, the Amip is giving you more in terms of comfort and build quality. The the Colomy is going to have the advantage, though, because you you do have a few more adjustments. You do have a bigger recline, and you get a headrest. And even though it is a cheaper chair, it has the build quality of a chair closer to five or six hundred bucks. And so this is the only chair that I would consider as an alternative to a chair like the Amip or the Amia or a Soji or something like that. Because I don't know, it, it's just such good value for under three hundred dollars. It's still what would that be? 80 bucks less than, or a hundred bucks less than an Amip? Right, so. right now that, so we actually saw that the, the Colony chair price went up. So it was one of the few chairs that didn't have a better discount on it. Now okay. I think it was like 289. They went from ah. 269 to 289. Yeah. So <clears throat> someone must have created a market for their chairs. <laughs> yeah. And it's also the, yeah, uh, they're running out of chairs. <laughs> would be yeah. my guess. They don't have enough. Yeah. It's also ships, uh, in what five to six weeks or four to five, six, yeah. yeah. So the, I think we're so they're uh, on a boat somewhere we coming apologize. over. Apologize, we might be <laughs> we blew them here. out the door. Yeah. All right. So what about what about this question though? We've got oh, where did it go? I lost it. Oh, it was the coupon codes. You hit on this because people want to know if you can use these coupon codes that we're giving after the stream. Last time we had a window of about an hour after the stream ended that you could still use the coupon codes. So that's going to be very similar today. It's going to be whenever the stream ends, about an hour after, you should still be able to use those coupon codes. Otherwise, they go away. We still will have a 10% off coupon right. code for... on everything at BTOT. For everything at BTOT. Yep. Today. Probably today. get extended. Okay. I guess as it gets... As, we'll, so if we'll you miss see. out on the, the 15 or 20, still get 10 throughout the day and, and potentially longer, but best discounts during the stream here. All right, here's a really good question. I bought a gaming and body, but I get pain on the outside of my hips after sitting a bit. How do you know if you just need to get used to a chair versus returning it? That's tough. I mean, not every chair is going to be perfect for everyone. And just because a chair costs, you know, $1,500, $2,000 doesn't mean that it's going to fit you or be comfortable. And I think that a lot of people, when they buy a really expensive chair, they think that there's something wrong with them if it doesn't fit them or it's not comfortable. And the truth is, is that out of all of the chairs that we've brought in, and we've brought in a ton of chairs for over a thousand bucks, there's only a handful that I would consider to be, you know, A or S tier for me. And so I would always, I always just recommend giving it the full trial period whether it's 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, whatever they're allowed to give. And if at the end of that time you're on the fence, just return it and try something else, especially if they've got free returns. I think Herman Miller's backed off a little bit and they charge 50 bucks. Still not a huge expense to try a $1,500 mm-hmm. chair. But, I mean, if it's, if it's not comfortable, try something else. Yeah, I think it, it makes a lot of sense to have the chair as long as you can have it, especially if you've gone through a lot of chairs. And that's the other thing. That's one of the questions we get that hasn't been asked here 
is, you know, when, when should I shop local versus go online? I think for a lot of people, going online will work, especially if you use our content as a resource to kind of get a general idea of what maybe you want based on what we talk about. But beyond that, if you've bought a whole bunch of chairs, like let's say you bought 10 chairs, that's not unusual. I mean, if you have, you should let us know in the comments because that is real. It's time you start looking locally. I mean, it will save you a ton of time. And if your back hurts, it will be worth it, I think. Or even maybe not locally but still in person like for instance us in our situation here if i wanted to see a herman miller or a steel case or a hayworth chair in person i would need to drive two or three hours either to madison or milwaukee or i'd be restricted to you know office max or staples that type of a chair which i probably wouldn't go down that road but it's probably worth your time just to make the drive two or three hours to look at eight to ten chairs and try them in person versus you know, try one chair every month until you find the right chair over a year. So it's just something to consider. I know it's a lot of time and a lot of driving for some of you, but it could be worth it. Mm-hmm. I think Cam had a good a good point in here. He said, how much does, uh, does posture and monitor placement go into that? I think just in general, like you got to look at all of the things that you're doing as a potential problem the reason why you're uncomfortable even things you're doing outside of the chair because the chair can only do so much for you especially if you're hurting when you're sleeping in your mattress or when you're driving around in your car or if you're just not active at all some of these things will have a huge impact on how you're feeling in the chair unfortunately won't solve all those problems Mm -hmm. is there an aftermarket headrest for the leap chair I don't believe so. No, I mean, they. you can buy a Leap chair with a headrest. None of us here really like the headrest. It's not very adjustable. You just get a height adjustment. So the odds of it just kind of fitting in the perfect spot, it's not great. Um, so, and for the Lamia, we don't offer the Lamia with any of those headrests. If, if we liked the headrest, maybe we'd consider it as an option. But um, it's not, uh, you know, you see where two of us are sitting in Leaps, no headrest because we, we just don't prefer it with it. Yeah. And I, and I think a lot of the headrests that are coming from the manufacturers are bad. So that also has a big part of it. Like the, the Leap headrest is, I would say, the worst money you can spend on a headrest yeah. if you get the Leap headrest. Yeah. It sort of just pushes your head forward awkwardly, and it doesn't do what it should. So yeah. that's one of those places you could definitely save some money. All right, well, I got I want to kick this off here, yeah. though, because we're getting towards the end of this segment. I want to let everybody know that we're going to do a giveaway, and I think we talked about the Amip quite a bit now, so that's actually going to be the first chair we give away. Ryan, you've got some stuff you need to say for the legal side, and then I will let them know, or you can let them know what they need to type in chat. Sure. This is a sweepstakes with no purchase necessary. You must be over 18. Well, you can be 18 or older, I should say, and reside in the continental United States. In order to enter the sweepstakes, you just need to type hashtag chair. Capitalization does not matter. Make sure there's no space. Put that into chat, and the winner will be selected at random at the end of the countdown. Which is counting down right now. I don't even know what what is it at right now. Just about five minutes. 4.30. Sweet. Well, should we crush a couple chairs real fast? I think we can do this next one real quick. So CERTA chair, CERTA executive office chair. This did just pop up this morning. This popped up as a deal. Yes? I don't think that's the right chair. Yeah, that's not the right CERTA chair, but truthfully, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Uh, They all are pretty much exactly the same. That's a a big and tall one. The one that we're going to be talking about here is just a little (laughs) bit smaller, but it looks almost identical. Uh, at this point, a Serta chair is a Serta chair. They're just kind of different sizes. They don't do a ton. So if you're looking for something to sit in for more than two hours at a time, I'd probably look in a different direction just because the chances of it being ergonomic and supportive aren't great. But if you have like an executive home office, uh, something that you maybe hang out in an hour or two a night or something that you just lounge in the majority of the time, then this can be a nice option. Not super expensive. You know, it's going to be... 250 to $450, depending on if you get the standard size or the big and tall version. It's just not going to be something that we would recommend for tasking or ergonomic style work. Yeah, it'll feel nice when you first plop down in it, but you're not going to want to spend lots of hours in this chair. Yeah. 
I think we keep rolling. Yeah, that's uh, about uh, all we've got. Wow, that, that's all we're going to give for <laughs> the Serta. I didn't even give my comment on Sorry, it. Sorry, Greg, go ahead. I mean, I have, to, I have to give my comment. I would definitely not recommend buying this chair. <laughs> okay. So, all right, next so, one. Such a to comment. To Kova, <laughs> now here's, here's one that <laughs> went deep we, on that one. We would recommend a little more. Uh, now, Tacova has has different deals going all the time. Uh, right now, I believe they're calling this a lightning deal, unless that expires. Cyber Monday deal. Cyber Monday deal. Uh, I'll just break it to you guys. This this is about the price it is very often, right? It's so it's been, 140. Or it's, been it it's been better. Right. They've been better. they've okay. been having it at 119 with a 20 dollar coupon code up until Black yes. Friday. Yeah, it was. And like this they, is, yeah, and, and Black Friday came and they increased the price. Yeah. And I mean, you guys out there, you're live shopping with us. You're probably smart shoppers as it is. You understand that not all cyber deals are their best deals of the year. Uh, you know, the, if you've heard of Camel, 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 it can ch- check some of these price changes. I always look at that. So, um, you know, worth checking it for this Amazon stuff. They make it look like some screaming deal. It isn't always. But either way, for $140, this is definitely a chair that we recommend at that price point. So uh, there's a couple others we'll talk about later that, uh, you know, we might like better, or at least maybe I would, the Colony chair. But I I know uh, Greg and Ryan probably prefer the Tacova at this price point. I think this just goes to show you how good of a deal it was when we were saying it was an incredible deal on that early Black Friday, where it was 119 bucks. Right. We we've been saying for a long time that they, they, I don't know, I don't even know if they make money on this chair because just thinking of all of the, cost of involved with bringing it here to the United States and then redistributing it and they're selling through Amazon which isn't cheap I don't think that they make that much money on this chair and they're trying to maybe make it back right now or they're running out of inventory just like the colony chair and have increased their prices because of it I wonder if they have the double listing because a lot of people buy it for $299 and that's how they make up their margin that's true or something yeah because yeah if you just run shipping costs and freight rates and the tariff and providing any level of service or anything, it's really, really tough to find a chair that you could sell for 120 bucks. It's 140 today, still really good deal. There's no chair that I would recommend for under $200 over the Tacova, other than maybe the Kalami Kirin, but even still, this thing does better things than that one. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously the one major downside with the Tacova is just gonna be the overall build. It's really, really difficult to get a well-built chair for under $200. If we think about how much this costs the factory to make in order for the margins to be in there, the shipping to be in there, we're literally talking, you know, 20 to 30 bucks. So there's not a ton of material value there, but somehow they've put together a pretty decent chair with a decent amount of adjustments. And for me, this is the most comfortable chair that I have found for under that $200 mark. So... I don't know. I, it's tough to find something better other than just upgrading in price. Yeah, and it does have a nice headrest, too. That's one thing where, again, I, I like that Kieran chair we were talking about, but uh, Kieran doesn't have a headrest. So if you're really set on a headrest, uh, we've all we've done a headrest tier list, and this one was, I believe, was it an A tier even, it was, if not? Robert, did you know that there are folks here looking to win your kitchen I, chair? I, I was going to comment on that. I, it's, it's not for – I can't. Well, really everything know. is for sale for a price. <laughs> I mean, we've been trying to buy it off Robert just to keep it here in the office because he has to transport it back and forth. And, in fact, we were supposed to have it on stream today, and Robert told me that he couldn't fit it in his car, which is another reason why we need it. Right? I'm afraid that if I bring it, I'm never going to be able to bring it home. And, you know, I like to – you know, my mother-in-law comes over very often. She's there right now. I love to have her, and, you know, if we take it away, she's not going to have a chair. Right. So – so, and that's the thing that, and so that's what he tells us. And so we, but we still keep pushing. <laughs> what would you pay for Robert's kitchen chair though? I mean, I, that's a real question. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like you said, everything's for sale at a certain price. So they say the see who M18 is close to the Dakova. What are your thoughts? Oof. No. Yeah. I think that the see who M18 does nothing better than the Tacova, other than potentially having a little bit of pad on the lumbar support system. But other than that, I think it's a pretty big downgrade. The seat is rock hard. Just right there with the Titan is one of the most firm seats I've ever used. I could never sit in that chair. It also has really weird dimensions where it's wide and the arms are forward. The seat is really deep, but then the seat doesn't go tall. So you need to be like short with long legs and a wide body to fit in this chair. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't 
I really, really dislike it. I also do not like how they design the backrest in a way where the plastic is almost like formed forward in front of the mesh. So you, when you go against the mesh, you sink in and you feel the edges of the frame instead of the mesh being on top of the frame and it not kind of folding in like on the Tacova. So when I sit in the Tacova, I do not feel the frame. I just kind of move around in it and it's fine. When I sit in the Sihu, I feel everything about the frame, the top of it, the side of it, the seats rock hard, the arms have this concave shape. I, I don't know. It's tough for me to take, I don't know. If someone's saying that the M18 is a big upgrade to the Tacova, I question that. Yeah, I, I would too. So. All right, so CJ, you are the winner of the Amip. Looks like you have acknowledged that you've won. Congrats. Nice. Make sure you hit up marketing at btod.com so they can get your information and we can get that out to you. In about another, I don't know, 45 minutes, we're going to give away an EMEA chair. Ooh. So that one's going to be pretty good. So stick around for that. What do you think about an autographed version of that <laughs> Kitchen chair. Wow. I mean, it's going to be more than someone put 350. Tree no, fitty. They said tree, 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 tree fitty. Tree fitty. Sorry. It's going to be higher than that for the autograph version for sure. What if your mother-in-law signed it? I mean, that has to go for over $1,000. <laughs> Maybe. Is, is, is Sherry in the chat to okay this or is, her, uh, well, is she I mean, just she's losing probably her kitchen watching, furniture? You know, <laughs> she's, she's been a little more careful on the comments. You know, she didn't want to get me in trouble again this time. She so. did again put you in a bad time. spot last time. That's true. Uh, well, right. we better start crushing because we're we're a little behind. So let's we'll fly through. We got an awesome deal here on the gesture. So uh, now gesture steel case chair, one of their high end seating. Uh, a lot of things to like about this chair. I you know I maybe like it a little more than the other guys. So I'll take it away for a minute here. Uh, some some things that I do like is the gesture has more of a contoured, I don't know if that's the right word. It, it has more of a hugging kind of backrest than the other steel case chairs, which that is maybe a preference thing. Some people might like that more than others. Personally, I find when I'm sitting in the gesture, it's like it is really kind of holding me in place, not in a restrictive way because it is very flexible, but it does feel like it kind of wraps my back a little bit. So I like that feeling. The seat does not have quite the comfort of the leap or the, it sounds like something's happening. Yeah, well, there's just, there's a waiting list forming okay. for your refurbished. Oh, well, <laughs> refurbished we probably need a little of, refurb, at least a good cleanup. Chair. But. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's good. So a seat, not quite where the leap and the EMEA is, but it's still, I still really like the seat. It just doesn't have quite as much padding, uh, especially in that kind of back tailbone area. Adjustments on this thing are awesome. It has the, the nice turn dial for that seat depth. So it fits a wide range of users has a nice recline uh, with different uh, backstop settings. Arms are amazing. They're actually, I actually prefer the Leap or EMEA arms better just because I think the pads are a little nicer on the EMEA and Leap. And as I talked about earlier, I don't love how these arms, they move a little too easy on the gesture. So sometimes if you're putting some pressure on them, they move when you don't want them to. So, uh, and, and one last thing, uh, and then I'll let uh, Greg jump in here too, but the backrest has this little bit of angle or tip to it. So if you want to sit upright, it, it's going to give you this little bit of wiggle room that I don't love. So if you, you got to lock it up, if you can lock it up into the upright position, and then it's still going to have... Spin it around too so you can see those knobs. Yeah, it's still going to have this little bit of give. So it's like, I, I wish that when I lock it upright, I want it to just stay straight in that upright position. You so. have to crank the tension up on it. So if yeah. you if you want to get it in a very vertical upright position, which I think this backrest is great at doing, that's the one thing it does very, very well, you have to then crank the tension up, which means when, when you release it to go into recline mode, you have to loosen it because there's no way that you can recline with it cranked that high up. So, Did yeah, I think see she chimed in. I, th <laughs> I think that... Uh, Oh, there so we go. If the price is right if to the, sell the chair. <laughs> if the price is right, we're going to sell that kitchen chair today, <laughs> folks. So, And we might even be able to get his whole dang family to sign that for you. They've all sat in it. All right, so I think what Robert said is true, though, about the gesture. And this is this is the best-looking chair from Steelcase, in my opinion. It's the most modern yep. design. I think it, this one probably isn't the one that looks the best because it's just black frame. But there's a very distinct difference in how we rate this chair with its back compared to its seat and its arms. I think the seat is its downfall, which is unfortunate. But of the three, the EMEA, the Leap, and this, this has the least flexible front seat pan, which I know that that's something I like in those other chairs. And then it's just got an awkward point in the tailbone region. 
it's just uncomfortable for me. And I know I've seen that from a lot of other people. And Ryan brought up a good point. As of late, he thinks that that seat just kind of makes you feel like you're sliding out of it a bit, which is, it's true. You know, there's no way to get around that. So it's hard to believe that this is their most popular chair, but I know a lot of you are buying on aesthetics too, and it has it where the EMEA is probably the most boring looking from the lineup. And this is, is the best looking, so I don't know. Is this their most popular chair? I think it is, yeah. Huh. yeah I, I, well, I think based on reviews on their okay. website, um, I'm, I'm almost certain that this is... Yeah, ever since you created the Lamia, people keep asking for the, yeah. the, the leap back with the Amia seat and the gesture arms. Unfortunately, that's Im it's just an impossible thing to create because you'd have to start with the gesture frame because of the cantilever design, and then you wouldn't have the leap back. So unfortunately, that's just a, an impossibility, I think. But yeah, I'd be right, right there with these guys on the seat. I don't love it. I do find it to be a little bit more flexible than Greg does. I think it has good flexibility. I just can't stand how I feel like I'm falling out of it. Yep. So. And we did get a question to any plans on a refurbished gesture from B-Todd. We have sold gestures before, but they were more of a as-is style where we clean them up, put them in, in really make sure they're in good condition, all working. Uh, we don't have those right now. I don't think we have any plans yeah. anytime soon. But, yep. uh, yeah, so. But and yeah, and again, we, we probably push you towards the leap as the more comfortable chair, our preference for sure. So. But, when I mean, there's times where we get presented opportunities to buy a few hundred really good clean gestures and then yep. we'll, we'll bring those in make sure they're working correctly get them cleaned up and sell those they're a good chair it's just not our favorite so it's I, not something that we refurbish on a daily basis like the leap in Amia. i think if we were going to name it it wouldn't be just steema I, I just can't see that as a good name for for the chair unfortunately but we do think the glamia would be a good name if we put just all three together but you can't make that happen unfortunately so all right I think you guys are going to like this chair a lot. Some would say very much, possibly. Yeah. <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't think so. No, all right. I, I mean, it, it, it's all right. So very kind of has the problem. Well, let me say right away, 20% off. So it is a really good deal on the very right now on Hayworth's website. Uh, but does that put it in a price range where I would recommend it? Not really. So... Unfortunately, the very just has a very... Oh, oh, look at what you're doing. Just naturally, it happens. <laughs> you, you sink into the backrest on this chair just too much. So I always find I have to sit very centered in the chairs to make sure that I don't hit the sides of the backrest frame. So for me, I just I have to just jump right over this chair and look at their Zodi, uh, or we like the Fern even better. But uh, this just kind of sits between that Soji and the... Zodi, and it's just it's not one I would I would rest on. So, yeah, for me, if you're if you're the problem with the very is I always say the same thing is that the Soji exists. Yeah, and I don't think that there's a big enough gap when you jump up from the Soji to the very. And I think in a lot of cases you could argue that the Soji is a better chair than the very. And so I think that it has a more comfortable seat. I think the backrest is more comfortable on the Soji and the Zodi as compared to the very. You do get an extra lumbar adjustment with the very instead of the Soji, and you do get the upgraded mechanism, which gives you what's supposed to be better tilt. But one of the biggest reasons why people don't like the Zodi is because of the tilt. And the Soji, for less money, has more of a standard synchro tilt mechanism. It's a really good mechanism, and it gets you away from that tilt, and it just feels much more like a natural chair. And so even though the very is a really good deal today at 20% off. The problem is that the Soji is also on deal today for 20% off and you can get it for over $200 less than the very. And truthfully, I think it's more comfortable than the very. So mm -hmm. that's why I, I don't really know what the very's place is because I always say, if you're considering the very, you're much better off saving a couple hundred dollars and going with the Soji or paying a hundred or $200 more and getting the Zodi. Because I think the jump from the Soji to the Very is very little, <laughs> and the jump from the Very to the Zodi is huge. So, I think the only real difference that you're going to get is just the aesthetics on it, personally. I mean, I think it, it looks better. It's a nicer chair. That's why it costs more, but from a comfort standpoint, you're not, you're not getting enough for it to be worth it, in my opinion. 
Yeah. It's just not enough. And so I would say Soji. And if you look at our rankings too, kind of across the board, it was like essentially if we got down to the actual scores individually, it was about a B minus to a B. So a B minus for the very and then a B for the Soji. So technically from what we've ranked it, it's it's a more comfortable chair just going with the Soji, which is going to save you quite a bit of money. So Yeah, well, let's uh, bring in our next one here. OM, yes. So we had a question earlier uh, someone was actually looking to buy one of these. They wanted to purchase today. They were debating between two models of the OMS. So that's either with the multi-tilt or the synchro tilt. So I believe that's the 99 and the... Ooh, I'm trying to find my uh, model numbers here. But we, we would recommend the synchro tilt over the multi-tilt, correct? I guess it depends on what you need. Yeah. Uh, Typically, I'm going to recommend a synchro tilt just because it's going to be more well-rounded and more of a standard recline for most people. If you use your chair in kind of a weird, funky way and you like to have maximum control over it because yep. maybe you're an upright tasker or something like that, then a multifunction mechanism can be good. The main difference is the multifunction mechanism is going to give you independent control over the seat and the back. Whereas a synchro tilt mechanism, the back is always going to move at the same ratio as compared to the seat, and it's usually two to one. So if you recline the back two inches, the seat will incline one inch. And this just kind of keeps you in an ergonomic position through the entire recline. It's not hip thrusty. You're just comfortable. Whereas the multifunction, you control the angle between the seat and the back, and then it reclines from there. And so it feels more like a center tilt or sometimes a knee tilt mechanism where your knees can co potentially come up, which is the biggest downside. But it just kind of depends on what you're doing. I think most people will prefer the synchro, but the multifunction is there for specialized situations. I think the yes chair just in general has a couple of things on it that I really, really like. That seat pad's one of them. It has a nice thick seat pad, but it's not a thick seat pad where it's too thick. And you think that that contour on there would have some sort of an impact on how it feels, but it really doesn't. I'm not exactly sure why for me it doesn't have, I don't feel restricted by it, but I do like how cush it is. And then that headrest, it is really actually a, a very good headrest. I mean, it has a coat hanger on it. Most people don't like that, but, <laughs> but it, it's, it's very wide ranging in adjustment and it just hits your, your neck, right. And your top or the back of your head. So it's, I love it. For headrest from a manufacturer, it's kind of like a sneaky thing with this chair. I think we ranked it A tier. It wasn't quite S tier, but I think it was A tier for headrest when we looked just purely at headrest. It's a cool headrest because it adjusts from so many different positions. It's got three different positions that it adjusts from. So you can use it. Most headrests are designed to be used one of two ways. You either put it in the curve of your neck, and it's going to support your neck, more of like an ergonomic headrest, or it's going to be positioned almost straight vertical with the back, and it's more of just a headrest where it's going to support your head, kind of like a car seat or an executive chair. The Yes is one of the very few chairs that can do both because you can position it in line with the backrest and just use it as if it's just there for reclining, or you can pitch it forward and put it in front of the backrest and use it when you're tasking and be supported when you're reclined a little bit or sitting upright. So the versatility of it's really nice, and I do like that it's soft because it has a little padding there. It's not overly padded to make you get warm in it, but I think it's a comfortable headrest for sure. Just breaking down kind of how we ranked it, it as a chair overall for comfort, we ranked it B, and then when we look at the back compared to the seat, the, the actual Backrest was a B from us, and then the seat was an A. And I think that that makes sense when you think about this chair. That that backrest is good, but it's not great. Usually a B rating is just, it's good, right? It's Most people find it to be kind of good enough. A is going to be really good, and then S tier is going to be the best of the best. When it comes to that seat, that seat is really good, and we all really enjoyed it. Yep. It has that real contour to it, which looks like it's more than it really is. Okay, so... Uh, to make that make sense. It looks like you're going to really feel like you're being pushed in a certain way because of the contour on it, but it has a, such a nice cush that you just kind of sink right in, and, and I really I love the seat on the yes. Ryan, what is the, the armrest option? What's the number on that armrest pad that's super cush from, from OM seating? The number on it? Do you know what the arm option is for that really thick cush arm pad? We've got a set of arms on there that are, like, oh, really good. It's like the four K... Four, four, five, or four, Something five, five. Like that. Gotta look that up. They've got the the one thing about the the OM seatings. It's like. 
fully customizable, which can be great and it can be a terrible thing. I mean, sometimes too many options is too many options. So you need to really know what you're looking for with these chairs so you don't get the wrong things. Ryan's going to look that up. I'm trying to well, he's up. looking that up. We'll roll out the next chair. And then he'll he'll chime in and let us know. The Ikea Jarfalette. Yeah, I mean. I think the funniest part is watching them try to roll it out right now because yeah, they the, can't <laughs> because the casters are locked for a safety. Oh, wait. No, we're riding yeah, the chair out here because this is the only way to get it to move <laughs> because so, they lock. In it when you're, it's a safety feature yeah, for Europeans. Yeah, apparently it's a European thing. I didn't know that you had to have safety locking casters to sell chairs in Europe. Well, those but. chairs could roll away at any point and run into something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sure does make it a pain, though. What was that arm number? Did you find it? Well, they have three. All of them are well padded. The highest end one is KR or KR four four five. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And that one, they are thick. Two yeah, seats. Super nice cushion on those arms. So uh, now a lot of things are the opposite with this chair. Talking about cush arms, <laughs> this is about as hard rock arms as you can get on this one. It's like literally a hard plastic. Uh, the seat is also super hard. You're getting no cushion. Uh, you basically, you're barely going to sink into this seat at all. So no discount going on with the Jarflet. IKEA has nothing on their chairs. Uh, we wouldn't recommend this if it did have a discount. So I don't know how much. Yeah, this one should just be. Say. This one should just be short and sweet. There's yeah. no discount on this chair. It's a D or F tier for me from a comfort standpoint, and it's really low end build. I see absolutely no reason to buy this chair. If you really want to buy an IKEA chair, maybe the Marcus, but hard pass on the old Jarve, especially with no Cyber Monday deal. Yep. Well, yeah. that was that was good. That was I think quick. We're, yeah, we're ready. We could bring in that Soji. We could show you guys that quick. I think we talked about this a lot, so we could probably do this one pretty quick and uh, catch up a little bit here. So Soji again, uh, it's that below the very if you're if you're talking about price range, but we would put it above the very as far as comfort as we talked about earlier. Twenty percent off the Soji right now puts it at six. Excuse me, five sixteen. So really nice price range for the Soji getting that. Hayworth quality, you're getting the customer service, the policies that, you're, that Hayworth gives you, and you're getting good comfort. Yeah, you, you can tell right away when you look at this chair that it's not as exciting as the very. You can, especially below the seat. That, that's where the other chair just has a lot more going on. But from just a comfort standpoint, I mean, there's, there's no reason that I would pick the very chair over this one. I, I just simply wouldn't. Yep. Especially for the price point. If you're looking for something five six hundred dollars, there's gonna be very few options that are gonna compare to the Soji. This has got a, a unanimous B across every single thing that we ranked it for in comfort from us. Which is, as I look at the rankings, that's like one of the only chairs. So it's just yeah. solidly right. in the good. It's the definition of a good chair. Right. It's just good at everything that it does. It has a good build, especially for the price. It has a good warranty. It has good arms. They're four-way adjustable with good ranges. They have decent softness. You've mm -hmm. got a good recline. It's not overly deep like the Fern, but it's not super shallow like the EMEA. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on with this chair. You can op lock it upright. You've got height adjustable lumbar support. That's good. And unlike the Vary, the mesh isn't so loose that you sink into it and feel the frame. It's actually kind of the opposite. It tends towards the other direction where I think it might be a little too firm if I was going to say anything, but I still find it to be comfortable and supportive. It's just not going to have that elastic feeling where you kind of sink in like higher-end chairs do with higher-end mesh, but that's why it's $500. And so if I was going to tell a family member to buy a chair for five to $600 and they wanted something brand new, I'm definitely suggesting the Soji is one of my two or three options. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a really nice looking chair too. And it, it also was, if you have a shared office, like your husband, wife, or, or partners are sharing a, a same office, this is nice because it if all three of us give it that solid B across the board, it means a lot of different people are going to fit in the same chair, which which can be a big plus. So I want to hit on all of our coupon coupon codes that are going on right now. NV15, so remember, NV is our standing desk we have right behind our setup here. Again, just super nice desk, really good quality, getting it from our company, BTOD. So we stand behind this product. And you can see it has really nice ranges, goes very low and very high. Uh, which is just great for taller users. Are we up to what six six? Would we say? Or? I'd say about six five, six six. Five. Yeah, okay. that's where you're going to get to the edge. 
So uh, not a lot of standing desks are going to get that high for uh, for those taller users. So great option there with the Envy. So you get 15% off right now. Um, a Meep 20. So during our stream here, we're giving you 20% off our Meep chair. Again, that's our Amia frame with a leap seat. So 15% off during the, the stream. There's been a ton of people buying the Amips and that yep. it is a good deal. So we continue to do that if yep. you want a good chair in that $300 price yep. range, because this is the, we're going to, once the 20% is done, it's done. So yep. I think I misspoke there. Yeah. 20% off on yep. the Meep and then combo, put these two things together. You can get both the Amip chair and that Envy standing desk for 20% off. So that's huge, getting 20% off on both uh, a desk and a chair. So if you want a great setup, looking to upgrade your whole office, there you go. Ultimate 15, I didn't want to, you know, overload with cable management. Someone commented earlier, they're loving their cable management box, saving them a lot of time after they tested a lot of different products. So that's the box we have under this desk right here. Colton's given us a great shot of it. Uh, Three colors on that one. Yeah, you can get white, silver, or black matches the... Uh, um, powder coated frame. So it, it basically looks like it's a part of your frame. That's what I, one thing I really like about it. Uh, a lot of standing desk products, they kind of, or uh, cable management products, they look like you've added something to your desk. This looks like it's a part of the desk. So um, yeah, so 15% off on that. Last thing, S series. So top of the line standing desk from BTOD, also showing this right here in the studio. You're getting, what is that, an inch thick top on that? Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Okay, that's why I look to Greg, because uh, you're not getting this on our other products. This is a definitely a premium level top. Uh, we, we actually make them right down the street here, a company uh, that we partner with. So it's hardwood top. They just look beautiful. Okay, Love these tops on here. It's a beast, yeah. too, when you have to move them around. It's yeah. absolutely massive. Yep. But thankfully, if you purchase the S series, you don't have to move it yourself. We it's bring, true. Uh, it gets delivered right to you, completely set up. You can literally just uh, plug in your computer and monitors and start working. You don't have to worry about setting up that desk at all. I want to just say too, there's been quite a few comments in the chat asking if we can ship worldwide. We can't. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're just not set up for it. The one thing we want to make sure when we sell you something is that we can stand behind the product, service it the way that we should. If you're global. Unfortunately, we can't guarantee that it's going to get there in one piece because we're really not set up to ship that way. And then number two, we can't get you parts quickly. And if you need that down the line, one of the biggest things when you buy from a company is if they're still in business, is their warranty going to actually be there? And that's what we stand behind. We've been in business for 18 years now. We are taking care of our customers all the time. Our trust pilot reviews say it over and over and over again. So we apologize that we can't help you guys. It's something that we're trying to figure out for the future but unfortunately, it's not close right now. So we can help you find something, hopefully, globally, but we unfortunately can't be the one that you buy it from. But we do appreciate your support. Yeah, so quick question here. This is a good one to hit. Uh, is Steelcase Leap V2 better buy, or do you prefer the EMEA with the Leap seat? So me personally, I would take the Leap V2. I like the backrest a lot better on the on – the, well, I shouldn't say a lot better. I like it better. It has a little more flexibility. It's a little taller. Um more lumbar support with the with the leap. So personally, I would just go with the straight up uh, leap V two over the a meep. Of course, you're going to pay a little more for it. So I mean, the leap is unquestionably an upgrade to the Amia frame. I mean, yeah. that's why it's, it costs more, right? It's just overall better at everything. You've got more locking positions, a deeper recline, a better backrest, a more advanced lumbar support. It's it's a nicer chair. It's it's just the upgrade to the Amia. So the leap is definitely going to be a step above the a meep in my opinion. Yep. Another question about the size of our cable box on the uh, Envy desk. So if you're, if you're looking to purchase one of these standing or these cable boxes for your standing desk, we have some info right on our site. It, it's if you're purchasing for a 60 inch desk, you're not actually getting a 60 inch wide cable box because you want it to fit inside the frame of the desk. So we do have some graphics right on our page. If you're looking to buy a, a cable box, it'll kind of help you guide guide you how, on how to do it. And personally, I, I would just, you know, I'm a, John's, uh, you can't, you're not going to be able to see him, but is, is sitting kind of right in front of us working all, all this stuff behind the scenes for us. He's got a cable box on his desk and we have to, you have to make sure that it fits again with, with whatever your specific desk is. So this desk has the motor and the different standing desk parts. So if you're purchasing, I'd recommend go under, look under your desk, take a tape measure, make sure that you're able to fit uh, or exactly what you're able to fit. Then go on the site, check out uh, 
what size options we have and, and purchase from there. And then save that 15% with save that 15% ultimate 15. Save 15 with the code. If you have questions too, call in. Uh, you know, Nick is just aching to get your phone call over in the other room here. He'd love to talk to you, so he can help you over. Just there. think about that. You've got Nick in the chat, and you'd have Nick on the – well, maybe Nick's on the phone. I don't know. You might get Kent too. Yeah, speak of the devil. He's just uh, dropped, it, dropped it in the chat here. So, yep. All right, what's the next? Wow, this is Ryan's yeah, chair. <laughs> Ryan's newest – Pick under three hundred bucks. The Kalami or Kalami, we have, we've, unknown. We don't know. That's, this is the Atlas. That's how close we are to that company. We do not know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is one of the few chairs in this list that is not on special and has actually gone up in price. But we're still going to talk about, it and I'm still going to gush about it because even at what is it two two eighty nine eighty nine ninety nine, so two hundred ninety bucks, it's still. I mean. I, I don't have a better option for under $300 for you. I think there's just so much good going on with the chair. Number one, from the build quality standpoint, just because when you get under $300, you start to see very similar things across the board from almost every manufacturer. One of them is very cheap mesh, mesh that has no elasticity, is often damaged or defective by the time it gets to you. And that's not going to be the case on the Atlas chair. You're going to get very similar mesh, in fact, to the Vera chair on the Eurotech, which does have the downside of being a little bit coarse on clothing, but it is elastic and it is comfortable and it does hold up well. Another thing that we see very commonly with chairs under $300 is manufacturers finding ways to really reduce their shipping costs. And one thing that they do is that they'll design a base in a way that it can be taken apart. So you'll have a five-star base that comes in six, seven, eight pieces so that it can just fit in a tiny box. And then you have to assemble that base with a whole bunch of screws. The Atlas doesn't have that. It's got a legit base on there, a similar quality base to six, $700 plus chairs. Casters are also good. So I don't know. I'm just really high on this chair. It's a well-built chair for the price. It's got good comfort and it's really packed with adjustments, lumbar support, four-way arms, a seat slider, which is really rare for a $300 chair. Yeah. I mean, if, if no sale today, a couple people in the comments bummed about that. If we, uh, if this chair was normally 350 and we said it was on sale for 290, we'd be pretty excited, I think. Cause it's, 100%. it feels like it should be up in that quality or that price range. So even though there's no discount on this, uh, I mean, probably I would probably wait till it drop back to two sixty nine because I assume it will, but we don't know if that it for does. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's getting so yeah, much yeah. publicity right now, and I know they're <laughs> selling a ton of them right now. I mean, just supply and demand economics. There's no, I mean, if a company raises their price during Cyber Monday, I don't know if we can count on the price coming back yeah. down. So this might be the cheapest that it's going to be. I can yeah. say that we just looking at the information from Amazon that we see with the affiliate program in the last 30 days. I think just us alone from people clicking on our links, which we appreciate helps us buy all these chairs. I think it was like 350 chairs were sold. So being a new product, I doubt that they were planning on sort of all of that happening. And that's not attributing all of those sales back to us on that right. click. Yeah. So there is a lot of these chairs being sold. And when they first launched this chair, it was in the 300s. I mean, it was like 339 or 349 mm. for it. So they are moving back oh, up there. Here it goes. Someone just asked for the Russian twist. And Francis, without even seeing that comment, is giving us some flex in that backrest. Are we sure it wasn't Francis that asked for it that did that? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> or did John, maybe John uh, tipped her off. Either way, so you're not going to get the same flex as the uh, high-end chairs. It's just what it is. It, it doesn't have that. Uh, but it does have what I like is that that keeps the frame away from your backrest so, or from your back. So you still can have some of that moving around, pushing into the mesh, which a lot of mesh Chair, or chairs that have a mesh backrest, you can't do that because you're going to hit the frame. Like we talked about the very, if you try to, if you move around at all, you're going to hit the frame. Now, I found the Atlas to be very comfortable. So, uh, yeah, Russian twist test, you know, the, the it's not going to be your, your best chair for backrest flexibility. Uh, that doesn't mean I'd stay away from it. In about 12 minutes, we're going to kick off our second giveaway too. So the EMEA chair is going to be coming up. So yep. in about 12 minutes, stick around. If you've wanted an Amia, here's your chance to win one. C, I think it was CJ that won the Amip, our first yes. giveaway. 
So stick around for that. All right. Well, we have up next Secret Lab Noe. Noya. Noya. Ryan's pretty confident. Noya. Uh, that's him. that look on his face that he's super stoked for uh, this $40 chair. $40 off Listen, on the Noya. This chair looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you're buying on looks alone, by all means. If you care about comfort at all, hard pass. Yeah, so someone already commented, is the Mavix M9 good? Now, Mavix M9 is another one of these gaming chairs that – uh, really is more like an office chair. Definitely would recommend the M9. We'll bring that one out a little yeah, later. It's coming in the stream. up in the over this one, yep. without question. So, I, not much else to say. I don't think it's, it's got turbo good. lumbar support, yeah. and I think that's one thing that we absolutely need to show. Like yeah. I, co I commend Secret Lab for actually just making an ergonomic chair a gaming chair. I just think that it misses on too many areas. Yeah. I think the arms are it, poorly placed. When you hit those two buttons on the side, Francis. Yeah, it'll oh, pop yeah. forward. There you go. And that is turbo mode. Yeah, I mean, the problem is there's just so many other chairs we'd recommend for even at the sale price of $729. There's going to be so many other ones that we'd recommend for even there's chairs we'll like for $500 that are a lot better than this chair. Yeah. Seat's not great. Arms are not. The pads are good. And I like the trigger system for the adjustments. I think that's really cool. But they're poorly placed. So you recline. Your arms are pitched forward. I think they're a little too wide. Yeah. I also don't really like the backrest. I I feel the frame, and I think the headrest leaves a little to des to be desired. So, I don't know. For me, it would just be a hard pass. So, what did we give this for scores? That we have for the seat FFD for the back. We've got a CBC. So we're basically yeah. looking at a C overall. Yeah, and for. Again, it's all this is a little relative to the price now. A C doesn't sound terrible, but when it's a seven hundred and right. what was it, seven hundred and thirty dollar chair, you don't want C level comfort. I mean, we ranked the Tacova a C. So, so but when you for a hundred and nineteen dollars. But then when so. you look at all of the things, so so those yeah. are just seat and back. When you in everything about this chair for comfort, we got it looks like an F, a D, and a D for a D overall. Some would say a D minus at that point. Mm. Not great for comfort. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next chair. Yeah, so we're going to jump into a much more high-end chair. This is one we sell here at BTOD. Neutral posture, 8000 This is surprising we could get this chair in the studio. We talk about this in a lot of videos. Our sales guys absolutely love these chairs. So typically when you see one of these out here, it's because we had to take it from uh, Nick or Kent in the sales department, which says a ton about the chair. They have opportunities these sales guys to sit in basically whatever chair they want we have hundreds of chairs here they love to sit in these neutral posture chairs 10 percent off which puts it at about one thousand one hundred dollars uh yeah what are your favorite things about these great pads on these i'm gonna say right away the headrest is an it's an s tier headrest yeah. probably one of the best headrests if not the best of all the yeah. chairs that we've tested yep. it is so multi-dimensional you can swing it out of the way like francis is showing it goes in line with the back it sticks out and goes over the back it's so widely adjustable it's got nice padding on it super comfy i mean if you want a headrest and you want a chair that kind of locks you in this is the one for that yep and those arm pads are crazy because it's got the full 360 spin on them so you actually can you can actually spin that whole arm pad around there's a trigger button on the front. Yeah, there you go. There. Yeah, I mean, to me, the the only kind of miss on this that I, that I would like in in a chair is a better recline system. 100%. But if you're if you're sitting up tasking a hundred percent and don't care so much about the recline, this really is a would be a high pick here. But for me, I like that you know the Herman Miller recline or, or even even some of the tilt functions in like the Hayworth chairs, but. You're not going to quite get that with the 8,000. That doesn't mean I would not recommend it for certain people as it is just incredibly comfortable, again, especially in those more uh, intense tasking. This is the definition of a multifunction chair. I was just going to say Without that. Without question. Yeah. You yeah. can adjust everything on this chair. Ratchet back height adjustment, lumbar airbag support. You can control the seat angle. You can have forward seat tilt. You've got five-way adjustable arms, a... Uh, four-way adjustable headrest, everything moves on this chair, and it actually feels solid. For It's not like an OMS chair where everything moves and therefore everything's a little wiggly. 
not on the neutral posture chairs. They make everything adjustable, but it's high enough quality that it stays rigid and it feels stable. My one gripe, aside from the recline, because I'm like Robert, I would also prefer to have a little better recline in exchange for the multifunction aspect, is that I don't like how the backrest is a little curved inward and it hugs you a little bit just because, I mean, you know me, I like that Russian twist and I like a flexible backrest and the backrest on this chair isn't going to be flexible and it's going to kind of make you stay in that position a little bit more than other chairs. But other than that, I think this chair is great. Really thick padded seat. It's not super soft, so you're not going to sink into it like in a cure chair or like a yes chair, but you're never going to bottom out in that thing, or at least I don't. Yeah. So I mean, this is a lot of people ask uh, about, I want a seat like a car seat, or what would you recommend a car seat as a seat for an office chair? This is maybe a little more similar, would you guys say, to a car seat than some of the other ergonomic chairs? Maybe not? Yeah. A little bit, because it's just a little bit thicker, and it kind of holds you in a position a little, not quite like a racer, yeah. Like not to that extreme, it's but it's kind more, of in between the two. Yeah. And that's that. That's why I. It's not my favorite backrest because of that. Just because yeah. of the style that I sit in. But I had a about eight hour drive this weekend coming home from Thanksgiving, <laughs> and it, I got thinking about this. Okay, would I want this seat from my car as like an office chair? And it's like, oh, it's actually. I stayed pretty comfortable. Of course, you get out for some rests, but you know the problem is you don't have all the functions. You can't tilt and recline. You can't have, move your arms and all that stuff. So a car seat as an office chair, as interesting as it would be, I'd love to see our Ferb shop try to take a, you know, a nice car seat, not a baby car seat, an actual driver's car seat, turn it into an ergonomic chair. Which interesting. But do you guys? Would you want to see that? Is that content yeah. that you guys would actually want to see? Because we've talked about it. I think that's interesting. It is a quite a bit different experience when you're driving than when you're typing at your computer and doing those things. So that all comes into play with how it would feel. Yeah, 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix for the best car seat. Done. I like that. I used to have a G6, probably very similar uh, year, probably the same. Very comfortable. All right, we got a couple yeah. questions that we should cover here real quick. Yeah. The first one is we've seen. I've seen it come up a couple of times now. Ergo human versus embody gaming. I don't think you get much different when it comes to chairs. Yeah, I mean that's a tough one. Which ergo human are we talking about? It, they said LE nine or ME or LE nine or LEM four. So the better version with the leather seat, yeah. but these are completely different chairs. Yeah, one has a tremendous amount of lumbar support and one doesn't for sure. And the ergo human isn't very flexible. Yeah, they're just so much different. I kind of have them in different tiers as well I, I think the embodies kind of a, a pretty big jump to the ergo human but but you're paying for that too right. i mean you're that's a almost twice as much yeah yeah it's really about what you're looking for if you're really looking for lumbar support ergo human's amazing personally my, one of my top rated things for what i look for in a chair is recline so i'm gonna lean towards the embody so it's kind of everyone has their own priorities of what they think is important in a chair what they look for so uh, I mean, we have tons of content on both of these chairs. So if you're really interested in those two, I recommend just going down the rabbit hole and, and you'll see a lot about those two chairs. There's also been a tremendous amount of questions on the Han Hanomi, Hanomi brand? Yeah, Hanami. 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 Do, do we've, we've never brought the chair in. <laughs> I mean. Sometimes when we see the questions in our comments, not here, but like in our comments about having it and loving it, we get a little concerned that maybe they're not from people who have it. it tends to happen. Like maybe it's someone from the brand. <clears throat> Especially when you catch the brand doing it on sites like Reddit. Yeah. And it leads us to believe it's happening on our videos too. Yeah. And that's one, one of that the I'll brands say is that, that would... we It's hard to give an opinion on a chair from a picture. But... We've seen enough chairs and we know enough about chairs to look at the picture of that Hanami chair for five or 600 bucks and know that, I don't know, that's probably not a chair that I'd be scoring as an A tier chair just by judging on what it has. If your selling points are a headrest and a footrest, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see if anyone out there has one of these chairs. Tell us about right. it. Tell us what you think. Because, yeah, again, we just haven't know, we're brought it in yet. skeptical when we see stuff about the chair. Sometimes it's not always from our actual followers. I'm sure we'll bring it in in the next round of buying or something, but we just don't have yeah. it yet. Yeah, let us know if there's other chairs you're really aching to have us see. If they're, f if they're chairs that we can purchase in the U.S., 
uh, we're pretty willing to try stuff out. Where would you rank that M- the Mavics M9 as far as gaming chairs are concerned, Robert? Oh, so Ga- they're gaming. I mean, we're about to talk about it. Yeah, okay. all right. Well, it's, it's one chair away. All right, we'll we'll yeah, hold off a, then. We'll hold off. Think about it. So, what do we have out there now? The Nightingale CXO quick, looks like we've yeah. got a second time. generation Nightingale CXO. The newest version has quite a few changes to it. Um. Yeah. So, just quick, let me jump in. The reason we didn't bring out the newest one is because one of our ladies in customer service absolutely loves the chair, and you know, gave us kind of you know the stink eye when I was about to take it away. So we brought out the older version. I've never heard that being a thing. We usually just steal chairs. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was trying to be nice, you know, but but it goes it goes to say our uh, support that people do love this chair and, and want to sit in it. So it has this very cush seat. Ryan has a lot of ex- more experience in the CXO, so. Tell us about that seat. Yeah, I mean, I I sat in the CXO for like 10 years. And the reason that I sat in the chair for so long is because of that seat. Don't get me wrong. The rest of the chair is good too. Really good build. It's probably one of the heaviest chairs I've ever used. I think it's like 80 or 90 pounds. It is really well built. It feels like a tank. I like the backrest. It is kind of limiting in terms of who it's going to fit because it is a little bit lower. The same goes for the headrest. I do like the headrest. The armrests are a bit limited in terms of adjustment, and I don't like the arm caps. But that seat is like no other chair currently on the market, in my opinion. They use what they call an Enerzorb foam, which is their own proprietary foam, which is kind of like a, like a memory foam, Tempur-Pedic type, type product. And it's really thick, and it allows you to sink into it. And it passes the comfort test with flying colors. If you sit in this thing for an hour at a time, it's probably going to be one of the most comfortable seats you've ever sat in. Uh, For me, I got to jump in. You got to go full legal on us because we got to get this giveaway going. Oh, okay. So hit us up with the legal. No purchase necessary for this sweepstakes. You must be 18 or older, reside in the continental United States. To enter the sweepstakes, type hashtag chair into chat and the winner will be selected at random at the end of the timer on screen yep so you can see it right now we're in the four minute range four and a half minutes type in that hashtag chair and you will be entered into the sweepstakes all right sorry for doing that to you but yeah and so i was just going to say the seat is amazing the one thing you do need to be careful of is i didn't really realize it until years upon years down the road once we started really getting into the high-end chairs and testing all of the steel case, Herman Miller, Hayworth chairs, that that thick seat wasn't great for my lower back. And the reason was is that I was sinking so far into it that it was kind of compressing my lower back and not letting it be out, but more in like this and kind of scrunched down. And I'm telling you, I went through years of really bad back pain, literally throwing my back out in the office and having to get helped out to my car. And when I started testing those thinner seats, those problems started to go away. And so I would just be, I would just be, just watch out using really thick padded seats because while it feels comfortable in the moment, it might be doing a little more harm than good. So that would be my only point of caution with this chair. Otherwise, I really like the chair. So, yeah, it does have a shorter backrest. As someone six two, backrest is probably too short for me. I always feel myself hitting the top of the frame. So something to think about there. I think Greg, are you okay at six foot? No. I can't use that headrest. It it doesn't fit me either. Yeah. Well, I was saying the the frame of the oh backrest, the backrest. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I think that it's just a little bit too short. Yeah. Overall, the chair is a little bit too short for me. I can I can sit in it with no headrest, but it's restricting with the headrest yeah. for sure. So it, it is 10% off at Todd right now. So this is a chair that we do have on our website if you're looking. Yeah, well, so you were asking me about our, our giveaway, or can I keep going on the next chair? No, you, you yeah, time. let's jump into the Mavics because I, okay. I want to know because there was actually a question that popped in on, yeah. on our thoughts on this chair. So Mavics is also owned by the same parent company as X Chair, and they kind of put a gaming skin on some of their chairs. Yeah. What do you think this ranks for you as far as gaming chairs is concerned? Yeah, so I was kind of double-checking our ranks. I'm a little lower on this chair than I think you guys are. I had a C for the seat. What I don't like is I feel like I'm – sinking through it a little bit and kind of hitting some harder points on the sides. So, which is usually more of a 
mesh chair thing that you kind of sink into it and hit the side frame. It's it's hard to see, but it's there for me. Um, so I, I gave it a, a C for the back, or sorry, for the seat. I gave it a B plus for the backrest. I do like the backrest. It has nice lumbar support, really wide on the top, kind of flares outward, so you can have some movement around, and uh, the materials feel nice. So uh, not super high rated, but if you're really looking for like kind of more gaming looking chair, but have that kind of office chair feel, it's an option. I would say that, yeah, people are calling you a bit of a hater on this chair compared to Ryan and I, because you do have a C plus versus a B, which Ryan and I gave. So yeah, it's not too far off. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, so I like that seat. I think it's actually pretty comfortable. Um, it, it's the construction of it is like a pad over that mesh material, which is a little bit interesting, but it, it makes it so that it doesn't feel like you're sitting on mesh because I think the regular X chairs mesh is terrible. So this is a huge upgrade over that. And I always like the back on this particular type of chair because it's very much like the ergo human chair. And I do like that it's a multi-function sort of chair where you can independently adjust that backrest from the seat. So if you're someone who's been wanting that chair that, you know, does that really deep, super deep recline, this thing goes extremely deep with the recline because you can tilt that back all the way back and then release the tilt, and it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I I would say that this is probably my number one ranked gaming chair for under a thousand dollars. If you're looking for a gaming specific chair, a chair that calls itself a gaming chair, this would be my favorite one under a thousand dollars. I don't think it has a ton that's going to make you hate it. The armrests aren't super adjustable in terms of their ranges, but the caps are comfortable and they do have enough adjustment to kind of get them in the place that you need them. My biggest highlight with the chair is going to be that recline that Francis just showed because it does compete with the racers in terms of getting almost as flat and getting super deep, but it does it with a synchro tilt design. So you're not getting your knees forced into your desk like a center tilt. You're not having to lay flat with your legs hanging from the front. It's just got a really massive recline, and it's also got a good headrest on there. So you don't get a cheap racing headrest with a pillow strapped on there that doesn't stay in place. You've actually got a comfortable two-way headrest that holds its position really well, and I find it to be comfortable without it being padded. So overall, I think this is a really good chair. Not a ton of downside. I think I probably ranked it, let me look, probably B's across the board. Yeah, B, B, B. Yep, just just like the, uh, the uh, Soji. Just kind of the definition of a good chair all around for me. All right, so Victor Leonino, did I get that right? Leonino? Leon, Leon, Leon. We've got a winner. Leo, so congrats. You, know, you have won the EMEA chair, so congrats on that. Make sure you hit up marketing at btod.com so that we can get your shipping information. Remember, you need to reside in the United States, the lower 48, to be eligible uh, to accept the sweepstakes win. And stay tuned because in 45 minutes, we're going to do a leap. And then at the end of the stream, we are giving away my S-tier, God-tier chair, the Lamia. So if you've ever wanted a Lamia, you wanted it for free, well, you've got to stick around to the end because that's when it's going to be given away. Have we seen Victor? We've seen a lot of congrats to Victor, but I haven't seen Victor in the chat. Well, we'll see. <laughs> and we <laughs> shall see. All right, what do we got next? Ooh, the Cosm chair. So what? Cosm jump right in. Cosm, this is one of these chairs I've talked about in the past. I love the recline on this, the mesh materials. Everything is really nice. It just has this super short seat. So for me, my height, I just, I wouldn't be able to sit in the Cosm. We have the leaf arms on this. Leaf, is that correct, right? Yeah, leaf arms. So they look awesome. Uh, For tasking, I wouldn't recommend them. They don't really feel great on your elbows and you can't like slide around necessarily, but a lot of good things about this chair at the same time. So it has this built-in headrest, super comfortable. And Herman Miller, they have a huge discount going on right now, 25% off plus another five. So if you've been eyeing up this chair, it's quite expensive. But if you have been looking at normally at $2,100 down to about fifteen seventy five with all those, it's actually a little lower than that. That's without the five. So you're looking at about $1,500 on this chair. If you've been dying to have one, now's kind of the time. But 
I would be where, again, if you're taller, I wouldn't, you're probably not going to want to sit in this super long because of this very short seat depth. I always wish that I had like a size C Cosm. It probably would be just amazing, but that doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for an all mesh chair, you're 5'10 and under, and you get the fully adjustable arms, then I think this chair can be really amazing. If you don't meet that criteria, then I'd probably look in a different direction. Don't get those cheese grater arms that Francis is showing you right now. They'll just shred your elbows or whatever clothing is on your elbows, and they are extremely uncomfortable. But from a look standpoint, this is one of the nicest looking chairs ever introduced. Yeah. And if you do get those four-way arms, I think it's incredibly comfortable. The mesh is really comfortable. It's got a great recline. But you really do need to love mesh seats, and you do really need to be focusing on aesthetics, in my opinion. I think when we went to the Herman Miller store down in Chicago and I got a chance to use those task arms, I was like, this is a game changer if you want this chair. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the fact that it really doesn't have adjustments to it, might, besides height adjustment, might be a bit limiting for some people. But the backrest on this chair scored super high from us. The seat actually did really well. It was those arms that killed it. So, All right, next up, we've got the steel case Carmen, which another mesh chair, but pretty significant when it comes to the differences in this one. I mean, I think, I mean, well, first of all, this is the first mesh chair from steel case, all mesh, mesh seat. I mean, what do you think, Ryan? What is the, what is your take on this chair? I think that they were close to nailing it. I, I think that they had a really good idea. I like that they added a little bit of padding in the seat. I like that they try to go with a little bit more of a rubber like material for the frame on the back in the seat. I think they really got it right on the back because the backrest has good flexibility. That rubber-like fr frame will bend with you and move with you and doesn't kind of force you into an awkward position like mesh often can. I wish they would have given the seat that same flexibility because it has that rubber-like material, but it doesn't give nearly as much as I was expecting it to. And if it did, I think that this would be one of the more comfortable chairs that I've used. The one major miss for me is the arms. I really have no idea why they didn't just go with the arms that are on the Leap, the EMEA, the Think. I know a lot of people want to say that it's not as expensive as the Leap, so they didn't go with the same arm package. Listen, they've got the best arm package on their cheaper chairs all the way down to the Series 2. So you can get the Series 2 with Leap V2 arms on it for five to $700, but you buy their brand newly released Carmen and it's got not the same arms in my opinion my assumption is it's a design thing my guess is it it's just to keep it sleeker looking more slim because that's kind of what that chair is but yeah i mean that's the miss right for me is those arms because i love that i i'm on record across so many videos saying i can't really stand sitting in mesh chairs short of the cosm that i really haven't ranked any of the seats on mesh chairs too high this is one of the chairs, because of that padding underneath it, I love the seat. So Ryan nailed it. Everything on there, um, I would remove that lumbar I mean, just because it's worthless. But the seat is great for me, Robert. You, I mean, you still have one of these. We have two of these, one of them that hasn't left your house. It's actually back here again. You brought it so, back yeah, it's today? Here, but, uh, no, Instead of the kitchen chair? Last week. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's. I've been sitting in this chair a ton. I, I won't add too much more. You guys nailed a lot of stuff. I actually have a review coming out of this very soon. That's going to focus on just comfort. So, uh, yeah, arms, wish they were softer. Ryan nailed it there. They, they could do it, but they didn't. Um, backrest is amazing. So I love the backrest on this chair. Seat is a little small for me. So, again, 6'2", I might steer away just because that seat is pretty short. So, yeah, I think we, we really covered it there. Again, good deal on it today with that 20% off. Gets it under $1,000. So, if you really love this chair, especially if you love the looks of that, something to consider. I don't know why, now that the Carmen's out here, I don't know why I missed and said that the Gesture is their most beautiful chair. Obviously, I forgot about the Carmen. I think this is their, this is probably their best looking chair right now. Yeah, I agree. So, Han Ignition, uh, this is what I would say a pretty big this is a this diaper is, seat. Yeah, we so got to get that crunch on camera. Just a super average looking. We, we just looked at one of the nicest looking mesh chairs. This is just a, a pretty dull in my opinion, but you know, it, it does have what we call, like Greg said, the diaper chair because yeah, we might have to get a mic on this one. So it makes this weird sound when you push in the chair, which makes us kind of wonder what is going on with this pad. Here we go. Here we go. 
Here we go. One, two, three. It's the sound you've all been waiting for. <laughs> You can barely hear it, but you get yeah, the picture. It, it's it's it just if feels you squish a, a diaper, different. that's what it sounds like. Yeah. If you walk around, if you're a toddler and you have a diaper on that sound, well, not if you because you're not on a stream. Maybe. Maybe you are. A lot of cheer lovers out there. <laughs> so yeah, it it feels weird. It sounds a little odd. Um, this is just yeah. Maybe you guys take it away. I don't have a whole lot. Well, to I'm say thrown off a little bit to start because off. it's fifty three percent off for a price of three ninety nine. Isn't it? Always three ninety nine. Yes, I think that when we bought it like two years ago to test it, it was like three eighty seven or something. I can find. I'm gonna find yeah. that information out. But it does have a fifty dollar coupon on it, which brings it to three fifty, which would be the actual savings. I believe. Okay. Yeah, got it. So on, yeah, on top of the discount, fifty fifty dollars off. But I mean, again, there's so it's many. It's not a bad mid tier chair. But, I mean, it's a mid tier yeah. chair. It's a sub four hundred dollar chair. It it's not bad. It's just not going to wow you. A, a few highlights. The seat does make that kind of diapery sound, but it's not uncomfortable. It's just kind of annoying for you to move around in. The arms are a bit limited in their adjustments. The caps could be a little softer, but they're not rock hard. The one thing that I do like is that the backrest is flexible, and you can move it around, which you're not going to find on too many chairs for under this price point. Even, even chairs like the Vera, the Kalami Atlas, they're not going to be as flexible as this backrest, so that is one of the good things going for it, and it has a pretty good recline. You're, you can also get it on Amazon for decently cheap right now if you'd like to shop on Amazon. So in my opinion, it's a pretty good middle-of-the-road type chair, a C or low B type of chair, and it's not super expensive. Doesn't so. this just put the Kalami chair mm -hmm. in perspective, though? Yeah. When you think about what you're getting. I mean, because so we bought this, just to answer your question from before, April 30th, 2022. So about a year and a half ago, we bought it for 380. So it's better than that price, but it certainly never was an $800 chair. But it's for the, I would take that Kalami chair over this chair every time. I mean, I would take the Kalami Kieran over this chair 100%, and that one's only $150. Right. We're, we're coming up to that one pretty soon. So uh, unfortunately, our next chair, not in the office. Uh, the bidding war has kind of gone away on Robert's Kitchen chair, but we know a lot of you guys are sitting in one of these chairs, like still might be sitting in a kitchen chair for your everyday grind. That's why we do this. We're trying to give you guys some good options. The kitchen chair has no flexibility, no arms. It's rough, so we know you should, uh, we want to help you guys get in a better chair. Who is still sitting in a kitchen chair? And if you are, and it's because you don't want to spend a ton of yeah. money, then you should look at the Amip20 coupon code, and you get 20% off an Amip chair, which is using basically a steel case of Mia and a steel case of Leap combined to have the quality of a premium chair for like 300 bucks. So if you've been waiting yeah. and you want to find something that is really good, that's your chance. But who is still sitting? If you are, let us know. I yeah. got to know. I mean, you're, that's less than you're, you're spending about a dollar a day to have a way better sitting experience, and that's just... That's just for if you had the chair for a year. So, I mean, it's better to just improve your life by getting in a nicer chair. The Amip is a great option. And you have a 12-year warranty with it. That's the big yeah. deal. That I, That's the other thing. It's 12-year warranty across the whole chair, and it has free returns, and it's still like in the $300 price range. Yeah. If you want to even scale cents. it back even more, there's height-adjustable arms only as an option, which I don't necessarily always recommend unless you know they fit your width, but that's even less money. So I think we should clear up a, a little questions going on in chat here on the, the giveaway. So when we start the giveaway, you need to enter chair for hashtag chair, hashtag chair for the giveaway. If you enter it more than once, it won't increase your chances for that giveaway. But when the giveaway ends and a new giveaway starts, you do need to type hashtag chair again. Correct. So, I see people wondering if they, if you enter the first sweepstakes, will you automatically be entered into the final one that we do? The answer is no. Every time that we do the giveaway, that it's going to reset. And once we restart the next one, it's going to start at zero and you need to type hashtag chair again. So if that makes sense. Made sense to me. Cool. All right. Moving on to the Vera. That's very good timing. <sighs> very good timing for a pun. <laughs> Well, what do you think with this chair? I what? think that this is just the classic 
easy recommend chair for someone that's under $500. The Vera is one of those chairs that does everything really good, not a lot of downside. I think the highlights are pretty high on the chair, especially for the price, and those are going to be the seat in the back. It's got a cush seat. It's not overly thick, but it is one of the thicker padded seats that we've reviewed on chairs. And it does have a little bit of softness, but not so much so that you sink way in and get warm or bottom out. And so this is the type of seat that I could sit in easy, no problem, eight to 10 hours a day. I have done it for weeks on end. And the backrest for me is top tier. Even though it's sold for under $500, I think it can compete with some of the highest end backrests. And that's mainly due just to the curve that they designed it with, and then pairing it with some really elastic mesh. The armrests aren't my favorite, but they do have four-way adjustment, and the armrests aren't hard. So overall, I just think this is a, a really good chair. Yeah, I mean, right now with the 10% off coupon we have, it's like 400 bucks, just under 400 bucks. It, I mean, for $400, it is a really good buy because of what Ryan said. It's a chair that you can... There's. It's one of the reasons why we recommend the Leap to a lot of people because there are certain chairs that just will work for a wide range of people and you don't necessarily have to worry about knowing their specifics of their size if they're in the averages of just the normal population. So this is one of those chairs. It just falls in that lower price point and, it, and it's, it's shown over time that it just continues to win because it's that chair. And we've, we've had it now in our office for a long time. It's held up well. We have a few of them. I've even given them to some of my family members. I know Robert, his wife sits in one and it's always the same thing. They, they just absolutely love the chair. Now I would be a little bit concerned if you're too tall for this chair. So like I said, I've given these chairs to family members. I gave it to my dad. He's six, six. He thought the backrest was a little bit too short for him. I'm not that high or that tall, you know, so it, it's, it's probably a little out of the range if you're maybe say six, four, six, five, but if you're say five, 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 four, up to six, two, which Robert is uh, six, three, I think it's going to fit great. Just to put it into perspective, we sell, this is one of our best selling chairs out of all the chairs that we sell. And we do allow free returns on it. And this chair comes back, I believe it was less than 2% of the time. So you're saying so people like it. People really, our customers really like this chair. There's very little reason for them to send this back just because it, it does present such good value for a low price that people genuinely feel like they're getting what they paid for with this chair and it will hold up over time. You can count on this thing lasting, you know, five to 10 years, no problem. And so. the warranty would say the same thing too. I'd say that's the big difference too. When you're looking at like the Kalami chair versus something like this, the warranty between those two chairs is pretty significant. So you're paying more, but you're getting a better warranty and it's being backed by a company here in the States. We're, I'm not so sure... I mean, I don't think that Kalami really has a long enough track record for us to verify. Well, for that. a direct comparison, I mean, that's a great comparison because the Kalami is similar to the Vera in terms of the backrests are very similar. You do get lumbar support and a headrest on the Kalami. But in my opinion, the overall build, it doesn't feel quite as solid. The seat isn't as comfortable and you're not getting, you know, that limited lifetime warranty like you are on the Eurotech. And you're only getting, I believe it's three years for the Kalami from right. a company that has no track record and we really haven't dealt with yet. Whereas Raynor has been in business for like a long 40 time. years. So. Yeah. I would say 100% avoid the headrest though. It is mm -hmm. terrible on the Vera. Yes. On the Vera, on the Kalami chair, it's w much more adjustable. That's the miss. It's yeah. just not adjustable. So it fits me great, but that means if you're not me, it's not going to fit you the same. So I don't know, Robert, you have anything else you want to share? Well, I mean, Rollerblade casters on the kitchen chair. I have twin nine-year-old boys. That would be wild. You know, <laughs> dinner time would be out of control. So no rollerblade casters on the kitchen chair. But yeah, Vera, I, I heard what these guys said. I agree totally. It's The backrest is just incredible. That's really the, the thing I love about it. So uh, yeah. So I think we're ready to move on. We have the human scale world chair, another all mesh chair. Uh, Oh, it has a few problems. So, unfortunately, I love the looks of this chair. Backrest, I love this pivoting feeling. Um, so, there's a lot of good things to pair with it. I actually was just in a hotel in Chicago. They had these chairs all over the hotel. I was very surprised. But it makes sense in, in a way because they look amazing. So, the looks is there. But what I found is that, for me, 
you know, about 200 pounds. When I sit down in that chair, I sink right through the mesh and I can feel my, my butt hit the mechanism. So there's not quite enough tension on that seat. I know Greg has said that he's had the same thing. So, you know, larger users or even, you know, slightly above average, I guess, I would beware with that just because of the seat. We have had others in the office that have loved this chair that are a little smaller. So any other thoughts, you guys? Well, it looks like Victor chimed in and that he's upgrading from a heavily worn E-Win, ga- that's a gaming chair, by the way, that uh, has been hurting his butt and back. So this is great news. I think yep. it is great news. You're going to love the I mean, It's a massive upgrade. So congrats. Back to the uh, the world chair. I have a tough time recommending the world chair just because the Liberty and the smart chair exist. And I think both of them are better versions of the world chair, mainly because you get out of that mesh seat. If you really like mesh, then I will say that if you're slimmer, this can be a comfortable mesh seat. For a while, I considered this to be my favorite mesh seat, mainly because they removed the front edge on it. So it doesn't even have a front edge. So there's no problem like you have with the Aeron or Ergo Human where it's going to be cutting off your circulation. There's just nothing there. So it's a lot more comfortable. But it still has the side frame, and the seat is small. It's not wide at all. And so you're going to feel that side frame. It's very restrictive. If you want this chair and you want to have a little bit more consistent design and a more comfortable seat i would just go with the different smart it's the same chair with a padded seat so that would be that's the only way that i could actually use it because i cannot use it this way because i sink mm-hmm. I, I literally sink right to the mechanism makes it un there's a good deal on it though right now so if you do really like the look of this chair and you want an all mesh seat 20 percent off which is a pretty pretty big sale from human yep. scale so moving on to the hayworth zodi lx Personally, I think this is the not as good version of the Zodi. I prefer the regular Zodi better. I think that this one did its job of looking nicer and being a better application for a home office environment where you're really concerned about the aesthetics. But I think going to that really hard backrest that has no flexibility and really kind of just holds you in position and I don't know. It feels so stiff to me that I just can't use this chair like the regular Zodi. And that's going to mainly be the one big miss for me. I think the armrests are fine. I think the seat's comfortable. The recline's good. I just don't like that backrest. And I think if you removed that lumbar support system, you wouldn't notice because I cannot feel it for the life of me when I move it up and down. I'm not even sure if there's anything in there, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's a fair take. I took this chair home for about a month and spent a month in it at home. And I honestly, I couldn't spend the entire month in the chair. I had to cycle out of the chair and it was purely based on the backrest. I'm known for liking pretty aggressive lumbar support. Like Ryan said, with the padding on there, there is no real lumbar support. And the way that that design of the backrest is, unless you actually put it into the sort of that perch mode, you can't get that backrest in contact with the back that you need for good lower support. So for that reason, while it's a beautiful chair, I don't love it, and I'd, I'd look at just the regular Zodi as a better option. 100%. Yeah, I mean, this definitely competes as one of the best-looking chairs. This might even be my top pick. The Carmen's are definitely up there, too. So it almost gives you this, like, false sense of being a good chair, but it's like the guy said. It's, it's not quite there. And, and you know, a firm backrest isn't always a bad thing if it has some flex to it, but it doesn't really. So other chairs that, you know, we have in the office have a, a pretty firm backrest, but they might have the flexibility, like a polyback is going to be feel really firm, but a lot of those have good flexibility, which kind of negates how firm it feels. So this doesn't have that flexibility. So And another you know. thing, too, about this, we go to Neocon every year, which is down in Chicago. This is a trade show for furniture. And so there's new products coming out typically every year, not always from every major, but this was one of those products that we sat in at the show and we thought, man, this thing is a game changer. It is going to be so good. And we couldn't wait for it to get to our office. And then we got it and was like, oh, that's unfortunate because <laughs> the, the new Zodi was just better, um, just the regular Zodi. And so that's one of those things too, where it's like when you go in your showroom a little bit and you try and uh, chairs in showrooms, it's why it doesn't necessarily fix every problem. 
You just need prolonged sitting in a chair, using it at your desk, doing the tasks that you do, gaming like you do, to really know if it's going to fit you. And that's why the trial periods are so important. All right. And I, one other thing, too. This is how we end up with B rankings on a chair. The, the actual seat on this chair, it ended up with an A from us. The back was like a C. You can see, like, it can make a major difference on the overall chair. So a neutral chair coming up next. Regular, regularly priced at about four five fifty right now twenty percent off plus a fifty dollar coupon puts it at about four forty. Would you guys buy this chair for four hundred and forty dollars? Absolutely not. A <laughs> big lead up. Ryan's no. opinion <laughs> is absolutely not. It's so hard to compete in this price range now when you've got some really solid options. And I get it. They tried to do something different, go out of the box, and I appreciate that. The lumbar system is cool. I just think it's too gimmicky, and it doesn't really actually serve a purpose. And I think that throwing a footrest on a chair to also be gimmicky and capitalize on something that someone might use one time a year and then realize that it's useless is just a waste of money into the chair. And so you're paying money for things that you don't use, and it makes the rest of the chair a little worse. I don't know. When there's chairs out there like the Vera and the Atlas and the Amip for the same price, I don't see how you could justify. But I'd, I'd get the uh, Han Ignition that we talked about a few chairs earlier over the neutral for sure. So, Yeah, that, I think that's a fair point. And before I jump into my thoughts on this, I just want to remind everybody, in about 22 minutes-ish, we're going to be giving away a Leap chair. So hang around for that. We'll give you instructions on how to enter that sweepstakes here in just over 20 minutes. So that's a huge one. And we keep moving up. So the last giveaway is going to be a Lamia chair, which you know is my S-tier, mm -hmm. God-tier, end game, the best of the best. Anyways, back to the neutral chair. Uh, this was one of my finds late at night, which we know we found the Kalami Atlas chair, which was a great find. This was another one of those finds, which ultimately wasn't one of those. I think they tried something, like Ryan said, that was cool in the back. But it wasn't necessary, honestly. Like, the Ergo Human is the originator when it comes to this design of the backrest, and they did a great job with it. You know, they um, you you didn't need to reinvent the wheel on this one, and that lumbar is so ridiculous <laughs> that most people won't want it. And it's not even that intuitive. So, And then, like Ryan said, the foot rester, it's almost like a leg rest because you can see Frances. She, she's not the tallest person in the room right now, and still it – it's kind of the back of your, your calves, and that's Robert's even further up his legs. It's not that yeah. comfortable. So. Francis, is that more or less comfortable to sit with it like that? She says less. less. So yeah. oh. unless you recline, it's not really going to be useful, but then once you kick your legs up there, the chair automatically wants to pitch you back forward. So you're like fighting gravity just to be able to use the footrest. Like I said, most, most footrests on chairs are just added for the – gimmicky effect it's kind of like when a manufacturer adds lumbar support that doesn't do anything so that they can advertise it has lumbar support even though it cost them two dollars to put a little plastic thing in there to me that's what they did with the footrest and so it, it's, it doesn't add value to the chair all right perfect timing on the leap since we're going to be giving a leap away here in our sweepstakes in about 20 minutes so we're going to bust out the leap v2 this has got to be one of the highest rated chairs over the longest period of time at VTOD. In fact, we brought this in in 17, I think, and, and we ranked it super high. It was one of our top rated chairs, and that's when we ultimately started to, I think it was like four years later, three years later, we started to actually refurb chairs because we are like, this is amazing. Well, it's this chair was wild because we, when we first started testing chairs, we would kind of pull the the employees in our office, you know, 10 or 12 of them and have them score the chairs. And we would score, you know, seat comfort, back comfort, arm comfort. And then we also made lists that were specifically designed for tall people and short people. And something that we found right away is that the leap was on all of the lists. It was either at the top or top three for everything. And this was coming from a wide range of opinions. So short people loved it. Tall people loved it. People loved the seat. They loved the back. They loved the arms. And so it was easy for us to just be like, okay, this is the best, most versatile chair we've ever seen from actually using it and our experience. And so it was kind of a no brainer. Yeah. All three of us gave this uh, S tier for the backrest. Uh, Greg and I were at A's. Ryan had an S for the seat as well for comfort. So Super highly rated. I'll, I'll say this. I 
I intentionally picked a leap to sit in for this live stream. I'm like, well, we're going to be here three, three and a half, whatever it is, hours. I got to find something that I know I'm going to be comfortable in, something that I know I can do this. And well, maybe you can't quite see it, but sit a little cross-legged, maybe put a leg under my, you know, some of these that are not the most ergonomic positions, but it is nice to be able to move your body around. I know that if I need to, I can lean back, have some flex. So it just has all these things that we keep talking about, movement in the chair and not feeling any kind of real restrictions. I think waddling just put it really nicely. All he said was the benchmark. And that is honestly what the leap is. Because if you can design a chair that does anything better than the leap, you've, you've done it right. If you got a more comfortable seat than the leap, you did it right. A better back, you did it right. Anything better than the leap, and you are in S tier territory. Mm -hmm. And the, so the problem is, is that most can't do more than one thing better. Right. And that's the miss because that's why the leap is so good. It fits everybody, and it's comfortable almost everywhere for everybody too. So and it lasts forever. So that that uh, upholstery on there is pretty unique. It's a little different look. That's a grade seven trails agate. <laughs> S, what is it? 5S85. So this is actually a chair that we have in our office. So we, we've got quite a few of these from a, a company out in California. And these are like 2017. They were only sat in for a couple years because of COVID. The office closed and never reopened. So we got these chairs in and we actually have these as an as-is format. So if you're not familiar on our website, uh, basically what it means is these chairs come in and they're in such impeccable condition that we have no problem selling these to you as-is. They go through a cleaning process. We give you 30-day free returns on it and a one-year warranty, but you get them at a heavy discount and you know when the chair was made. Honestly, these chairs, Robert, when they brought, when I brought one into the office, you're like, are these brand new? Because they looked, there was like no, there, listen, there might be some scuff marks on your yeah. chair. They are used. However, most of them had like no blemishes or anything on them. Yeah. I mean, what happens is just normal wear and tear is you start to get some scratches. They bump up, you know, like right now, I might, this chair might bump against the desk here and get a little bit of marks, but these chairs look so good. That's why I thought they were or like never used potentially. It's crazy. All the knobs and everything, they looked excellent. They looked like we had already gone through our full refurbishing process, which we had not at that point. We didn't, we didn't, so was, you don't have to do anything with yeah, them. They, right. They the reason so nice. we don't refurbish them is because it's just wasteful. Right. And yeah. you end up taking pristine steel case parts and having to get rid of them to refurbish the chair. And yeah, you might be changing it a little bit by refurbishing it, upgrading something here and there. But really, when they come in this nice, you're doing a disservice to the chair yeah. by refurbishing it and you're getting a better quality chair just buying it as yeah, and, is. And the so. arm pads, I mean, these are the premium arm pads. They, the, what do they call the boys in the sh furb shop? Call them the blues, I think, right? Because they <laughs> have a little bit of blue underneath. So they're yeah. super cush and they're in such good shape. Again, it'd be a shame to just toss these all in the dumpster. So we are able to sell these chairs. I or just even recycle them. Yeah. Like recycling it's isn't hard. always, you know, it's much better just to be able to take the entire chair and sell it or salvage as much as you can and resell it and have to put anything into even recycling or trash because let's be honest, things that go into the recycling aren't always recycled. recycled. Yeah. And I did so. drop the link. If you're looking to purchase one of these as is, uh, is they do have 10% off right now on our website as well. Yeah. They're li and obviously they're limited with how many we have. Yeah. So. And they're, they're going for sure. I, you know what I like about that upholstery though? It's super unique, but that also means it's super unique. So make sure you like yeah. the upholstery yeah, because yeah, if different. you don't, well, you're going to be stuck with it, right? No, 30 day returns, I guess. So yeah, and it's going to hide stains and stuff pretty well. That's yeah. what's nice. It's a little tough to see until you look at those close up pictures. So it's that definitely those grays, but then it also kind of has this little bit of a goldish brown stripe, which I think it looks nice because it is unique. You're not going to get that just from our, our typical colors or the solid colors like black, gray, red, blue. So this is a nice opportunity if you want a different one. A great drink of choice, Robert. I just grabbed one. So uh, people liking the Dr. Pepper. I guess that's just Taylor. It's Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Still, uh, Dr. Pepper is a drink I just noticed we skipped the uh, Kieran. We skipped did the we? Kieran. Well, we got to go back. We, we just got to hop back up one. And Suitcase does have a deal on their Leap right now, 20% off too. So if you want to get a brand, brand new one, 20% off at Steelcase. That's sure. a heck of a deal. Yeah, we'll drop the link in the chat. That's here, $1,000 so. for a Leap chair. Right. That's less money than what we bought ours for yep. new in 2017. That's a fact. <laughs> that's, that's wild. All right, Kieran chair. Well, Robert, you kicked this off. Yeah, so I'm a little bit on my own here, but I love this Kieran chair. The reason I'm on my own is 
I would, in a lot of ways, prefer this chair over the Atlas chair. And lucky for you guys, this is the one that is still, it does have a little discount. It's about what it normally is, right? They're always about 150 but they are available to ship sooner than that Atlas chair. I just, I really like the seat on the, the Kieran chair. It's it's wide. It's, it's for taller users. It's going to be a bigger seat. Um, it, it has a backrest very similar to like the Lino chair or the um, blanky, Sophie. Uh, the Sophie chair. So there's a couple other chairs out there with that similar shape. It doesn't ever get in my way as I move around a little bit. You see Francis kind of mo- twisting like that. I never find that I'm hitting that backrest frame, which again, with a lot of times with the lower price chairs like the Tacova for me, they're a little bit, they feel too small and I'm, I'm hitting the frame in different ways. So really like the Kieran, it's, it's not going to have all the premium materials and everything. It's not going to have that same backing, you know, that's why again, for these lower prices, it's nice to, you know, if you can get one that as a company you're that we had more history with could recommend better. But it's you're not it's not like a huge gamble when the chair is only one hundred and fifty dollars. I do like the lumbar too. It has a little pad on it. The Atlas chair does not have that extra pad, which is why I kind of also like the lumbar better on the Kieran chair. A little bit of padding on the the height adjustable lumbar armrests. I'll let you guys have a chance in a minute. Sorry, but I do like the armrest pads. They kind of have. I always like when they have a little bit of slope to them. It has a little bit of a curve on it. Not super cush. I mean, we're not talking Aeron arm pads here, but still very nice for that price point. I, I really like this chair. The one thing that I really like about this chair is it actually feels solid. The components actually feel pretty good. Yep. This isn't a chair for under $200 like I talked about, like the Tacova, where you've got to put a base together out of six components. It's a single base. The casters are good. This is one of the very few chairs for under $200 that I can say feels decently built and that's going to be the number one separator between this chair and all of the other $200 chairs including the Tacova. So what the Tacova doesn't do well, the Kirin does. So most of the complaints on the Tacova are the build quality and then the seat. A lot of people do not like the seat one because it's not large enough. It doesn't have a ton of padding and it doesn't have any depth adjustment. The Kieran has all of these things. It has a thick pad. From my experience so far, it doesn't bottom out. It's wide enough to account for a lot of different body types, and it has a seat slider, which is so rare for a sub-$200 chair. Going through the rest of the components, like Robert said, pretty good arms. The mesh is better quality than the Kova. For me, the biggest downside with this chair is going to be the recline. It's got kind of that hip thrusty recline, and it's very limited. And so that's going to be where the Tacova shines, and then the headrest. The Tacova has a really good headrest for under 200 bucks. The Kieran doesn't have one. So where the Tacova excels, you know, the recline, the backrest, the headrest, the Kieran doesn't. But where the Tacova doesn't excel, the Kieran does. So just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, I think for I, you pretty much summed it all up there. I mean, 150 bucks for this chair, and it's an actual office chair, like what you'd expect in the 200 plus range. Easy, no problem. I mean, it's it's this is another one of those late night shopping experiences on Amazon for me, where I found apparently Calumny has come up with two chairs that they're willing to make no money on and be in business for. I don't know how, but like this is a crazy deal. Even if this chair never had a warranty. It's still a good deal. It's $150. Yeah. I can tell you with great certainty that this more times than they won't, they will last because it's a well-built chair. So for 150 bucks, you can't go wrong. Yeah. I think we've pretty much covered it there. That is another one that wouldn't be surprised if the price starts heading up, up on that. And it's also creep up. The, the lead times are going to go higher too as, as time goes on. Uh, we've talked about Herman Miller, all the great deals they have going on. Herman Miller sale next up here, 25% off plus another 5%. This is another chair where at its usual price, around that 735 always feels maybe a little high, in my opinion, at this 550 about. That's starting to be where I can start recommending this chair again. That's really limited, though, right? Like, in order to get the four-way arms and the lumbar and the, the adjustable additions, it's usually going to be up around 900 So that, that is one thing to also keep in, in mind, yeah. is that this chair is going to be more similarly, similarly priced to the Zodi, actually, which is 
usually where I kind of have a problem with it. I mean, obviously Herman Miller is going to be more expensive than Hayworth. Can you justify, you know, getting a Hayworth pro or a Herman Miller product over Hayworth that much? I do think it's a good chair and it fits me well. It has good recline and when you deck it out, it has plenty of adjustments. It's just pretty expensive for what Herman Miller would consider to be a lower mid-tier product in their line, in my opinion. So, Yeah, this is the, the thing with this chair, I really like the armrest on. I think the seat's comfortable, and I don't think that that backrest is a bad design. I think it's comfortable if it fits you. For me, and you can even tell just <laughs> watching Francis, that it can cut into your shoulder blades the taller that you get, and so that is a major miss. This is a good chair for, for shorter individuals or even females because it is a bit more condensed chair. And... I mean, yeah, it's expensive. Like Ryan said, it's going to be up. You're going to be competing with some really nice chairs. But, I mean, Herman Miller does have a very good warranty. It's just it's one of those things where they've been around, they're going to be around, and they do care about what people think of their brand, so they take care of people. So mm -hmm. not a bad deal right now. For the, I mean, that crazy, was it 30? It's 30% 30 off. So yeah. with that extra five, I definitely, I would definitely consider it if you fit. Yeah, another chair that uh, we can move on to our Millette chair. It's another chair that I would say you have to fit in. This is another one of our more budget options, a Clatina Millette. You can normally find it on Amazon on, a, on discounts, but right now nothing going on on Amazon. But you can purchase it at Walmart for $186. So that's a good discount from their usual price of $239. Now this chair, it's always a problem for me a little bit because the seat depth kind of has this – in a way, it's quirky where I want to slide it all the way out. But when I slide the seat depth all the way out, then I find myself sitting on the back edge of the seat, which is a hard edge. It's very uncomfortable. So I have to just pull it like part of the way out, and then it's not nearly enough seat depth for me. But outside of that, there's a lot of good things about this chair. The backrest is pretty nice. Arms, they tried to kind of copy the leap style arm with the, the functionality. And again, it's not at that level, but... You could tell they're trying to kind of copy some of the design elements of the leap. It definitely in the lower part of the frame. But yeah. what you mentioned, what did you say it was for on Amazon right now? I mean, on Walmart. Uh, and Walmart is one eighty six. So there. So th this is one of the weird things about being on Amazon because this is where you'd find a lot of these chairs. There's always different configurations within the offering, and so I went in and I looked at the gray option, which we don't have. And if you get it without a headrest, it's one eighty three ninety nine on there. But I'd say, I don't know, what do you think, Ryan? That headrest is probably one of the better features of that chair and in chairs of that price range. Yeah. I mean, the Clatina for me is in a, in a tough spot just because it was my number one pick for under $300 because it was so much better than anything that we have seen. But now that we've brought in so many chairs, I do think that there are some better options from Kalami and from Tacova. It, it does some things well. I do like that they tried to copy the Leap build, and it's got – some nice features with that. I think the lumbar support is horrible. Luckily, you can just remove it, and that makes the chair a lot better. I don't love the arms. The, the best thing about the chair is, like you said, the headrest. And I think it was an A or S tier headrest when we did just our headrest list. And that's because it's got a really good pad, it's cush, and it has two-way adjustment, and it holds its position. So I think that it's a good price for, you know, around $200, and I definitely think you should consider it. I just don't know if it's better than the, the Kalami or the Tacova even. So Yeah. All right. Let's, let's hit them with some of that legal stuff for the Leap sweepstakes, and then we'll get that going. Sweepstakes time. No purchase necessary. Must be 18 or older and reside in the continental United States. Type hashtag chair into the chat and a winner will be selected at random at the end of the on-screen countdown. And again, this one is for a leap chair. Ooh, this is going to be that's a good giveaway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our refurbished Leap V2 comes with the lumbar. It's going to have fully adjustable arms. So this is the V2 that you want, the V2 we've been talking about. Yep, you get the full warranty with it, too. So not only did you get a free chair, you get a warranty on yep. the chair. Yeah, so drop in that hashtag chair to be entered, and in about five minutes we'll announce that winner. Let's hit some questions because I think it's been a while since we've gone through some of those yeah, questions, Robert. Sure. 
So, uh, well, we just got a good one about, well, it actually wasn't a question, but I think it was an interesting thing to talk about. We were just talking about the Tacova not long ago. Someone bought it, said that they didn't get enough seat depth on the Tacova, so they returned it. So what would you guys say? Is there a certain height that you'd want to stay at? You know, if you're over six foot, maybe stay away from the Tacova. I guess I, that's tough for me. Yeah. I'm five nine, and it fits me. So it gets a little bit shallow for me. It kind of reminds me a lot of that Vantum gaming chair, where the seat is just too—it's not—it's too shallow, and then it creates this big gap in the back between the seat and the backrest. So when you're at six feet tall, where I am, and going beyond that, you're definitely going to run into a problem. I know, same thing for you. Yeah, six two. You said it was a little bit. Yeah, too it's a shallow. little small. I mean, for me, it wasn't even the seat depth so much. It was more that the backrest felt too short. So that's why I personally would stay away from the Tacova just because I I want a little taller backrest. So another good question: Someone wants to know, should I buy the refurb leap? This is from BTOD.com or a very good leap from your website. Uh, I'll jump in my opinion. If, if you are liking this color fabric, this is a, like Greg said, t, uh, grade seven, was it? Yeah. So this is a really nice upholstery. If you like that print, that look of it, oh, I probably would go with that one just because I, I think it is a unique looking chair and um, they're just in such incredible condition. Uh, if you don't like it, then you're going to, you're not going to be disappointed by the other options that we have for refurb chairs, the black, gray, and there's a couple other colors that we have. So it, it really comes down to what your what your preference is there. Either way, you're going to get very similar quality. You're going you're to be guaranteed a 2017 chair with these um, as is or uh, very good condition chairs. With the I mean, you're ro- you're fabric. rolling the dice slightly, right? You're you're giving up the full 12 year warranty. But in exchange, you're getting a less expensive chair and a guaranteed, as close to like new chair as we can provide, right? It's been used very little, it's in pristine condition, and it's relatively new compared to most chairs that are refurbished. So you're probably getting an overall better quality chair, but you're just not getting that warranty. And the reason that we're not giving the full warranty is because the chairs are in such amazing condition right now that we feel confident giving you a discount giving you one year of guaranteed use out of the chair. And then if something happens to go wrong, we can help you out with parts down the road. But I'm going to have to tend to agree with Robert. This is a really good price for as close to a like new leap as you're going to get. So if you like the upholstery design, I'd probably head towards that direction. Yeah. I mean, there's, we're always trying to find different ways to hit different price points for you guys, because we know that we're trying to provide the best value that we can. And that's why we introduced this chair we, we didn't do it with this at first. We had some other ones that came in like this, and we're just, they're too good not to just give them back the way they were, essentially, without just cleaning them up a little bit. A lot of times, they come in in, so the trip they take from wherever they're coming from, there's higher potential of damage to, like, scuffing and things like that than when they were just sitting in their office never used. So, like, there's a chance that if there's a scuff mark on it, it actually happened on the way here because they're in that good of shape when they yeah. – I've visited these buildings before, and I'm like, these are incredible chairs. So, it's a really nice opportunity, but you got to love the color. I mean, that's just number one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, someone asked if we sell the Leap chairs in different frame colors. If we get them in. There you go. That's so, just it. Yeah, right it, now, it's just, just black right now. We're just at the mercy of what's available. You know, the the way that we get these chairs is from decommissionings in offices. You know, an office is either moving, they're going out of business, whatever they're doing, they're upgrading, they're swapping all of their chairs out, and they just want to get some value for their chairs. So that's where we'll come in and we'll buy their, whatever, thousand chairs in their building. And so if they happen to have platinum frames or chrome frames or midnight frames we've had in the past, Mm -hmm. then yeah, we'll have those available. But Typically, it's going to be more of a black on black on black type of situation just because most companies are going to go with something generic when they're buying something for, you know, several hundred people or a thousand people. A thousand so. people, yep. And that would timed up perfectly All with right. the end of our five minutes. Here we go. We're going to find out who it is. There's a lot of people on this one. Uh, Maya C. Maya Maya C. C. With the leap. Congrats to Maya C. Leap V2. Leap V2. So hit us up at marketing at btad.com. Also, let them know what color do you want. We've got four different color options in the fabric. So you want to make sure you let them know. 
and we'll get that chair on its way. Congratulations, though. That is an awesome chair. For sure. So should we jump back in here? What do we have out there? Ooh, the freedom chair. So Francis has been just kind of waiting over there as until we like go back over to that camera. And this is the chair she keeps at her desk. So this was great timing for her to get that break. Now, this is a chair I also love. And I sat in this for maybe a couple years. Uh, what it has is a very unique recline system. So it has a weight activated recline. So it's going to, based on how much you you recline back, your, your weight is going to determine how far it goes. So you can't adjust the tension on it. I, I, feel, th- I feel like human scale was like the originator of this, weren't they? Like this whole the, weight activated sort of mechanism. Or the mechanism free design as they call it. That's what I mean. Yeah. But yeah, whereas weight activated, I don't know yeah. that for sure, but I'm, I'm, I feel fairly confident that they were the, this was their thing. Yeah, so you, you'll see it more in other brands now, like even like the Carmen has a weight-activated recline, but then you can also add a 20% boost to make it a little stronger. This one, you can't change it. You can't add a boost or anything. I've always found that for my size, it was the perfect amount. Francis, do you think it's the right amount of recline tension? or? Your... So she could, yeah, said maybe it would be nice if it was a little tighter, so not recline quite as easily. But what's nice about this chair, personally, what I like is that the headrest looks a little funny how it works, but it basically holds your, props your head up as you recline back. So it kind of, in a way, pushes it forward. It's going to look really uncomfortable. Because it is. They, I was just going to think it is. Personally, I love it. It's it's one neck crinker. You know, for my job, I, I spend a lot of time like watching videos, and for me, I like to be able to recline, have my head just held up, and be able to recline while still continuing continuing to work. So, it's definitely unique, though. And you know, again, we have a lot of content on this for if you want to watch more of people just sitting in this chair to see how it works. Um, other than that, it's. A lot of high-end materials, but it does have a lot of noise. That's one complaint. You can, I don't know if that's picking up, but it does kind of clank around. Part of the reason I actually switched out of it because it was kind of like I almost felt bad in the office being like moving around and everyone can just hear every little move I make. We always know when it's being used in the office, which for sure maybe that's not an annoyance because I think all chairs make some sounds no matter what. You might have it be quiet for a while, but this is just a chair that makes sounds literally all of the time. So, And I I have to jump in real quick because I forgot to mention this. The last giveaway that we're giving at the end of the stream here is for a Lamia chair, so make sure you stick around for that. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to announce that uh, sweepstakes I think in about 45 minutes or 40 minutes, and it's going to be for a Lamia chair. But back to this. I sat in this chair for a long time, too, trying to really get to like it. I do like certain aspects of the chair, but that headrest is really bizarre to me because it sort of is best when it's halfway reclined. I love the lumbar on it, though, because it's super pronounced with that pivoting feature. But this is a tough one at the price because there's so many other chairs that I would recommend over it. So that's why I haven't I guess, gone back to it, and I don't recommend it a lot. This has got to be the most polarizing chair right mm-hmm. with the air on. You, you, this chair is either going to be the most comfortable chair you've ever used, like Robert. He will consistently rank this really, really high. Or you're going to be like me, where I cannot use this chair. I cannot sit in a way with my neck cricked forward like that, trying to T-Rex towards the keyboard and work that way. It does not... It's not comfortable for me. And personally, I would probably like the chair a lot more without the headrest, but the whole point of the chair is the headrest. So I really don't see a reason to get the chair without the headrest. You just, the the toughest thing with it is that there's not a great way to try it, or is there? Can you try it from human scale now? Yeah, or, yeah you can. they got 30-day free returns on their Okay, stuff. well, then there you go. I, w- I would just be prepared to try it for the 30 days and – you're either going to love it or you're yeah. going to hate it. Uh, so, so someone just asked, Cactus asked, uh, he said, as a tall man yourself, would you rather go with the Fern or the Freedom? Uh, the Fern, I feel like, is a more of a guaranteed you're going to like it. Safer pick. Uh, it's a safer, for sure. Knowing that you can return the Freedom after 30 days, it's still worth trying if you really like the look of it, if you like this idea of more, like, less functions, le- less uh, knobs and stuff, if you want that more... Uh, the weird thing I will say looking. about that, though, is that they say that it has less function and less knobs, but how many less, right? Two. 
because yeah. you still need a lever for seat height, a lever for seat depth. You still need to move the arms. You still need to move the mm -hmm. backrest up and down. You still need to move the headrest. So what they took away was the tension adjustment and the locking function. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to not have tension and not have locking to improve the ease of use of the chair, then yeah, that's a positive. Yeah. But not everyone is going to see that as a positive because you're giving up functions. Yeah. So. And some of it is where you sit in the chair. So if you scoot your butt all the way back, you're less likely to have it tip backwards. So in a way, it's like you're tightening your tension. And if you slide your butt forward, you're going to be. It shifts where your weight is, so you're more likely to recline back. So I know that's getting a little deep, maybe, but I've found that you can adjust the tension in a way just by where you're sitting on the chair. So something to try if you do want to order it and test it out. Move yourself around a little bit on the chair. But yeah, 10% off at Beat Todd right now on the Freedom. You can get this with or without the headrest. Personally, I like the headrest. There it is. Digital Dog oh. is right there. I had a human scale Freedom. I just couldn't handle the super loud creaking all yeah. the time. I mean, if you're if you're in a yeah. home office, I don't think it's going to, at least for me, it won't really bother me. It's more if you're like in a shared workspace. If you were at a home office, though, and you had young kids that went to bed at 8 o'clock, <laughs> yeah. would you be able to use that in uh, a room that's close to them? Yeah, if you're trying it's to that game, loud. If you're yeah. gaming, you're going to be you're shut next down next door. Mix. Yeah. Right? I mean, it is that loud. So yeah. that's a good point. All right. Next up, we've got the IOO chair. So, yeah, this is a, a similar chair to the Ergo Human, same company, but a little different features, different seat. You guys probably have more experience with this, so I'll let you take it away. Yeah, I think it's in some ways an improvement to the Ergo Human. I like the seat a little bit better. Uh, I do not like the arms as much because of what Francis was just showing right there. They're they're pretty loose, and for me, they move out of position when I don't want them to. But I think the seat's pretty comfortable. I think the backrest is really supportive, and it can go high enough for people that are super tall. So overall, I think it's a pretty good chair. Very similar to the Mavic's chair, um, almost the same design entirely. It's going to have quite a few functions. I think it's going to be kind of a middle-of-the-road chair, you know, a B-type comfort-rated chair, but it is going to be more on the expensive side. So, Yeah, I think the big thing with this one, the hardest thing I have is, and it's, and it, you said it right when you said it's like the Mavic's gaming chair, the arm pads. So the, the Mavic's gaming chair's arm pads are terrible, but for a different reason. I don't love these <laughs> two because they slide around too much. Like mm -hmm. this is the definition of an arm pad that has way too easy a movement. And I know they've been working on fixing it, but it needs to have like predefined clicking positions where it's going to stop and stay. They just, if you don't, if that's going to annoy you what Francis is doing right now, then this is, a, this is a miss. So I don't have much else to say on that. Robert, your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I, uh I, very similar thoughts. I really am picky, as I said earlier in the in the stream here. I like my arms to really lock solid. So for me, it's kind of a deal breaker. Other than that, I do think the seat's pretty comfortable. Seat's comfy. And I like that it has a pretty strong lumbar. I really like strong lumbar. The uh, Ergo Human IOO really have that where it's it's strong, but it also presses. It it, it gives when you push into it. So this is one goes. of those weird situations, right, where this is our chair. But, yep. like, I'd be more comfortable recommending a competitor's brand, Mavix, against this one because, in my opinion, the Mavix is a little bit better for a similar price. So, I don't know. It, the Iowa is in a tough spot, in my opinion, with the Ergo Human B existing and the Mavix existing. And especially now that we saw the new version of the Ergo Human, which I don't even know if we're supposed to be talking about, but it's, like, it might be better than yeah. both of those And that's going to be so. a little higher price point on the new Ergo Human? Unknown. Unknown. So, just got it in. Yeah. So we just got it in. All right. Let, let's let's jump on to the next chair, which is, man, this is one of those chairs where we do get a lot of hate because they don't love that I don't like this chair <laughs> in the audience. And, and yeah. who do you mean by they? Most of our, our friends from Europe are really not happy with me when I tell you to avoid this chair. But I hate to say it, you should avoid this chair. I don't know if it's the Scandinavians or what, but there are so many people that are hardcore dedicated to Ikea. It's like they think that we're I, attacking Ikea as a whole by not liking mm. their chairs. It's just that Ikea is not great to buy a chair from. All the other stuff that they sell might be fantastic, but the buying experience for one yeah. from Ikea is brutal. Like having to go into a massive maze design store to find a chair that might be in stock with a ticket that you have to walk downstairs to find on a massive rack and then carry it home and drive it home yourself instead of having it arrive at your door from Amazon is one thing 
different altogether. But the chair itself, they're not good. They're, they're low-end chairs. They're not comfortable. They're not adjustable. Yes, they have an amazing warranty and a super good return policy, but... Good recline. Right. The recline is good on this chair. That's true. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite reclines on any low price chair. But it's the lumbar is really bad. The chair has no flexibility. The arms are terrible. It's like an empty seat. It's yeah. unfulfilling. 100%. It feels like it's just filled yeah. with air. I, yeah. I always just feel like these, both Jarfalet, Marcus, the backrests to me are very uncomfortable. They always feel like the lumbar is, especially on the Marcus, feels like a mistake almost like it's jutting into my back it's I really just can't even sit in this I I don't have a lot else to add other than I mean for us we're we're hours away from an Ikea so for us we'd have to ship it unless we are driving over there to get it shipping I just looked it up if we were to have one delivered here it'd be 150 dollars so it's kind of not an option they brought so that must be their discount then because it was 300 and something dollars so that there you go if you're going to buy it online the discount today from from Ikea is that they don't gouge you for your shipping is bad. So yeah. congratulations. It looks like, you know, they don't show any discount when you're on the page, but when I did put it in the checkout, it gave me a cyber Monday minus two fifty. I don't know. It gave, it gave me $25 off. So there we go. it looks like there actually is a, a little bit of a discount. If you get all the way through the, the cart experience, here's our scores for the seat D the back D, although I gave it an F. So it was overall, it was a D. And then finally, just the overall, overall score is a D. Yeah. So that's all you need to know. All right. What's next on the list? Ooh, next up, Steelcase Think Chair. So this chair is, I've actually been sitting in this a lot here in the office just because I'm kind of the, the mesh guy in the office. So I, I don't talk about the think a lot, but I'm like, I should probably spend a little more time with this. Right away, when you look at this chair, you see all these bars in the back, and some people have said that they feel the bars. Personally, I don't. I I don't ever, maybe if I had just a t-shirt on, I'd feel that a little bit, but even if I felt it, it would never be a problem for me. So I find the backrest to be quite comfortable. It does have a little bit of flex to it. Um, The the seat is nice. It's kind of, in a way, it's like that regeneration chair where it's on the thinner side, but it still has good support has a nice recline. It's, you know, again, similar to the other steel case chairs. I I think it just looks really nice. It's steel case kind of nailed it with Carmen with the think gesture as being really nice looking chairs. This is definitely up there, especially with the, the combination that we purchased. Arms are really nice. It's not, these aren't exactly the same pads, correct? As right. the, so they're very similar to the leap Amia pads but they're not quite as cush. I think they're just a little bit firmer than the leap pads, but still really nice. Uh, you know, right now it's was a 20% off for the think chair. So if you're really wanting a chair that's in this, you know, category, kind of that sub thousand dollars, 20% off puts it at eight fifty. So it's something to consider. Francis, how tall are you? Francis is five, six. Uh, this chair is interesting because it has the thinnest C pad. I believe of any of the steel case chairs, this chair is super flexible, which I don't think many people would expect, but yeah. like the backrest is flexible. The seat is super flexible. It is very much like that null regeneration in the seat where it's a thin seat pad on a very flexible sort of frame or foundation. I just, I don't really like the backrest that much on this chair, especially with those bars that go across it. I can feel them through the back of the mesh. And when it comes to steel case stuff, there's just better options. It's a really good chair. Like in, when it's in our conference room, I don't mind sitting in it, but I wouldn't find myself using this at my desk all day. Yeah, I'm kind of opposite of Robert. I actually dislike the recline on this chair. I think that the Think V1 was actually better than the V2. It had a more normal recline, just a synchro tilt recline. Instead, they kind of went with the new age hip thrusty recline, the same thing as the regeneration with this chair. And so I think it's a, a bit of a downgrade from a functional standpoint when we compare it just directly to the EMEA, but it is a nicer looking chair than the EMEA. And this is, I mean, if you're in this price range and you're looking at steel case, you got to be looking at either the Think or the EMEA, right? Because that's, they're about the same price. And for me, the EMEA has a little bit more comfort. I think the backrest is more comfortable. I'm like, Greg, I can kind of feel that frame. And I like the recline better on the EMEA, but the Think without question looks miles better than the EMEA. The EMEA is the most uninspiring chair 
from maybe any big brand manufacturer, whereas the Think is really eye-catching. So it's just what you value more. I could see home office people really going for the Think or designers in an office. Yeah, I mean, this is a chair that I've occasionally seen like in TV shows and movies because it Mm -hmm. looks really nice, like movies that want to portray like uh, we're in the, you know, 2050s, like in the future. It's modern looking so that you'll see it in some of those types of things. You know you're a chair nerd when you're watching a (laughs) show with your significant (laughs) other and you're like, oh, that's a leap. You know, we just did this. We were watching Suits, my wife and I, and I was like, oh, there's a leap chair. And then I was like, oh, they had a Lumia, or a Lumia, they don't have a Lumia. (laughs) Maybe. They had a Lumia chair. And, and that was so funny because I'm that I'm that guy that's always picking out those chairs, yeah, for sure. and I've seen the freedom in a bunch of different stuff too. So, all right, what do we got next? What is our next chair on the list? Vantum, the Vantum. Yeah, yeah someone asked uh, when the Vantum was coming up a long time ago. I hope they're still with us because uh, we're we're here now. Vantum again. We, we've arrived. The Vantum is here. Yeah. So again, really good discount on this chair right now. Twenty five percent off plus another five percent on Herman Miller. Uh, <laughs> You I know, think you need. I think you need that discount yeah. to yeah, make this sure. chair worth it. Yeah. Honestly, because without it, I would never recommend right. it. There's just so many points on this chair that are potential misses for someone. The first, the biggest miss is going to be the seat depth. You cannot use this chair unless you are around five six, maybe five seven or shorter. I can. I'm too tall for this chair at five nine, and the seat depth is designed either for a child or they just completely missed the boat. I'm not sure what they were thinking here, but it is tiny, and it's also not very wide. So just from a sizing perspective, one of the most limited chairs that we've reviewed, okay? When going on from there, the chair itself does not feel like a Herman Miller chair. It feels like a cheap imported chair because that's what it is. It's not as solid, the parts feel cheaper, the lumbar support especially, because it has a very similar design as the Aeron Posture Fit, but even on our chair, you can feel the knob when you turn it, almost feels broken already, it'll keep turning when you don't want it to, or it won't turn when you want it to, whereas the SL system on the Aeron is super smooth, it always functions perfectly, so to me, this doesn't really feel like an Aeron, Mm -hmm. and the seat isn't going to fit people. The recline is also really, really limited for a gaming chair. I mean, most gamers rave about having a really big recline. Francis is trying to figure out right now why it won't recline any further. She, <laughs> she assumed it was locked. It yeah. it's, it's not. That's just as far as it goes. So to me, this is just a huge miss. The headrest is also tiny and not very comfortable to me. So I don't know. I'd have a hard time recommending this even at a 30% discount, if I'm being yeah, honest. Yeah, for sure. I, this to me is just a big stay away. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of Herman Miller in general, but this is another one where they just really missed it on the seat depth, which Ryan really covered. Just like the <clears throat> sail chair, really small seat, Cosm chair, short seat depth. This is like the extreme. They've taken it even farther. It feels like uh, sitting in a child's chair. So uh, I, I find it hard to purchase this unless you're definitely on the very petite side. Um, and even then, you got to love the looks because that would maybe be the reason. Like, to me, I feel like just using, like, that lumbar adjustment, I feel like I'm going to break the chair. I, like, don't even like using it because I'm like, I don't want to be the one to break it. And uh, it's got some some problems. So, unfortunately, Vantum, I'm sure Greg's going to be right there with us. So, is that it's, this just, is kind of a just too hard no buys. You know? I trust everything that they yeah. said. Yeah. We're moving on to the Capisco. Capisco. So, this is a fun one. Uh, If you want a chair that you can sit forwards, backwards, potentially sideways in, this is a really fun option. Personally, I use this chair at home just to change up my seating position. So I like to be able to do this where you flip backwards and essentially use the backrest as like a a front rest. I don't know how to call it, but um, especially with a standing desk is great because you can move your desk to that exact height and then kind of in a sense use it like as a perching stool. And uh, I know Francis also has always liked this chair, correct? Or am I making that up? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. So it's very unique. Nick, our salesman, also loves this chair. It, it I'll, I know what you guys are thinking right now. I'll say it for you. But it's an expensive chair to not use as a eight hours a day, 10 hours a day type chair. So that's the biggest downside. 
It's not cheap. So you can get it 10% off discount. We have it at Beat Todd. So that does bring it down. It helps make that a little bit of an easier buy. Um, but if, if this looks like it's a, a, a good thing that you might want to sit in it, you're probably right. Meaning if it looks like, oh, that'd be really comfortable personally, you're right. I think it, it's, a, it's a nice change up. But I would definitely recommend getting that flat seat. I would not get the pulse with the plastic, hard plastic oh, yeah. T seat because that thing is awful. No and I'd what. also go with the square seat instead of the saddle seat. That's what I meant, yeah. Okay, yep, so I think, uh, I think Nick, salesman Nick in the office likes the saddle seat, but definitely stick with the, the upholstered cushion, not the, the pulse, which is yeah, the hard plastic. You're getting um, a little too far away from a chair as you start to embark down that journey, and the likelihood yeah. of you liking it yeah. become even less. The, the pulse, you yeah, go. it starts to look and feel more like uh, you're uh, – the nurse in the doctor's office pulls that up and they sit in it for 15 minutes at the max, you know. Um, oh, these things are it. filled in the hospital. Here. Yeah. Our local yeah. hospital is yeah. filled with these Capiscos because they work so well for all of the employees that are yeah. Oh, yeah. in there. Yeah, nice it's, caster. I mean, they're super high. Materials are incredible on these. Super high quality materials. I mean, it's it's hog. I mean, they're the one of the the highest end brands coming out of Europe. So everything on it is going to be good quality. That can be good and bad, right? It's good because it's going to last a really long time and you have premium components, but it also makes it, like Robert said, it's expensive. And for what an individual is going to be using it for, it might not be worth the price. If you're buying 20 of these for your hospital or your dentist office or something like that, a studio or a photographer's area, then yeah. But if you're using it for your home office, don't plan on this being your replacement and this being your new chair Plan on it being an accessory to your other chair, your standing desk, kind of mixing it in a rotation. And when you consider it like that, then you need to have a pretty high budget because you probably already have something like an Embody if you're going to pair another $1,000 type tool to mix into your system. So it's a very good product, and it's definitely the best standing desk chair. You just, you're going to pay, pay a premium for it. I didn't even know that Robert... Oh, how many chairs do you have? At yeah, your he's house, got like right? seven chairs in <laughs> his mean, office. He, We're it, learning well, that every. Well, stream. I brought the Carmen back <laughs> oh, yeah. here, so I have yeah. the. So you, you had know. to bring another one. Back. All right, yeah, that's go. good. All right, don't forget. In about twenty-two minutes ish, we're going to be giving away a Lamia chair. So if you've been wanting the God tier, S tier, End Game, gotta get in on that sweepstakes. That's going to start in just a little over twenty minutes. Also, if you've got any questions. Make sure to drop them in the chat because we'll try to cover those. All right, so we've got the Hayworth Fern. This is Ryan's chair, and this is the digital knit backrest, no lumbar, in a really flashy frame design. So this is going to be one of the most expensive versions of this chair you can get, I believe. Yeah, definitely. I don't really know if I can claim this as my chair anymore, though. It hasn't been in my office for a couple months now that I've been back <laughs> in the leap. I just go through cycles, and I've... Been loving the leap again, so I've been in it for almost two months now. But I will say that the fern is probably still my number one, number two, number three at the very least. I think this chair is absolutely amazing. Is it perfect? No. But I think that the downsides on it are not going to be things that I consider. So being 5'9", it fits me very well. I think the seat's very comfortable. The backrest is one of a kind. I've never sat in a chair with a backrest like this. From a flexibility standpoint, I don't think that anything else beats it. And the four-layer system that they went with really makes you feel like you're kind of sinking into something a little bit, but also being suspended. It's, it's hard to describe because you're not up against a pad, but you still feel supported, and so you don't get overly hot. You can move around any way that you want because of the thin design and stretch. I just think this is a great chair. The one miss, if you could consider it as a miss, is I don't think that the arms from a comfort standpoint are the same as you know the leap gesture or embody, just because the arm pads aren't quite as cush and soft. But from an adjustability standpoint, they're amazing. So a lot going on with this chair. For tall people, though, might not be great just because of the seat depth. That's usually the yeah. number one complaint. Some, on someone asked, uh, just a good question of what would we prefer as a taller to, would you prefer a leap or a fern, especially for lumbar support? Same, if they were the same price, I would go with the leap personally. I think it's going to have more lumbar support. Ryan, you're not as uh, needing as much lumbar support, right? But for, for those that want 
extra the leap, you're going to have a little more. You can dial it in. Now, this this one that we're showing doesn't ha even have the lumbar, but we do have a couple of them in the office that have that lumbar. It's essentially like a little Like balloon. an airbag, and that's yeah, the main yeah. difference, right? It goes back to the versatility of steel, case, steel cases design choices, right? So their leap comes with two-way lumbar adjustment, so and it always comes like that. You don't need to pick and choose to add the lumbar like you do on the fern. You can either increase it or lessen it, and you have control over that. You don't need to pick a chair that either has it or doesn't from the factory and then regret either getting it or not having it. And so it's hard to say what you should get. I don't like a lot of lumbar support. I love it without it. But these guys like lumbar support, and they love it with it. And so that's what Robert's talking about. If you go with the leap, you kind of get the best of both worlds, and you don't have to pick and choose and make that decision. It's tough. Yeah, I think that I think you hit it on the head. It, like, if we're going to pick something as a blanket statement, you obviously have to go with the leap because if you add the height adjustable lumbar when you buy it, you can remove it very easily. It takes two seconds to remove it. And you can go extremely aggressive with the lumbar supporter. You can go pretty neutral with it. So this is sort of just it is what it is. You either get it with the lumbar and you're stuck with it, which Ryan didn't like sitting in our regular one that we have. For comparison, with the mesh back and the lumbar, I gave it a B tier. When we put the digital knit and took out the lumbar, it went to S tier. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a lot of so. questions about the digital knit. Would you pay an extra $100? Would you pay an extra $500? Which that's the price difference in Canada. Personally, for $100, 100%, I'm getting the digital knit. For $500, that's if it tough. were that much more, honestly, I would almost not even get a fern. Because... My favorite uh, version would definitely be with the digital knit, but if I had to pay an extra 500 for it, I would just buy a leap. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I, I, I still like the mesh. Like, a lot of people, I think the digital knit is a good upgrade, but I don't think that the mesh is so bad that you just shouldn't get the chair. Because if yeah. we had a version here that was just the mesh with no lumbar, no headrest, I know I would like that too. It just wouldn't have that little extra pillowy softness that the digital knit gives, but it, it's not its yeah. not like you're sitting in a terrible And I chair. might be a little bit uh, like biased towards it because the look is so nice and the digital knit just, it looks amazing. It does. There. So it makes you, again, it, whether it's subconscious or not, it makes you feel more comfortable just because you love the look and you, you know, you want to be happy in what you're sitting in. So uh, it's probably wrong to pick base just on that, but it definitely does slant towards uh, picking that digital knit for me. Someone asked me what I thought about the seat depth on that fern too, by the way, because I'm six feet and there is a gap that forms when you recline in the chair. So for me, the seat depth is actually really good. It, it doesn't, I don't need to slide it all the way out. So I don't have as noticeable of a gap and it's never been really something that I've I've had an issue with personally. So Robert, I don't know, maybe you have had some issue with that as that seat gets out there. I don't know if you mentioned that. And I, I think you got to get to about six, two, six, three. Sorry, I missed a little bit of that. that the CB... When you pull the fern out, it creates that gap in the back. Oh no, that has, yeah, that hasn't been a problem for me. So then you need yeah. to be taller than six, two. Yeah. So. All right. So next up, we're actually going to jump to the Asus, correct? So we're going to yeah. kind of, we're going to do the Asus gaming chair. So this is another one. Uh, it's a little hard to find, so Greg actually had to do a little car drive uh, to to find this one for us. No discounts that we can we can find on this chair right now, but uh, this is a pretty unique pick. Has some different features you're not going to see in any other chair that we're showing today. Ryan's probably spent the most time in this. Hold on a second. Someone just oh. someone just gave us five bucks to answer a question. But thank you, Baked, for that. I you get to jump right up in the line for the I don't is it super chat? Is that what this is? We're a little new to this. So yeah, well there you go. Well let's answer this question for Baked. Would you guys go with the fern or the embody for an everyday chair? That's so funny, Ryan, because you're going to be perfect to answer that since you have done both. Am I, though? It's that I, I, they're <laughs> my two Close S2 your eyes chairs. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be thrilled with either one of them. I mean, the leap is right there with me, too, now. Those three chairs are my pinnacle of the top of the top. The fern with the yeah. perfect configuration, the embody, and then the leap. For me, I haven't found anything better. One reason why you'd pick the fern or the embody. I'd pick the fern over the embody for most people because it doesn't have kind of those few negative factors they, that may potentially ruin the entire chair for someone. The fern has less of that, whereas the embody has more. I think the embody has more potential upside, but the fern, I think, is a safer pick. There you go. All right. 
the Asus chair. Well, you reviewed this one. You spent the most amount of time in this chair of anybody up here. Yeah. This is a very interesting chair because I actually really appreciate what Asus did because the gaming market is in a really weird place right now, right? Because you're either selling a racing chair or you're selling an ergonomic chair that you're trying to make look like enough of a racer to get the gamers to want to buy it. And I think going the second direction is going to be a lot better in terms of health and comfort and providing good support. And I think that Asus is the closest one to having an ergonomic chair come through our doors where I felt like it was a gaming chair more so than an ergonomic chair, right? Because we've seen the Vantam, we've seen the Mavics, and while they call themselves gaming chairs, they're truly just ergonomic chairs that literally have just been upholstered or changed a little bit. Whereas this one has all the branding, it has kind of the the tags that you pull on to make it feel more gamer, it has the big sound panel in the back that's meant to improve your immersion and your experience. So I appreciate that they did a lot to cater towards gamers while actually keeping it pretty ergonomic. I mean, for a mesh seat, I don't like mesh seats. And anyone that follows this channel knows that if you give me a mesh seat, it's probably going to be a D or F tier. This is one of the more comfortable mesh seats that I've used. I could use this chair for a few hours and be okay with it. I think that they did a good job on the armrests. They are highly adjustable. Their ability to use with mobile gaming because the height is ridiculous. And they also adjust all the way around, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So you can, when you recline, they're not pitched too far forward. I mean, the chair isn't perfect. It is a mesh seat, so it's not my ideal choice in design. And... I don't know. It's not the highest end chair. Personally, I would take off the sound panel thing. I think it makes it look kind of weird. It does give it kind of cool Darth Vader-y vibes. Mm -hmm. And the headrest is terrible, in my opinion. Not from a comfort standpoint, but simply because it will not hold its position, no matter what. No matter where you put it, the moment you touch it, it moves. And so I wouldn't be able to use the headrest. But I, I don't know. There's a lot of good things going on for a $900 chair in the gaming space, in my opinion, here. Biggest shortcoming on this thing, I mean, it's got to be that warranty, which is such a weird warranty, like that it's dictated by the vendor selling yeah. the chair. Yeah. Like, where's the consistency there? So, like, our warranty is through Micro, Micro Center, Center then? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think it was one year. So, you're $900 with a one. That arguably is the worst warranty on any chair of that price point that we've ever reviewed, and we've brought in hundreds of chairs. You get the same warranty on the $119 Tacova. <laughs> it's crazy. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're really, you really want the looks when you're buying this chair. You're buying it very much for that. Someone in the comments said it's like an office chair and a gaming chair had a baby. 100%. It's like it's what it is. They, they've stolen that's some a good stuff. thing, though, right? Yeah, so you're getting the looks of the gaming, but still the comfort of the office chair. So it's a, that's a good thing, exactly. It's, the price is still seems a little high because I don't know if it has quite the office chair comfort and ergonomics. But, um, but yeah, again, I, if you love the Just looks, to defend it a little bit, though, for the cost is higher. You know, it's $900. Yeah. But if we compare this to other chairs that are similar price, the Mavics, uh, the Vantam, I mean, the Secret Lab, the Noya chair. Yeah. I mean, this chair is, I mean, other than the Mavics, I would pick this chair over the others. Mm -hmm. And I do think it feels just as well built as the Mavics. So yeah. I've seen a lot of people commenting on, the chair looks like it should be sold for $100 or the chair looks super cheap. I'm going to push back on that because if it, it may look cheap, but it doesn't feel cheap when yeah. you get it in your hands. It I does feel like a $900 yeah. chair. Yeah, so when I first sat in it, I was like, this is much better than I was 100%. expecting. 100%. Like looking at it, I was like, oh, it's another one of those gimmicky. Oh, I thought it was going to be like yeah. the Razor Isker review where it was going to come in here and I was going to be like, yeah, this is just another. But it's not. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. And those kind of side bolsters things like down by where your hips would be, it looks like those would be like really – inhibiting towards movement yeah. but they really it's don't have looks, an effect at all yeah. they just add to the look of the chair which i was happy with I, so. I will i will agree i put this chair together and the first thing i thought when i took it out of the box was damn it's heavy like mm. there there's a lot of substance here which can mean a lot of different things but in this case it meant that it was it was definitely a well-built yeah. chair so just right. a heads up we're five or so minutes away from announcing the next giveaway so Ooh. hang out there we're getting pretty close what it take about two hours three hours to put that chair together 
three hours to put that <laughs> chair together? Just messing with you. Yeah. Uh, and now he's making me think about it, but I think it was more like 15 minutes. No, yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty typical. Pretty standard. chairs. Yeah, pretty standard yeah. with it. Can I do our, our uh, codes pretty quick? It's been a yeah. while before we yep. talked about our, our coupon codes. A lot of stuff happening right now. NV15, that is our NV standing desk on BTOD. We've been showing it a lot. It's in the background of our set again. Just an awesome option if you're looking for a standing desk. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not your entry level. This is going to be have a lot of good features. Get a, a nice range, low and high. Francis is moving it up, programmable positions. So if you're looking to upgrade your desk setup, check out the NV 15% off. Next up, a Meep. We've been talking a little bit of our Meep here and there. We have some questions about the Meep too that we'll answer pretty soon here. 20% off during our stream. That is the steel case, a Mia frame with a steel case leap seat. So 20% off. What else we got? Combo. Let's put these two together. You get a Meep chair and the Envy desk together. 20% off. Great discount there. Ultimate 15. You've seen the box. Now we brought our desk down. Maybe Colton can show us down there. Perfect. So on that desk, you're going to see our ultimate cable management box from BTOD. The absolute best in cable management. That's why we call it the ultimate box. 15% off going on right now. And finally, S-Series 20, the pinnacle, the, the pr most premium. And, you know, my wife makes fun of me for saying premium. She said we should have a drinking game every time one of the guys says premium. You know, I'll let you do your thing. But Wow, this is a long <laughs> stream. We would be hopefully just drinking some water yeah. or soda. Uh, but it is. It's a premium standing desk, ultra premium, I would even say. Yeah, you know, ultra I, premium. I, I give my boys haircuts. Sometimes they get a premium haircut. Very occasionally, they get an ultra-premium haircut. Anyways, so uh, back to the standing desk, top of, top of the line, 20% off. So if you are looking for the absolute best of the best when it comes to warranty, having a company that can back it, check out our S-Series standing desk, 20% off. All right, awesome. So what is the next chair? we got the Liberty, Human Scale Liberty chair that's yeah. up next. Liberty. Now, this is my favorite conference room chair. That's not to say that I would only sit in it in a conference room. I would I'd be very happy if this was my everyday, all-day office chair. I love the Liberty. has a very, what looks like a super thin seat pad, but very comfortable. Now, we have meetings, you know, usually not going longer than two hours, but occasionally, you know, we're at that length. I never even think twice that I'm, my seat's getting uncomfortable. It's very nice. And I could, you know, definitely spend more time than just that, but also has this great pivoting backrest. They have, I think they call it tri mesh panel in the backrest. So it has this, uh, not only the look, but the way that that backrest mesh flexes is just excellent. You're, you're missing out a little bit on arm adjustments. It basically just has height on, on this model or does it have, yeah, just they, height they're... right now. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're on the wider side. So me being a little bit bigger, I, I fit those arms fine. Uh, if you're um, smaller, you're going to want those arms to probably come in. Not a lot of adjustments. This is similar to the Freedom Chair where you don't have the tension for the, the recline. So you're going to be weight-adjusted uh, recline. But so what do don't we let give, that scare you away. What do we give this for the scores on this one? Because this is a sneaky this is a sneaky yeah. good chair, actually, from oh, human yeah. scale. This would be, if I was, you know, we're, again, I'm spoiled here that I'm able to, you know, have chairs to, to sit in. If I were looking for a chair for myself, this would be very high on my list of what I'd want to purchase. I love the look of it. This is another one that is super modern looking. Did you find those uh, scores? Still, still looking. This is going to be yeah. one of those chairs where the, the seat is comfortable, the back is comfortable, and they're very – this is the definition of a minimalist chair, right? It's what human scale actually did when they wanted you to have to do really nothing in the chair because all it has is three adjustments, seat height, seat depth, and arm height. That's it. So – the, the whole point was anyone can sit down in this chair and use the chair. You don't need to configure it to yourself or waste a bunch of time figuring out how to learn the chair. But at the same time, the drawback with the chair is that it doesn't have adjustments. So you can't lock it. You can't change the tension. It doesn't have four-way arms. It doesn't have adjustable lumbar support. But at the same time, the things that it does well, it does very well. It's a well-built chair. It looks phenomenal. The arm caps are pretty decent. You don't have the adjustability, but they're still comfortable. The seat is really comfortable. A thin seat pad, but it's very forgiving. It's large. It has a good depth adjustment, and it will be supportive for long hours. And the backrest, 
like Robert said, it's kind of designed to be like a tailored suit. That's what their marketing shtick says. And it's got that tri-panel design, and I think it's super comfortable. So, yeah, I mean. If we're looking at, if we're looking at how we scored this chair, the backrest was like the thing for sure with it. We all gave it A, and it's sneaky good in that lumbar region, especially with that <clears throat> pivot function and the way that that tri-panel works. I think it's one of those things that like if you want – if you want a minimalist looking chair that still looks good, this is not a bad one. Same thing. So when we look at the seat, we gave it an A, B, and B. So a high B overall. And just in general, this chair got a B, B, and an A. So it's a good chair. All right, Ryan, you got to do the legal stuff for this sweepstakes for the Lamia. Sweepstakes, no purchase necessary, must be 18 or older and reside in the continental United States. Type hashtag chair into chat and a winner will be selected at random at the end of the screen, end of the counter on screen. The Lamia. Oh the Lamia chair. So type hashtag chair now. If you typed it in previously before I just did the announcement, you have to type it in again to be in this announcement. You're not just, or in this sweepstake. You're not just automatically in all of them because you typed it in once. To be safe, type it in again right now. It won't right. hurt you to be in there twice. Do we want to hit a couple questions here? Yeah, hit. let's hit some questions. So people are asking, are, what would we give for a tier for the Asus? It's hard for me. I haven't spent a lot of time in it. Maybe you guys can give your tier if you've spent more time in the chair. I got to default to Ryan's opinion for on this one. Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. comfort. Just yeah. comfort. Uh, for the seat, I would probably give it... <clears throat> I'd probably give it somewhere around a C or a low B. It's, it is still a mesh seat, so it has the downsides of most mesh seats, but it's better than most that I've used. The arms, I would probably be around a B or a high B. They have a ton of versatility. The arm caps are comfortable. Honestly, I might tick it up to an A minus just because they have this cool design where they have a little bit more foam where you'd put your elbows. So if you're one of those people that leans on your elbow a lot or you're having your elbows on your arms to do some mobile gaming, that's really going to come in handy. So I could see that being an A or, or a high B. And then the backrest, I thought it was comfortable. I don't love, love the lumbar support, and the backrest doesn't have a ton of flexibility, but I think the mesh was good, and it provided good support, so I'd probably be somewhere around a high B on the backrest. So overall, I think it's a pretty good chair. Yeah, I think for mesh seats, it actually wasn't too bad. I, and a lot of times, like Ryan, I mean, I, I can go pretty low on mesh seats because they have – really glaring issues this one had a good size seat on it the one drawback for me the biggest drawback for me is i hate when chairs when you go into a recline mode the arms don't move with the back there's a huge gap there's a huge gap between there is but if you pivot the arms and you spin them back around so if they start way back yeah. then they are in a pretty good spot it helps so for it sure. minimizes it so see so, but again that's like the gesture when you want to keep that backrest up right you got to crank up the tension but then when you want to go back the other way and use the chair the that other easy. way that's like flexibility in a lot of these premium chairs that like you don't have to do a lot of things they just kind of it works no matter how you're using it so all right uh, another question, is there a big difference in the seat between the Leap and the EMEA? I have a fractured L5 in my spine. I have lower back pain. wanted something to support it from ho working from home. You might need to see a doctor. Yeah. yeah we, we, don't, we don't give any medical yeah, advice yeah. here at BTAD. We are office chair experts, but we're not a doctor. Maybe we could just comment difference between the Leap and the EMEA seat. The contour. Yeah. And it's crazy it. how much it does for people. Like for me, I, I noticed that contour. And it's over a prolonged period of time. That little bit flatter seat is better for me in the EMEA long term. Yeah. So, yeah, flatter seat in the EMEA, flatter seat. Or that's uh, what brought over into the LaMia chair. So if you kind of want the best of both worlds, the flatter seat, LaMia has that. Also, the better backrest in, in the Leap, which is brought into the LaMia chair. So that's what we're giving away right now. We got another couple minutes. Drop in your... Uh, Hashtag chair, only one entry, uh, so you don't need to <laughs> this keep is dropping it one. in there. So. What's the best chair option under $300 that's not sold out on yeah. Amazon? I feel like we're contributing to this problem because there's a select group of a handful of chairs, and we've been really pushing those because mm -hmm. they are the best of the best. Honestly, we if we haven't talked about it, I would probably stay away from it. Yeah, so uh, you can some of these chairs you can buy, like Kalami or Kalami, does you can uh, have their chairs on their own website. So the well, prices are a little higher. And what's the big, the big drawback from that is just not knowing that brand yeah. and you don't get the protection yeah. of buying on Amazon. So you could 
yeah, roll the dice there. It would be if a you dice roll, maybe. Go straight yeah. from them. So they do yeah. have a, a slight discount uh, straight from their website. The but it's for the like the Kieran share. Normally two hundred dollars on their website down to one eighty. I think they're. I think they actually consider their Atlas in pre-order state right now. So I think that's just because the it says estimated delivery time of January first to tenth. Yeah, because they're literally in a can- container on the ocean right yeah. now, coming yeah. over. That's a hundred. So you're, you're buying a chair that's in that's on the ocean. Yeah. So if I were doing that, like buying the Atlas with that kind of lead time, I would go towards Amazon, where you know they're not actually running your. You're not going to see that payment go through until it actually ships. So, and, yeah. so uh, Caleb asked six four two twenty five, considering the Amip. Uh, but worried it might not be great for my size, 100%. You're going to be too big for that chair. It's not going to be tall enough in the backrest, 100%. I would say that having the Leap seat versus the EMEA seat will make it feel a little bit bigger, but it's still just going to be too short for I think. You. I mean, they think the Leap would be a, a, leap would be a better great option. chair. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to, sa- like, if you're looking to save money on that and you don't want to go new, then you could look at, like, the as-is Leap that we have if you like that color because you can get down in the, I don't know what it ends up being, in the low fours for that chair, that's a good option as well. So, mm-hmm. All right, moving on. Yeah, we got to be getting, getting yeah, close to me. have to – oh, time's up. We're up. Yeah. Well, oh, time flies when you're streaming about office chairs. <laughs> it's just me. You know what we haven't seen today, though, before I, before I hit this? We have not seen the mustache. He's the only guy <laughs> with it now. We got to give some, you guys, have you, let's just see. We'll drop it in the comments. Do you want to see Colton today? Big C-Dog. All right, here we go. <laughs> Who is the winner? Jin, Jin. Jin Bao right. Chen. Congratulations. That sounded really yeah. good. I think you were spot on. I'm going to have you do the names from now no, on. Just that one. Just that one. Congrats on the Lamia. Let's yep. go. And I got to let you know, bef- don't leave. We're going to do one more. We got some more chairs to roll through. So we're going to do one more round of giving away a Lamia. So stick around. There's one more coming. If you're sticking around, there's a chance you could be like Zin Bao Chen and win got a Lamia. It. Congrats, though. All right. People are saying, give me the mustache. Yeah, let's see. They want the mustachio. The last <laughs> mustache standing. Colton's trying to figure out the logistics of turning this camera around on himself. There it is. Looking perfect, as always. (laughs) Uh, We already did the neutral chair, Arthur. This is maybe half an hour back. Yeah, probably even longer ago. Hour? Longer. Hour yeah, I think it was, so, a, it was a pass for, yeah. for, us, for all of us. It's a little bit kind of has that gimmicky lumbar, not a lot else that we really liked on that. So a lot of better options we'd prefer. So our next up chair, where are we at? The branch task chair. So people are asking for under $300 chairs, and here you have one. So this can be purchased on Branch's website. And – I think you guys would agree we'd uh, feel a little more comfortable with Branch than some of the other websites like yeah. a Colony or... They're more established than yeah. a Colony. Well, I mean, yeah. That we know I'd of. be more comfortable with the Branch website, but I'd be way more col- comfortable with the Colony chairs. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yes. sorry. I meant the, the reliability or the, the comfortableness yeah. actually purchasing from their website. For me, the Branch ergonomic is uh, recommend no buy. I don't... I don't see a reason to buy that chair. I think the task chair, I think their task chair for less money, which, which is actually what uh, Francis yep. is showing us now. Yep. Are we? Are yeah, we, we are. Oh, we're doing the task. Yeah. Okay. So the task is definitely not a no buy. This is a chair that I would recommend. This is the only buy from the branch line, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't like the daily. It's. I can see why you would buy the daily, though. And I can see why you'd buy the branch. It's a good price chair. It's the seat is okay, the backrest is okay, the arms are okay, it reclines decent. You're buying from a reputable company and it's not expensive. So if you're looking for an alternative to the Amazon chairs that are sold out, here it is. This is a perfect one. Definitely. Yeah, and this does have what some is this selling little for bit right of now? flexibility. Uh, it's twenty percent off down to two thirty seven. Oh yeah, that's a good so deal for sure. Good. Yeah, but you, you yeah. From an availability standpoint, if you waited too long and this is what you have left as your options. But when you sit in that Atlas chair, 
Yeah. It, it, and this isn't clo- this isn't like the Atlas chair. Their ergonomic chair would be the equivalent to the Atlas chair from their lineup. This would be closer to that Kirin chair yeah. from an, uh, from a functionality standpoint. So the Kirin is still available. So then I would think that I would probably go back to the Kirin. Yes, I agree. Potentially. I mean, the ta- this Tax chair has a better recline. It doesn't yeah. have that hip thrusty recline that yeah. makes your lower back come off the backrest. So, I mean, it's not a terrible chair. The armrests aren't hard. They're not super adjustable, but I find them to be pretty comfortable. The seat's pretty good. Yep. I don't love the lumbar because it you can, I don't know, it, you can feel it a little too much in my opinion, but I don't know. It's a pretty solid chair. Yeah. It's the one I'd buy from Branch for sure. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's very average looking. This is like your most basic looking mm-hmm. chair. You know, some of the, like the Colomy, Kieran actually think looks a little nicer, if that matters to you. It doesn't necessarily look like the cheaper chair. Uh, it does have some flexibility, too, which is kind of a bonus when you're in this price range to have a little bit of flexibility in the backrest. Um, yeah, it shows pretty nicely there. So, And, and the arm pads are actually have some cush to them that, that you can press into them. Again, at this price range, sometimes they're arm hard. pads are going to be just yeah straight hard. They're super hard, usually. Yeah, but these are not, so... All right, we got to go nice. jump to the Steelcase Series 1. Probably a lot of you have been waiting for this chair because this is one of the most affordable options from Steelcase, and I think it's actually one of their more popular chairs too because of that reason. But it is very different than yeah. basically the rest of their lineup. Yeah, this yeah. is the one chair in their lineup that is a hard no-buy for me. I don't see a reason why you would buy this chair um, other than really wanting a Steelcase chair and you only have $500 to spend. But any other reason, there's, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like a steel case chair from a build quality standpoint. The armrests are absolutely brutal. The backrest, to me, is not very comfortable because you can feel the frame. And overall, it's a really small chair. So unless you're a pretty petite person, like even for me at 5'9", I don't feel like I fit in this chair very well. This is just a tough one. That's where I would recommend it. Small female. Yeah. Narrower build. It's going to be a pretty good option. The problem is, is that the arm pads are so bad yeah, on it that it's really, it's a huge miss. I think from like a fit and like how the overall aesthetics of the chair, like how they did the plastic molds, it looks like a steel case chair from that regard. But you're, you're still paying even for what is it, four fifty right now with the coupon code, four forty three. I think it might be a little bit less than that even. Twenty yeah, I mean, percent someone, off. Someone commented, "Cute color," you know, and, and it is a nice looking chair. It, it has, like Ryan said, the materials are not there with that normal steel case quality, but it can look kind of cool. So if it's something that you like the look of that for your office, and again, you're going to fit in it, that'd be the only way I'd, I'd even consider this. You're buying it because it's a steel case chair and you're getting a steel case warranty. Yeah. And, but you have to fit in it and be okay sure. and not be picky on your arms. But this one doesn't have the standard steel case warranty, right? I think it does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does. For some reason, I was thinking it was a five year warranty. And this is the other thing, too, I forgot to mention. We've been seeing this pop up in the comments a lot lately that they did extend that warranty for everybody in, in Europe from Steelcase to go back to the 12-year warranty, which is nice because we were getting a ton of comments, and we were a huge proponent of it going to 12 years versus the 5, and I saw that that change did happen. So It was needed. All right, so next up, we got the Herman Miller Varus chair. So this is... This is an interesting chair from Herman Miller. I know, Ryan, you spent quite a bit of time in this chair. You actually did the review on this chair as well. I'll let you start with that one. Sure. What, what are your thoughts on just from a, it's a Herman Miller chair. Do you think it feels and looks like a Herman Miller chair? Uh, to me, it's kind of like the, I mean, It's not so far off of their other Herman Miller chairs, right? So Herman Miller has a pretty big range of chairs. And to me, it feels close to the Lino, uh, similar to the Vantam, but miles away from the Aeron, Mira, Cosm, and Body. And so if you want a Herman Miller branded chair and you're looking to spend under $700, then I don't think this is a bad option. Uh, The lumbar support system isn't terrible. It's like the Lino. I think it's pretty comfortable. The mesh backrest, I think, is pretty good. The armrests feel a little bit flimsy to me, but they have some softness to them, and they do have a decent adjustability. The one problem that I see 
is most likely going to be that seat because it does have a thinner seat design, which is very common on these high-end chairs, but you sink into it quite a bit. And for me, I felt like I was bottoming out after, you know, two, three hours, which is never a good sign in a six, $700 chair with a name brand like Herman Miller. And so that would be my biggest concern would be that seat pad. You can see as she's pushing in, it looks soft and she's able to push down what looks to be right to that frame pretty easily. So I don't know. I, it's hard for me to say no, because I, I do think it does have pretty good value, except for the potential drawback in that seat. Yeah, I, I, for me personally, I think the only time I would recommend this buy is when it's 25% off right now, because it's like 630 bucks or something like that. I could that That is one of those things where you're getting Herman Miller product, so you got the warranty, really. You don't have the level of quality of like an Aeron embodied, but you are still getting the same warranty on it, which I think is super important. So I would say right now would be a decent buy on this one. But again, you're getting a lot of good prices on a lot of different products. So it's, it's tough. So the next chair up on the list is something that people have been asking about. And I actually looked on Amazon, and now they're putting out, I don't know if it's for everybody or if you're in the affiliate program, but they tell you about how many are being sold every month. This chair is the Sihu M18. Oh, God. And over 4,000 of these are being sold every month, which just absolutely blows my mind. I can't believe so many people are suffering through sitting in this chair. <laughs> That is brutal. Also, you guys are spending money you don't need to spend because this exact same chair is sold under a bunch of different brands for less money. There's really no reason to buy a Sihu branded chair, in my opinion. Well, this Sihu branded chair. There's, I don't know, five or ten companies selling this chair, and you can get it for anywhere from $40 less than what Sihu sells it for mm -hmm. to $50 more, depending on the brand. But from a chair standpoint, I believe we talked about this earlier. I mean... To me, there's really nothing good going on with this chair. From the moment that you sit down in this chair, it's like, oof. Like, the chair, the seat is rock hard, and the cylinder gives none. So when you sit down, it's like literally just sitting down on a concrete slab. You're on it. And the armrests are weirdly positioned forward and wide, and they don't have a ton of adjustment. And they also have this weird concave shape. I don't know. There's really nothing that I like about this chair and truthfully I'd probably rather this is one of the few chairs where I'd probably rather sit in your kitchen chair yeah. over this one just because of the versatility of being able to be wherever I wanted over I don't know this is a tough one for me I, I am pretty mind boggled that so many people are buying this chair it's exactly what I thought so I saw that and then I came in here pre-stream and I was looking at a couple chairs and I just hit the seat pad on that Sihu chair. And I was like, unbelievable that people are sitting in this chair at that frequency and not hating it because right. it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, I think this is a cactus good comment here. Lots of people don't bother with researching down the rabbit hole. They just take the most sold and best reviewed on Amazon. That's a hundred percent right. Good warning, you know, don't do that. <laughs> and you know, go the, down the rabbit hole. I'm sure that you guys are savvy enough to know, maybe you're not, but a lot of reviews on Amazon are just, outright faked. I mean, we get emails weekly from companies wanting to sell us reviews through Amazon on our product. Here, pay this much per review and we'll increase your reviews by this many thousands and you'll always be over a 4.5 star, whatever it is. And so that a lot of these high reviews are because of that, because it directly contributes to the sales. And so... Oh, there goes the headrest. It's tough. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> There's nothing to hold that headrest in. It's, it, so it just comes right out. Well, you can take it out if you don't want it. Yeah, that's a good... good. So it looks like Robert's the only one who scored this chair above F for one aspect of it, and he gave the back a D-. minus. Ooh, wow. It's very just, generous of you, yeah, Robert, to bad. give that, <laughs> that D-. minus. <laughs> D minus. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, just a reminder. I just uh, ran to the restroom and happened to look out the window. Don't worry. It was just, and we have a lot of snow. I mean... I forgot that we have snow on the ground, and I looked out the window, and I'm like, there's snow out there, and I got kind of So sad. are you going sledding tonight? Well, my son asked me if he could, and there's, you know, like a half an inch. I'm like, not enough. It's not enough yet, but it might be soon. 
Anyways, back you, to chairs. You're but. probably going sledding after work, but <laughs> that's probably. just what's going to happen. Uh. All right, so the next chair is the Razor Isker chair. And this is the chair I actually reviewed. A lot of people were asking about this chair. Uh, they did do some groundbreaking development in a lumbar support system. <laughs> But unfortunately, they missed the mark tremendously yeah. on this one because it is just hit that lumbar just so people can see how that how that hits. Oh. Yeah, yep. he had it right. Uh, nope. nope, the front right lever. There you go. Here it is. Oh, Watch it. Here we go. Suspense is building. Yeah. yeah. So now sit in the chair with it like that. And watch your shoulders not be able to make contact. <laughs> that is the look that I had when I sat in the chair. So I, I got to say, great job trying to come up with something. Bless you. Excuse me. Something different. But, man, it makes no sense that the lumbar support would function like that. And not only that, okay, now try to put the lumbar back in while you're sitting in the chair. Here we go. There you go. Now we know. There it is. And just think, you're paying a premium for the extra gas cylinder they had to put in this chair to give you the, that horrible functionality. <laughs> so you are, you're probably paying 50 extra dollars just to have that crazy lumbar support that isn't really doing much. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where, the, where did this rank for everybody. Was it like a low D, F? Did yeah, someone I mean, give this an F plus? The problem is even at the the least lumbar position possible, it still is too much, and you have this weird gap. So oh, I can't quite find it here, but I, I had to be at an F, if not a, if not a D. <laughs> it was bad. All right, let us know <laughs> yeah. in the comments, why are you looking for a new office chair if you are looking for a new office chair? What is it about the chair that you're looking for? And if you have questions around that, you got to let us know so we can answer them here as we go through the stream. Yeah. And don't forget, in about 30 minutes, we're going to do our final giveaway for a Lamia chair. So this will be the second Lamia chair that we're giving away. So stay tuned for that. I had another D minus on yeah. this one. Oh, it's D minus? Not, not quite an F, but everything else was F for this chair. Man. What a score. Yeah. All right. We've got uh, a Mia. I love it. You just, when you see this chair roll up, you're just like, huh, not much there. Because yeah. it's really hiding all of its goodness. In the backrest with the live back technology, super intuitive, really cool design that they did there where that whole lumbar moves up and the upper portion of the backrest. And it really gives flexibility that you're not getting from the actual back design itself. It is a scaled back version of a steel case chair, though, when you compare it to like a gesture or a leap. So you won't get like a back limiting function as you tilt back in the chair, which can be a miss, I think, for some people if you want that function. True. I personally, well, how I use the chair, because I use this chair quite a bit, uh, I actually, I'll just leave it unlocked and then I just crank the tension up to a point where I feel comfortable where I can move back and forth in the chair. But I love this chair. The only thing I would say that's a miss besides that is maybe the lumbar not being quite aggressive enough for you folks that want it to be really aggressive, and the back height isn't super tall. Yeah. I mean, for me, the only misses are just flexibility as compared to the leap, but only when you compare it to really high-end chairs. When we look at the discount that you can get right now, which brings the price down to looks like 800 bucks. on a brand new I don't one. think that you can present a chair that has more value brand new than an $800 Amiya. There, I, I've been racking my brain since Greg started talking, but I can't think of a chair that I would recommend to someone that provides more value brand new than $800. Obviously, if you get into refurbished or used chairs, maybe you can find an Amiya from someone down the road for 200 bucks on Craigslist. Obviously, that's going to be better value. But from a brand new perspective, this is an incredible deal. Almost anyone that gets this chair is going to love it. Our return rate on refurbished Amias is tiny, which means it must be minuscule on brand new Amias. So most people are going to love this chair. And for $800, you're talking about this or the Asus chair or a Mavics or a Secret Lab Noya. This thing blows those chairs out of the water. So they just... They just yeah. won't look as good. Yeah, and, and They're not as flashy, I guess you could say. Right. It looks good, but it's not flashy. Yeah, and, and 
to, to that thought of the looks, you can make these look a little nicer, in my opinion, by changing the frame color or different fabrics. So it, you'll add a little bit to the price, not that much. But, you know, if you go with, uh, they have Seagull as one of their colors. I'm looking at their site. Uh, or just their gray, platinum. their platinum. So you say you go platinum and then have the, the light blue fabric or something. You're going to add a small amount on the price, but it, it does look a lot sharper that way. But, yeah, it's still a pretty plain, you know, the backrest doesn't have much design element to it, whereas the the gesture has that nice fabric that folds over the top of the backrest. It's a it's your classic work chair in a environment where it's going to just blend in and not be, like, the focal point for sure. Yeah. Someone just uh, commented, Ian commented, that he bought a GT racing chair during pandemic, you and about probably 700 other thousand people, and it ruined his back along with those people. And now you're here looking for a better chair. I get it because we have that chair, and mm -hmm. it's awful. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Speaking a, of awful chairs. Yeah, speak, yeah. Oof. So – Staples. This is another one where hiking. people really get their gears grinded when we talk about how bad this chair yeah. is. A lot of people have this chair. A lot of people are unwilling to accept the fact that they bought a hundred and fifty dollar chair and that it's not very good. But it this is not very good. Below F tier, in my opinion, it yeah. doesn't get much worse than the the Hiken or Huken or whatever you want to call it. This is this again thing. where I'd rather sit in the kitchen chair. Hundred percent. At least there's not elements of my chair that are going to hurt me, whereas the Hiken will. Like the way you <laughs> sink into it, it's just really not good. And the fabric materials are really bad. Ours came with this weird, like looks like something was scraped off of it or something, which we could have returned it and and whatever. But you know we didn't. But it's poor materials. Doesn't feel good, especially if your skin touches the fabric. Ah, man, for, for this price, there's there are better options. Not a lot of them, but there are better options out there. I mean, you get a good warranty, and you're buying it from a big brand. And you can try it in person. But it's really not a great chair. I mean, yeah. it does cause some serious problems. Listen, if you want to try a chair in person, this is there are very few chairs in the world that I'm going to tell you to get a Marcus instead of. This is one of them. Yeah. Someone just mentioned, I got a Think V2 chair, and it really kills my back. I'm 5'11", skinny. I play a lot of online games. I just got to say right away that the Think chair is not a chair for gaming. That is a, that is a non-gaming chair. That is a conference room chair. Or maybe yeah. you want something in your home office that you're using for a few hours at a time, but I just can't see that chair being long use. All right, we got. We're, I don't have anything else to add to this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Such a, I just stay away. It has a yeah. lot of adjustments, but they all are bad. So, <laughs> it's hard just, to run through. Well, the thing yeah. about it, it's on a crazy sale right now. You can get what that. You can get it for one hundred and thirty nine dollars. It's fifty three percent off. So you can get it for one hundred and forty bucks right now. I would still say don't buy it, because, I mean, in all reality, if you go to Target or Walmart and buy their generic leather chair for 80 bucks it's probably going to have the same comfort as a hike in mm -hmm. let's be realistic it's going to be less expensive so so according to our scores robert's kitchen chair scored an f unanimously hike in f unanimously yeah and then let well i don't know though if robert's going to let go of that kitchen <laughs> chair for less than 150 bucks more. So yeah. it's probably going to cost yeah. more it's going up <laughs> all right yeah. next up human scale uh this is our Different, different smart, smart chair. Yeah. So a similar backrest to our Liberty ch chair we just talked about not too long ago has that same pivoting function. Armrests also very similar. This one has a little adjustments on the armrest, right, Francis? Three-way adjustment. Three-way, yep. so it's going to have the sliding pads and then the height adjustment. It's kind of built into the side there. Yeah. So it does have a little more adjustability than that Liberty chair we just talked about, but backrest very similar. Uh, seat is a little different. Details on the difference there on the seat, you guys know? Well, more? aside from the upholstery that we have, they're going to be pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, all the seats from Human Skill are going to be pretty similar, thinner design, pretty flexible. I actually like the seat on this chair a lot. I like the backrest a lot. It's a little bit shorter than the Liberty, but it's still very good lumbar support, good flexibility. The armrests are pretty good. I like the armrests better than the Liberty or the Freedom just because they have more adjustments, and I think the arm caps are very similar. Um, it does have that kind of hip thrusty recline. The only reason that I really don't like this chair is just the right what Francis is doing right there. That metal vertical bar 
is a funny bone killer. I, I mm. cannot use this chair because I never stop hitting my funny bone on that bar. If it didn't exist, this would be my favorite human scale chair, and it'd probably be somewhere around an A rating overall. But that kind of... Yeah, that's the reason for me that the Liberty is just the better chair because it doesn't... Liberty does not have that type of arm mega mechanism. Yeah. So for me personally, I would definitely go with the Liberty chair. But it is true, this has the better adjustments and, and the seat is really nice. So Looks like I'm the only one that gave this an A overall. So this is my this is my favorite though from steel or from human scale. You guys are all pretty much on the B with this one. But I love the backrest on it. I like the seat. It's a thinner seat design. It's got good support. They're right, though, that it hits your funny bone. But overall, I think it's a really comfortable chair. Yeah, it looks nice, really nice materials. This is another one that seems to always be used in the office. You know, there's a lot of chairs that sit sit around, don't get used. Somebody always wants to be sitting in this chair. Well, I think you're going to love this one. This is this is the fan favorite. This is a fan favorite. <laughs> oh. So we've got the Ergo Chair Pro coming on. I think this one, was this one of our top picks when we did a video about most overrated chairs? Probably. In fact, it was. I think this was my number one pick, certainly for that price ring, uh, of most overrated because it just, if you look at Instagram posts or other in influencer type things, you're going to just think that this was the greatest chair that was ever created, but... It's well, just the, not. It's not comfortable. The reality of it is that this chair used to be a lot less expensive. I mean, it, it yeah. was. It was a much more affordable chair. I don't think it was any more comfortable when it was less expensive, yeah. but at least it made it not such a terrible value. I just, there's so much wrong with the chair when it comes to the seat and the arms themselves and then yeah. how the headrest just constantly, like, somehow manages to pull the hair out of your neck, which is yeah. incredibly annoying that this is a tough one for me. I, I can't really get behind it at $500. I know they got a deal for like 60 bucks off, but yep. still, you're playing in a really hard price point with that chair. This isn't a tough one for me at all. There's no reason to get this chair. I mean, it's uncomfortable. The seat bottoms out within an hour. The headrest, like you said, isn't good. The armrests are really uncomfortable, and they have a similar problem to the Iowa where they move easier than you want them to. When you don't want them to, they move. And so overall, it does not feel like a well-built chair. You're not getting a good warranty, and it's not very comfortable. And when you put it up against other, even on sale right now for low 400s, you're putting that still up against the Vera, the Atlas. I mean, the Soji is just over $500 now, brand new, the Amip. There's so many other good options. I'd rather sit in the Tiscova or the Kirin for under $200 than the Ergo Chair Pro. Yeah, so sure. not a lot of, not, it's like the opposite of value whatever that would be. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you're getting. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, All for right. sure. Yeah. Don't forget, in 15 minutes, we've got our final giveaway, so stick around for that. We're going to give away the final La Mia chair, and now we are about to bring out the Mira 2. We had a question a little while ago. Sorry we didn't get to that one, but we could talk about it now. Someone asked, would we prefer the Mira 2 or the Aeron chair? Now, I don't know if they meant, you know, base, or including what their price point is at, but probably either way, I would go with the Aeron myself. Now, the Mira 2, it has a very distinct look with that poly back instead of the mesh back on the Aeron, but then it has a similar mesh seat. I know Ryan and Greg, I believe, both prefer the Mira seat over the Aeron. Um, I agree for the most part. It, it has... What's nice about the mirror seat is it doesn't have the big bolsters on the side, so you're able to kind of move around a little more. What I don't love is that the front edge of that seat kind of bunches up, when, especially when it's when you have to uh, limit the seat depth to that shorter, so you get kind of this weird bunching effect, which, you know, for the price point of this Herman Miller chair, I feel like it's they didn't quite solve that, that uh, issue with the mesh there. Um, arms, very unique. I, I kind of like these like a lima bean shape, I guess is what they are. They're kind of a funny shape, and they look a little odd, um, but they do serve some functions. Um, and they're super cush. Yeah, very cush. I know uh, I can let Ryan, if you want to jump in about the arms, I think you have some Well, info. just backtracking a bit to the seat. Yeah. Why does Herman Miller pretend as if you can't put a seat slider on a mesh seat? Yeah. Like, well, all these other mesh seats have seat sliders, yep. the Ergo Human. All these chairs have seat sliders, but Herman Miller continues to release mesh seat after mesh seat without a seat slider. And I do not understand why. 
The mirror is an improvement, yes, because you can flip it up and extend it or fold it down, but it looks weird. It doesn't function nearly as well as a slider. It doesn't give you nearly as much room. And I just don't get it. Even they come out with their newest chair, the Cosm, again, with no seat yeah. slider. It's like, Herman Miller, your biggest downside is your seat sizes, whether they're too narrow on the sides and you have bolsters like the Aeron, or they're too shallow. Yeah. Like the Aeron size B is almost too shallow for me at 5'9", but I'm not big enough to sit in the size C because then it's too wide. And so it's like, I just don't understand why Herman Miller refuses to put seat sliders on their mesh seats because if they had them, they'd be way better. I do like the mirror seat a little better than the Aeron because you can adjust it and it doesn't have those side bolsters, but I like everything else about the Aeron better. I think the arm pads are better. They're not set nearly as wide, which is the biggest problem for me with the Mira. The arms are so wide that I have to reach out to them. And then I prefer the softer mesh backrest as compared to the hard backrest with the Mira 2. I think it's a good chair. The recline's really nice. I, it's just not my jam. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised how well that lumbar support actually works on that chair because I do like a lot of lumbar, and it does work pretty well. But I know I ranked this seat higher than the Aeron, but that's really not saying that much because I just don't like the Aeron mesh seat. If I were going to pick a Herman Miller mesh seat, I'd just go with the Cosm because I think it's the best of all of them. Um, but that's just my take on it. Yeah, between the two chairs, I'm still going to go with the Aeron. Price is going to be a little higher, but... I think you just you're gaining in some of the f kind of the fluidness of the chair. I think it all kind of blends together a little better with the recline and everything. Um, I also think the looks of the Mira just like things don't quite look right. I don't know yeah. what it is. It's the different. I don't know if it's the mix of the materials or the design choices, but I don't quite love the looks of that. Doesn't quite match the price point in my opinion, but potentially could be a good chair. I know, I know this is one where you see in different offices a good amount too. So people are maybe forced to sit in this chair sometimes because that's what they're, they've are they been given at work. All right, so the Steelcase Series 2 is coming out now. And this is one of those chairs where, man, it seems like for the price, it's something that you should definitely consider, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a Steelcase chair, you know, it's got the seems good like arms, that. But, I mean, I, I hate to be a broken record, but this is, again, just a seat, a, a chair that has too short of a seat depth. So, for me, I just feel like I have to write it off right away that it doesn't fit me comfortably because my legs are hanging so far off the front of the seat. So, my opinion is, you know, almost like I, I almost have to take myself out of the conversation. Yeah, I know that Ryan doesn't doesn't like a lot about the the chair i i do like a lot about the chair I like the arms i i like the backrest which i know ryan's going to disagree with the headrest if it held its place a little better wouldn't be too bad for to hold you know your head when you recline but it is always moving on me um i i don't like their i don't like their weight activated mechanism on their chairs i feel like it's a huge miss especially knowing how good their uh, tilt limiting function is uh, but this chair, just the, the biggest drawback for me and the reason why I don't sit in it is the seat's too firm. I can't sit in it. It's like sitting on a rock. Yeah. I, I think Human Skill describes this chair, or Human Skill, Steelcase describes this chair as the Series 1 from the seat down and then the EMEA from the seat up. Kind of. I mean, yeah, you're getting a cheap Series 1 mechanism and you're getting some EMEA arms, but to me the backrest and the seat feel nothing compared to the EMEA. They're very firm and have very little flexibility. And so for me, this is a really big downgrade to the EMEA. And I don't know if you're getting enough money off from the EMEA to con consider how much of a downgrade you're getting, if that makes sense. Yes, it has the headrest, which you can't get on mm -hmm. the EMEA or the Leap. But like Greg said, I can never get it to hold its position anyways. And it's not pitched forward enough to use when you're tasking. So it's kind of only there when you're reclining. And when I recline in it, it just falls back down. So this is not This is my second least favorite Steelcase chair. Not something that I would probably recommend, but not terrible, if that makes sense, just because it does have those arms and it is a Steelcase built chair. So you get the Steelcase so. warranty. I mean, and... and I, I would believe that it's going to hold up well. It's just, it's not as good as those other chairs. 
For sure. So we're gonna jump to we're gonna jump to the it looks like it's the Herman Miller Lino chair next. So Which, I don't know. Yeah, this is kind of a, a almost an appropriate jump because right. it's almost like the Herman Miller Equivalent. version of yep. this price range. Uh, so the only time we maybe have mentioned this all all stream here is when we talked about how it looks a little like the Kieran uh, backrest that shape. But what you'll see with this chair is it does have that. Pretty thick seat pad, which maybe doesn't even feel as thick as it looks. It's deceptive, but it's it's still relatively comfortable. It, it's a little more firmer than it would. It definitely appears. Do you guys agree on that? Yeah, this chair kind of locks me in. Yeah, like I feel like I don't get. It's typical of a lot of the Herm Miller chairs where that back doesn't feel like it moves around enough for me. Yeah, but yeah, that seat sits firm for sure. Yeah, and I think it's the way they upholster that around this the actual seat frame yep. it appears to be a lot thicker than it really is it's funny because several times during the stream today we've talked about well the seat looks really thin but it feels cush more cu and yep. this is the opposite where it looks thick it's not it, it doesn't feel like that and, and yeah it is a smaller backrest so it's again like greg said where it locks you into the seat and i guess what we mean by that is you you feel like you have to sit in one position you can't be moving around as much because as soon as you get off center like so right now i'm sitting in a leap chair if i move over i'm i'm away from my mic so but <laughs> I, i'm still going to be really comfortable it's just with a lot of these mesh back chairs especially you move off the side and you're going to hit the hard frame and that's maybe one of the biggest problems uh, with the lino here seat depth adjustment though yep you get the seat depth adjustment no on you that. don't not no, well not on ours we but there is an it. option yeah, for it but yes, only Francis there searches. really isn't though and it's that's a, why we don't have it on ours because in order to get the seat depth adjustment you have to configure the chair in such a way that you have like three choices and you can't get other adjustments that have nothing to do with the seat adjustment. I don't know why they do it that way, but it's super weird. I'm on the website right now trying to figure out a way to unlock the seat depth adjustment by choosing other options and I can't. So I don't know what configuration it's limited to now, but that's one of the biggest limiting factors to the chair is just the size because the seat is shallow without the depth adjustment. The back is short and it's narrow for a hard framed back. So it doesn't have a flexible back where being narrow is an advantage. Instead, you just kind of always feel it. I also don't like the arm caps. They're not super comfortable. The recline is probably the highlight for me. It's a decent recline for the price. Yeah. Not a shock from Herman Miller, but... Yeah, it's not the full, like, Aeron recline, but no. it's still definitely nicer than a lot of chairs in that, you know, five to $700 range. All right, so the OM Truly is coming out now, and this is an interesting chair, and I, I think it's one of those, it's another one of those kind of sneaky polyback chairs that's actually quite comfortable. This is one of those that I forget about in that, you know, five to $700 range, just because it doesn't have that name brand recognition of the, the big brands that are currently being hyped up right now. But this is a well-made chair, and it is loaded with adjustments, a ton of adjustability, and when you buy it, you actually have a ton of different ways to configure and customize the chair to your liking. You can see things like that jacket on the back. That's an addition. Uh, the chromed out arms, those are an addition. You can get different mechanisms for different types of reclines. So this is a really good chair for those of you that want to have full control over the way that your chair is going to be built and designed, but you don't have to spend, you know, a thousand dollars to do it, but you're still getting a pretty high end chair. And for me, this is a comfortable chair. I really like the backrest. I think the lumbar is great. I think the seat is comfortable. I don't love the arms that are on it right now from a pure comfort standpoint, but you have so many choices that you can get the really highly functional arms with soft arm pads Super to fix that ones. problem. Yep. So for me, this is a, like Greg said, it's a sneaky chair. This is a, a good chair for the price. So with the jacket or without the jacket? Me? Yeah. I'd say with it, just because I think that the plastic is flexible enough to give you that movement and flexibility that you need, but I would still prefer to have a little layer of softness just to kind of feel yeah. instead of the, the plastic, which can get a little cold, and it does feel hard if you're not, you know, kind of stretching and yeah. moving with it. I mean, I sat in this for a while without the jacket, and... I, it never bothered me. Again, I'm someone that's sat in a lot of the polyback chairs, and I, I don't have an issue. So, you know, not to, you know, uh, 
argue with Ryan, but I, I don't personally. I don't think you have to get the jacket. You know, you you might be fine without it, and it's something you could add as well. Just correct? adds a little just, bit of softness. Yeah, to it. and maybe it changes the looks of the chair. Yeah, so too. whether you like that or not, similar to like the Mira, you can purchase the what they call butterfly. Uh, back or something like that yeah and i make that up <laughs> so you can you know purchase it's got like a little, little bit cushion. of padding on it yeah so all right the hayworth zodi is up next and this is a technically zodi 2 so the the newer version of them and we got this one is in the digital knit uh, unlike the digital knit on the fern it doesn't really have like a really thick padded back it does add a little bit to it it feels a little bit denser but i think it also kind of reduces the elasticity in the mesh compared to their regular mesh. I think it's got a cool look to it. So I don't know. Ryan is a huge fan of the Zodi chairs. I know you've picked this exact chair for from my big three, the Leap Fern and Embody. This is probably my my next chair that I'd go to in the list. I've sat in this chair for months at a time. If you gave me this chair to have at my house, I'd be thrilled. I think it does a lot of things really good, and I don't think that it has any major downsides. It's just a really well-built chair. I mean, this is Hayworth's flagship chair. It was their highest end ergonomic chair for years until they came out with the Fern. I'm not sure if the Fern has surpassed it in sales, but I think the Zodi is a great chair. The The main things that people aren't going to like is what Francis is going through right now. She's struggling to figure out the recline. And that's because the chair has kind of this funky recline system where you have two modes to choose from. And then each of those two modes has two positions. So you only really have four positions to choose from. And the problem is, is that none of those positions is just a standard flat position with a normal recline. You're either pitched back a little bit or pitched forward a little bit. And so you kind of have to find the happy medium of that. But if you can, I think that this chair is top notch. So Yeah, I like that perch mode. You can put it in the, the forward seat tilt, um, especially with a standing desk. You can raise your desk up a little bit higher push your chair up close to the desk. Personally, I'd like a footrest or some kind of standing mat that I can kind of push my feet up against. Uh, I think that's required. Yeah. I mean, that I, perch mode, like, it really helps to have yeah. a footrest. I wouldn't spend hours like that, but again, it's nice to, instead of buying a $1,000 Capisco, you can buy a chair that will allow you to try a different uh, position for a little while. What do you think of back support on it is the question we got from Cactus. Uh, oh, I I like this a lot. This is this is also a, a top pick for me. Back support is great. Really like the backrest. I've been sitting in just the regular mesh version a little bit in this, and lumbar feels really good too. Nice as Francis is showing. It's it's wide enough. You're not ever hitting any hard spots either. So um, I'm a big fan. A while ago, someone asked about the comparison between this and the Fern when in the forward tilt mode, um, and they asked specifically for a standing desk. If you're still here. I would lean towards the Zodi, one, because it has a higher height adjustment, and two, because the dual pivot brings the back up a little bit, if I remember correctly. Can we? S Whereas the Fern is going to have standard height, and then the seat's going to move, but only the seat, so you don't get any of that back support yeah, the, coming you know, up the with you. The seat pivots. On the seat own. alone pivots. Yeah. So then you're kind of just like up on a kneeling chair with no back support. Yeah. Whereas the Zodi pitches the whole chair forward. You can see how tall it is. So she's at the standing desk, and now she also has a, a new position that she can use for half an hour to an hour or whenever she starts to get fatigued, and then she goes to straight standing or back to sitting or whatever. So, All right, yeah. it's that time, Ryan. It is that time for the final sweepstakes. No purchase necessary. You must be 18 years or older and reside within the continental United States. Type hashtag chair into the chat, and a winner will be selected at random at the end of the on-screen countdown. Giving away a La Mia chair. Final giveaway. It's the final. It's the fi if you've been with us the entire time, really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All right, so bring out that Herman Miller Aaron. Yep. No longer called the remastered unless you're here at VTOD. Can we throw in a real quick question here? Sure. You know, we're obviously three guys here talking, so we're a lot of times talking about what's good for us, but maybe we can help out. We had a question. What would you recommend for a wide-bottom woman, 5'9", home office? Leap. Leap? That's what she's Leap. asked. Yeah. So when Taylor did her list of best chairs for petite people, her number one chair was the Leap because it goes so low 
the seat can go so narrow, the arms can go really narrow or wide. So, I mean, the seat's going to be wide, the arms can go wide, the seat goes really short, the backrest will be supportive. That would be my go-to yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's a good pick for sure. All right, so kick this off, Robert. This is one of your top chairs. Oh, yeah. So love the Aeron. Um, you know, and people might wonder, well, how can you like the Aeron? That's one of the most restricting chairs. But then also say you love the Leap that is one of the most flexible chairs. It's a good question. And, and th the truth of it is I like the chairs for different reasons. Like I'm sitting in the Leap now because I love being able to move around a bit. But when I'm really getting, you know, serious tasking, like say I'm typing out a script or I'm, I'm you know, really focused on something on my, my computer, the Aeron is, it puts you in a really comfortable ergonomic position. It, in a way, restricts you in a good way, meaning it, it kind of keeps me positioned, forces me in that good position, but not in an uncomfortable way. So problems are, again, with the frame, you can't move around as much. You can't necessarily kick a leg up or, or even, well, cross-legged, like this would be fine with a, a, you know, foot on top of your leg, but you can't put a foot underneath your leg. It's going to be very uncomfortable. But uh, so many other good things. So recline is just amazing. So the the leap, a lot of the steel case shares are going to have more of a, a tilt limiter where they limit how far back you go. The recline on the Aeron is more of just this smooth where you can, you know, can, it's almost like a rocking chair where you can keep kind of rocking in it, which it feels great. You know, Frances is testing it out. She's actually another, one of the few in the office that also loves the Aeron. Um, arm pads, arm pads are Amazing. Again, probably the best in any office chair on the Aeron. Not the biggest adjustment range, but as far as cushioned, they're just S tier. I think that the two things I like most about this chair are the fact that the back is supportive through the full recline yep. and that that recline is incredible. And I guess I'd say that the arm pads are pretty amazing as well. But I just, I don't love the fact that there's only three sizes and you need to be within those three sizes. It just doesn't make sense to me. And you can tell that it doesn't make sense when you look at the chart. Mm -hmm. There's so much overlapping things in there from size perspectives that I don't understand how the average person would be able to figure that the out. The chart has to create more confusion than solving problems. Because if you're anywhere in the middle area, you're staring at the chart like, okay, well, now Herman yeah. Miller is telling me that I could be one or the other. Yeah. They're not even picking the right one for me. It, this, it just goes back to the, the seat slider thing. All that this chair needs is a seat slider. And they made so many improvements from the previous version to this one. If they would have just added a seat slider along with all of the other improvements, this chair would be so much better. But because of the sizing issues, that's going to be one of the biggest drawbacks. That and just the bucket seat design in general for me. I do like this chair for two to three hours or less. Because, like they said, I love the recline. I love the back support. Even though that the frame is rigid, I'll put up with that because the mesh and the posture fit SL system is so comfortable. The armrest, great. I don't mind that they don't have four-way adjustment. I would consider them top three of any chair I've tested. It's just that seat. The seat mm -hmm. kind of ruins it for me. If the seat was a little bit different, I'd be able to sit in it for 8, 12 hours a day, no problem. Yep. And but from a build quality standpoint, it's cream of the crop, top of the top. So, yep. I mean, even I, even probably more so than the Embody. I guess we'll have to wait and find out in 10 years, but I would, be venture, I would venture to guess that in 10 years, this chair is being sold very much on the secondary market, whereas I don't know how many Embodies are going to be doing that. We'll find out how that plastic and how that technology holds yeah. up, but this design's been proven. There's Aeron still being sold from 1995, so... And just a reminder, when this stream is over, you will be able to go back and watch it. Someone was asking, oh, I missed the Amip. When did you guys talk about it? That was about our third chair in. So you'd have to go back, rewatch. It's probably not even 20 minutes into the stream. You'll see that. So we are at three, two, one for Greg to choose a giveaway, our computer to choose a giveaway. Put you on the spot here. We sending it? And this is Any for the, on the Lamia chair. Huh? chair. V D O happy V D O V D O is probably pretty happy. Let's so, go! Nice. Congrats. Congratulations! That's awesome. Well, this was a long. This is a record for us on live streams. A lot of you hung out with us for a long time too, so we really appreciate that. If we didn't cover questions that you had, make sure that you comment them in here so that we can make sure to include them on our next live stream. 
but really appreciate you hanging out with us and congratulations to those of you who won and thank you if you purchased from us today or in the past. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks everyone. See you.